Well, we're waiting. Wildfire is out of control. Welcome to the Opie and Anthony program. There's a guy on his roof with a hose trying to save his house. Good luck, bro. Good luck, bro. I love that shot. Sucks that uh, you're worried about your house going up in flames, but you and a hose against nature, nature wins every time. Look at these people. They just got... They just got hoses in their backyard, and they're just hoping that's going to prevent their house from being the next one that, uh, that's swallowed. That's swallowed. You got that's the, what he, you need. You need the helicopter. Look at that. Bam! Those things, <laughs> those things drop a lot of shit on fires, huh? That fire is heading right for that neighborhood, and there's really, you know, as far as the wind goes, and so there's nothing they can do about it. There is not enough really? fire trucks that can He's just spread. He's got his thumb it. over the end of the hose. Oh, he did? Head. I didn't say. I thought he was just having that little arc of water go no, down. No, no, he had he's the spraying thumb. it. Oh, he's got no worries at all. Yeah. He's fine. This is the latest disaster <laughs> because we're... Uh, fine. It. <laughs> what, 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 what? He's fine and dandy. <laughs> got that green garden hose going. I guess the hurricane coverage is uh, done. Now it's all about fires. Fire. They love any disaster. You get these regional disasters. California is great for the fires. They are just great. Fires, landslides, an occasional uh, earthquake pops up. And they, the news loves it. Now it's the fires. What do we get, really? Aside um, from, you know, the once-in-a-lifetime terrorism. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what do we get? We uh, don't really have the big natural disasters here. No, not really. Mm. Dude, what are you doing? I'm jinxing it for yes. everybody and just hoping <laughs> something happens. I s- slow news. We need like news to fuel the show. Disaster My fuels the show. My car's great lately. <laughs> we don't get any of them natural disasters, <laughs> do we? I don't recall any. Last time we had a tornado. <laughs> no tornadoes. No hurricanes. No yeah, fires. The hurricanes get here. It's rain with wind. Uh, tornadoes. They, you occasionally hear about you know in Jersey. Oh, I, the tornado I, struck in Jersey. Yeah, but it's always in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's not like Jersey. Yeah, it's not making its way through Newark or yeah. something. It's always way northeastern New Jersey or South Jersey or something like that. Our forefathers just knew where to build shit in this country. Except New Orleans. You notice that? Yeah. Like, why didn't we put New York City where New Orleans is? That would have been a disaster waiting mm. to happen. But some someone... A long time ago, just figured it out. Do you think they actually took the weather into consideration? Hell yeah. Or the fact that, man, there's a lot of waterways to get to this city. <laughs> Hell yeah. They got that all figured out. You think they figured it out a way back then? A long time ago. They brought some wizard out and he said, the weather here is wonderful. <laughs> like they knew anything about where tornadoes were, what they were, what caused them, areas where they don't get them. I was thinking that shit, even like... like like 25 years ago before basic cable i mean that hurricane just would have happened yeah like, they would have been saying that it was coming but as far as us knowing about it uh-huh it all would, would have been on the front page like you know after all this shit happened you'd be yeah. like oh wow look what happened front page of the paper or in the nightly news you'd get like grainy film from it like they no video feed live yeah it was like they would film it and then ship it up to the a cheesy affiliate. graphic over his shoulder that just says <laughs> yeah. hurricane written in hurricane. scary letters <laughs> <laughs> and now we watch it in real time that was their only graphic yeah hurricane and it kind of was shaky a little bit <laughs> yeah the shaky writing <laughs> that's right very good clock behind him you don't know what time it is <laughs> yeah the news really sucked. Oh, yeah, remember that man slain and then they would have just the silhouette yeah, yeah. Somebody they, like laying on the ground. <laughs> now they like fucking. Li- they literally show like like his fuck, nostrils. Yeah, point eight seconds after the crime, <laughs> right. the guy's still falling to the ground. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right there, a man was killed two days ago, and they show the silhouette. <laughs> that was it. Oh yeah, up to the minute. Oh, we we must have wanted it. All right, let's say hi to Shane in Florida. Shane, what's up? Hey, O and A, happy five million plus fourteen. Wait, plus 14? Yeah, direct TV. 
You got 19 million new listeners. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that direct, oh, yes. that direct TV deal that XM made yesterday is huge for yeah, us. Yeah, congratulations on that. Hey, Los Alamos, New Mexico, a couple years ago, place burned down. One guy's house was standing, and all these that burned down, he was all happy until the new houses went up. And everybody had new houses, and this last guy standing was all pissed because his house wasn't worth as much. Now, how is that for a story, huh? Mm. Tell that guy with a hose to just shut the hose off and remove the thumb. He's just a, out. he's just on his roof with a hose hoping that's going to take care of it, yeah, and uh, that'll do it. You kind, of, you kind of feel bad for the guy. You know what I think? I'm I'm kind of mulling your theory over in my head, Opie, uh, your whole theory of they built the cities uh, where they would be safe. I think it was more that back then... They just built a bunch of them everywhere, and whichever ones are still there are the ones that didn't get all fucked up because they <laughs> built them where the weather was. I don't know about like, that. Like, there could have been this thriving metropolis in the, the middle of the country somewhere that they really thought was going to take off, and a uh, tornado comes through, wipes it out, and they go, okay, we're moving on. Yeah, yeah. it just keeps knocking it down. Yeah. I'm knocking it down. They just said, fuck it. And then you move on and go, all right, let's try it here. Let's try here. And then they, they went to the Gulf Coast, maybe. Big hurricane comes in, wipes them out. Go, nah, we can't really make a major uh, city here. Are you trying to say there was like a huge like uh, city as large as New York City, let's say, in the middle no. of Arizona? I You're think saying it, Kansas would have been a cultural meckle. <laughs> right. <laughs> it said meckle. would have been <laughs> a schmeckle. <laughs> the schmeckle heads that built... <laughs> Knuckle. I think they were a little like <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> there was a potential for there to be a thriving city there. Well, you know, but early on that little sprout was knocked down. A little known fact: we, uh, the United States, owned Montreal for a day or two. Yeah, we needed we, that crap. Well, then right? we realized, what are we doing? It's too cold. Stinks. We don't need this. Too cold. So we pretty much just gave that away. That's why the UN isn't in like Fargo. You know, because it's just too cold. Can't really get there all the time. So they put it here, uh, where people work every day, get stuck in traffic anyway. But they weren't planning on that way back then. They are just happy. You know, they built New York City. Nothing knocked it over. And uh, it continued. Right. I think that's more the theory than some very smart people back then going... Um, as I look at my uh, satellite photo, I see this area is All free right. from... That's a good point, too. <laughs> hey, on the instant feedback, uh, someone's writing, you guys should call Joe Rogan. His house is right in the path of the fire. He says there are fire trucks in his driveway right now. Joe don't care, though. He'll just buy another one. one Carlos more. Mencia started that fire. <laughs> <laughs> the Punisher! Uh, I show you! I'm the Punisher! We're going to have to ask him about his nickname when he comes in next week. Of course we are. First question. Because now it does sound kind of silly. The Who punisher. calls you no, the Punisher? Give, have him give you a list of names of what comedians actually call him the Punisher. Right. What? Who, who made it up? How did you hear that they were calling you the Punisher? Who's walking up to you saying, hey, Punisher, Mr. Punisher? Does his mail say resident or Mr. Punisher? Mr. Punisher or current resident. Even if comedians believe that, they they, they wouldn't do it because it's a, you're you're admitting defeat. Like right, you know, like exactly. You, I, I'm just Joe Blow. This guy. Yeah, he's the Punisher. He's the Punisher. Punisher. <laughs> Let's say hi to Mike in New York real fast, and then Jimmy Norton's on hold. Uh, Mike, oh. what's up? Hey, uh, Anthony. I just wanted to uh, remind you that we're kind of sitting on a major fault line here in New York. Yeah. Yeah, it's and one of those that they talk about and try to scare you, and uh, sorry, it ain't... Mom, but I saw a news piece uh, maybe a year ago that we are sitting on one, and it could happen here in yeah. New York. Yeah, of course yeah. you can. Sure it is. I didn't, watch the, I didn't watch the news that night, but, you know. Yeah. If it ever happens, it'll happen way, way, way in the future. We'll all be right. long gone. I wouldn't worry about the fault lines. It's just the geography of the Jeez. East Coast isn't conducive to earthquakes. It just isn't. There isn't that moving plate shit going on where there's... There's fault lines, but there's not this tremendous amount of pressure between the two plates, like just going, yeah, just waiting to snap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's fault lines, and they're just sitting there. They're like cracks. <laughs> Jesus. We get a slight shake every once in a while. We're sitting on a major fault line. What could this mean for the New York? Get, uh, nothing. You get a slight shake, and then you got a report that some housewife in Bayshore felt yeah. something. Yeah, I felt something. Yeah, great. I Shut felt up. something and I, a lamp moved. Yeah, okay. Right. I dropped my spoon. Yeah. Nothing. California, meanwhile, you know, highways are collapsing in uh, San Francisco. That's an earthquake. Uh, Jimmy. 
Hi, guys. There he is. Jim Norton live from Los Angeles, California. Oh, it's so early, Jimmy. <gasps> or it's 4.15 in the morning. <laughs> now on, by the way, call me by my new name, the Disciplinarian. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> wow, a bunch of comics gave you that name? Yeah, you know, they talk about me and all that. He disciplines people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're all trying to come up with a, a nickname for each other, so I'm either going to go with the Destroyer or the Instigator. All right. Yeah, well, I know. Whatever. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> hey, hey, hey uh, where are these fires out there? Do you know? Uh, you know, it's funny, man. I, uh, funny story. I actually, um, they, they said there was fires burning, and I, I could see little white flecks, which I didn't know what they were, but I think it was like, like embers or smoke or something. Like It was just in the air from, from the fires. Are they really close? falling down around where you are, huh? I mean, really light, though. Dude. It looks like a mild, teeny, teeny snow. Like, you hardly notice it until you look through the headlights. You're like, oh, yeah. Um, and uh, the only good news up. is that guy, remember I told you that awful apartment I looked at in the guy's house where he had his music equipment? Yeah. I'm hoping his, his house burned. That's the only bit of some sort of a fire, and maybe all of his possessions are on the side of a mountain, and he died face first in the mud. <laughs> hey, how's the uh, sore throat? It's better, actually. I just took another antibiotic. Um, I was going to call yesterday, man, because I, I have late calls. Yeah. Jimmy? You there? Jim. Jimmy? Is this a new bit? <laughs> like anything? <laughs> I'm just going to, like, in the middle of a conversation, <laughs> stop talking. Damn it. He hung up on us. Well, fuck him. You are the new permanent uh, third man, Bill, because we can't they be hung up on. call me the substitutes. <laughs> just repeat after me. I'm Bill Burr, and I'm on the radio. So we can't do that. That's all you need. So we can throw that into the open. Uh, well, we want to talk to Jim about his hooker. His hooker went to Rikers. Oh, here he is. Yeah. Big story we'll in the get, paper we'll today. We'll get into that and a few other things. So so you're feeling better, Jimmy? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just I'm, I got shitty cell connection here. I, I'm in my new, my new pad, as I like to call it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> how is that? It's, it's a studio in Los Feliz, or however you say it, uh, Los Feliz. Oh, boy. It's like seven miles from where I'm working, not even. It's great. But I, I came in to look at the apartment, and it, there were flies on the window inside. There was like 20 flies on the inside of my apartment. Like Amityville Horror? Dude, that's exactly what it was like. And I'm, I'm starting to think something bad happened here because there's like, when, you know, like those little, those little uh, vases filled with oil? And they have, like, those little sticks coming out of them, and they give off a nice scent, and they kind of, like, uh, for a room is freshener. Yeah, I've heard of that. Um, they had a really strong one in here, and there were flies on the window, and then I came in today, and there were more flies in here. Oh, dude, there was a body in there. Dude, that's what I'm starting to think. And yeah. It's a small little studio, but I'm like, there's this sickly smell. Oh, my oh, God. God. Someone it's died in your apartment. Dude, I don't know what it is. I, 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 I might even be paranoid. But because of the flies were all concentrated on the window, they were all inside the apartment, right by this part by the window, and yeah. the thing was open. They could have flown out whenever they wanted to, and they didn't fly out. Jimmy, did so you it, did you Google your address? Um. Oh no. Not a bit. Yeah. Do that because sometimes that turns up a crime or murder or death that might have taken place in the uh, residence. Are your neighbors like avoiding eye contact with you? <laughs> I haven't seen any of my neighbors. There's only my stuff. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, my God. Somebody got their brains blown out, and they sprayed across the window. <laughs> I, I, looked at, I thought of that, man. There was a bludgeoning, or there was something something soft and red leaked out of somebody onto that window because the flies were digging it. Oh, oh that is, man. Uh, this is my first night in the apartment, so I'm kind of creeped out by that. Gary, you're going to be sitting on the bed like uh, that scene in Big. When he was all scared, sitting in the hotel, little kid, <laughs> crying with the sirens going past, pulling his knees into his chest. Yeah, yeah, just wanting his mommy. <laughs> how's it, Jimmy? How's the taping going, Jimmy? It's great, dude. I'm I'm really happy. I mean, uh, we we shot last night and we shoot tomorrow night, and uh, they, but they've been this this week has been great too. So so far so good. My acting is getting better, so I'm kind of happy. But I was I they're gonna fire me. Yeah, you're bringing the tone of your voice down a little bit. Dude, you know, I was doing something today where I had to actually uh, point a weapon at somebody in the scene, and all I'm, I'm, I'm like, starting to just look like that, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, stupid? I started doing my awful, raise the voice because you no, can't put, act acting. Put your hands in the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't make me shoot you. <laughs> I, I open my eyes really wide sometimes too, like to try to pretend I have expression. I'm like, what are you doing now? <laughs> Is that show going to be on BET? <laughs> oh, that's great. Open his eyes. The only expression. 
this guy, what time are we coming back tomorrow? Uh, well, I, 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 <laughs> the show is good. The scripts are great. And uh, they're very happy with the way things are going. Yeah. You got any complete yet? Oh, yeah. We've, we've shot um, one. We're on our second one now. We shoot over two nights. And then uh, next week we do the third one. And then I come back. Um, I was going to come back Monday, but I'm coming back Tuesday because I'm, I'm doing actually the Tonight Show on Monday. Oh, uh, oh, well. So we'll have you Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh. Nice. So a week from, uh, a week from this coming Tuesday, Jimmy returns. I'm, you know what I'm doing it with? You know the chick that played the, the lead in, in, uh, in, in, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah. Uh, she's pretty hot, right? Yeah. She's really hot. I may try to ask her for coffee. What do you think? <laughs> Good luck, bro. Take her back to your smelly, fly ridden apartment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just push your face where the other body was and you sodomize her brutally and <laughs> laugh all the bugs attack her. Um, and the, there's this group called the Killers who I never heard of. You guys know who they are? Yeah, the Killers are yeah. huge. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's what the guy told me, but I never heard of them. But these are very popular. The, they're one of the biggest bands of the past year. You should get a picture. No uh, Ozzy, but, you know. No, they're really they're, they're really good. I'm serious. You, you might like their stuff. You should download a couple tunes. Oh, my God. Fuck. Oh, what happened? Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I'm just, the cell connection is shit. I'm getting a, a home phone soon, like next Wednesday. Oh, you are? Oh, the phone guy's going to come in and hook it up and go, yeah, we just took a phone out of here. Ooh, <laughs> you should have seen. Ooh. Any uh, hookers, Jimmy? Dude, uh, that's why I'm still awake. I was just out riding around because I kind of found a couple of spots like just by accident. <laughs> yeah, by um, accident? No, dude, on my way home I saw a couple. I was just driving home. This is a new way for me to come home. Are they real chicks or, you know? Yeah, you gotta weed through them. There's a couple of different areas. Like, I, I, where the trannies are, there's like a main drag on the way, right on the way up to my fucking place, like two miles from where I am. Lucky ducky. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm avoiding them. Uh, you gotta go down like Hollywood Boulevard a little bit and fuck some side streets to find like the regular chicks. And I've done Craig's a few times, some Craigslist stuff. Dude, yeah, what's the quality compared to the, uh, East Coast? Not bad. I mean, uh, I've had good, good success so far. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, of course. Okay, I get my phone. I keep I keep hearing some little background noise. Um, ghost. No, it's not, not <laughs> ghost, dude. Don't tell me that. I'm all fucking weirded out now. By that I know phone. you are, and well, you should be. I'm fucking Larry Lonely calling my friends and I'm hoping the sun will come up before we get off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can kind of hear it in your voice. I You're know a little he's out. A little Jimmy's scared. <laughs> he's a little freaked out. A little scared, Jimmy. A serious question. If you get arrested, is that going to fuck up your, your deal out there? You know, that is exactly why I'm here right now. I fucking said, what are you doing, you psychopath? Get back to the apartment. Because I forgot my phone, and I'm riding around. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm just looking around, you know. Just uh -huh. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> just shopping. His voice just went up and turned his alibi. I'm yeah. not doing anything wrong. I'm not doing anything. You hear those guys all the time on cops. You know what's what? I'm not doing anything. You know what's great? When this uh, HBO series finally airs, yeah. You know, the National Enquirer and all those uh, rag magazines, they pick apart everybody. Oh, they and, love it when celebrities uh, and the, trip on their own dick. And the stories are going to come up for Jim Norton that we all know already. Is, yeah, we've heard it. It's going to just be hilarious that it's going to be available for the entire country. You know what it is? They'll probably fucking come up with nice stories. People ask me, what do you like to do? I'll say, well, I picked up some trannies. And they'll actually have to have women come out of the woodwork and admit that I was nice to them. <laughs> That'll I, be the shocker. That'll be the scandal. Because <laughs> yeah. I remember when Voss was, uh, you know, doing his thing there, uh, you know, they even had stories on him in the National Enquirer, how he used to smoke crack and stuff. Yeah. The old Voss. Yeah, boy, that fucking ended quickly, didn't it? That National Enquirer coverage. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Hey, uh, your hooker uh, went to Rikers yesterday. Dude, I know. Ben just told me. Like, when I first called in, he, he got on. I'm, I'm bummed out to hear that, man. Um, I can't believe I fucked her, though. I'm so proud of myself. Yeah. Thank you, boys. Thank you, boys. That was all because of you that that happened. Well, she, uh, she went to jail crying. Well, I want to bring everyone up to speed because we have a lot of new listeners. This um, escort service... Um, was just a, they were huge fans of the show, and they gave us all a free hour. Jimmy was the only one that we know of that actually partook in the free hour. And uh, the guy that ran the company, he's been in Rikers for a while now because he was just bragging way too much to the media and everybody else and, and bringing his hookers on a national talk show like ours. And then Jimmy, um, Jimmy spent a night, or, or more than a night, no, Jim? No, no, no. It was, it was only one section I had with her. It was yeah. one section. Yeah, and you got the ass flu from her, remember? <laughs> I, I, dude, I did eat her ass, but I didn't have a flu right after. I mean, you, you might be right. <laughs> yeah, we that. dubbed it the ass flu. The yes. ass flu. And these girls were coming in uh, in the early days of XM, and they were really just bragging how much money they're making and how hot they were. And this one, Natalie, 
Natalie or Natalia? Natalia, right? Natalia, Natalia. She would get uh, $2,000 an hour for, and, and, you, and it was a two hour minimum. And Jimmy, uh, freebie. Jimmy got a freebie, yeah. So it was a big deal on our show. And, uh, so, so Jason, who ran the company, he got, he got busted mm-hmm. a while ago. And they were trying to nail, uh, Natalia. And they finally got her. And, uh, she went off to Rikers yesterday, I guess. Yeah. She was claiming to be the number one escort. Well, there's a lot of expensive escorts, dude. Like I, I told you in Florida, the uh, the one the one girl and her boyfriend who liked the show hooked me up. She runs an escort agency, and she hooked me up with like a fifteen hundred dollar an hour hooker who like did like f- fire things with her asshole and porn movies, some really weird stuff. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of girls that charge that much, but Natalia was very high profile, and she should have just kind of kept quiet. You know, you can't fucking brag about that shit. No, she went on bragging, man. Uh, uh, she was on TV bragging about it. I yep. mean, she just she just got out of control. With did the interviews. It says uh, Natalie McLennan, because that's her name. Her brown eyes filled with tears, and her body convulsed in sobs as oh. uh, Manhattan Supreme Court guards handcuffed her and hauled her off to Rikers Island. Mm, she was not merely, merely a call girl, argued uh, the prosecutor, Jeffrey Davis. He charges McLennan, known in the underworld sex trade as Natalia, <laughs> held a managerial position and hired and fired prostitutes for an escort company uh, uh, called New York Confidential. Well, I heard that the, de- the defense is actually going to show my picture and say that she she fucked me. She's an angel of mercy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might do her some good. Uh, look at that. She's taking care of little cancer kids. <laughs> <laughs> the story is really the story is really funny. It says her high heels clicking across the courtroom linoleum. <laughs> yeah, it said she was not dressed for Rikers. She had a little flirty skirt on an off-the-shoulder sweater, and five-inch pumps being led <laughs> off to Rikers. Stiletto heels. Where she will soon be also wearing a broom handle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But she was a friend of the show for a while there, and uh, that's too bad. They were yeah. Remember they were flying her off to uh, the West Coast? Some guy, some rich Wall Street guy, uh, she had to beat down at the airport. He's going to get into his Learjet and just fly off with this guy and fuck him over the course of a weekend. Yeah. yeah, they have good lives, those chicks, man. I mean, they, if you're making that kind of money and you're getting flown all over, you, you're living a pretty good life. I think, though, when, uh, what's his face? Who, who's the guy that ran the, the joint? Jason. Jason. Yeah, I think when Jason went off, uh, her world came apart, and uh, she wasn't pulling in that kind of cake anymore, and she figured she'd talk about it. How do you get to that level as a hooker? Like a <laughs> national, no like, headliner. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. so bad. Making four grand a gig. She's like right now. She's like the Dane Cook yeah. of uh, hookers. The rest of them are, making all kinds of money. Yeah. The rest of them are doing food spots in the corner, <laughs> blowing somebody for a falafel. <laughs> they get ready to jerk a guy off. A bigger hooker comes in and bumps them and blows them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Billy's right, dude. We, we, Billy's right. We have, we have, they have a hierarchy like we do, man. It's the same. It's by your credits. It really is. It's, it's almost like she's got the fame and she's got the notoriety. Yeah. And she charges more money. You may have seen her sucking cock at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> she's got an upcoming gangbang coming out on HBO. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she's uh she's in the joint now. Fifty thousand dollar bail. Isn't that five G's cash? Dude, that's twenty five blowjobs. You can't get you can't get started, Jimmy. <laughs> you can't uh someone can't scrape up five G's for this chick, get her out on bail. I guess she has no one to call. Who's she gonna call? Yeah, yeah, I think her money dried up a long time ago. Yeah, she yeah, seemed like what... the type that was spending it. They got... I doubt... Oh go ahead, Jim. No, no, I can't just. It's yeah, just like you're here, Jim. It's just like you're here. I know. I keep. <laughs> <laughs> did anybody? Hear, did, did anybody hear Colin Quinn and Nick's show at all when they were on JFK? No, we need tape of that. It's. It was actually funny. I heard a break where Patrice called in and was talking, and the three of them were funny together. Hmm. But just to listen to nervous idiot Colin try to be a radio host and talk, like he must have said, "Okay, but I was gonna." Okay, but I was gonna about six times. It's like you fucking idiot. Will you just wait a second and let everybody finish, and then you can talk? Oh, we should really, get paid for that. They, yeah. They have no idea. They think it's easy. He thinks it's easy. He's a fool. Colin's a fool. A lot of people <laughs> think this radio thing is easy. Hey, just come in and talk, right? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> is it? Is it getting lighter yet, Jimmy? Is what getting lighter? Where you are. Oh, um, 
No, why? Is still, that a hint? Still pitch black? Yeah, it's still dark and creepy. Do you hear any creaks or sounds or anything? No, it's actually a pretty newly renovated building. Yeah. Um, And, and, the, and the studio is, I hate yeah, studios. Especially the rug in your apartment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, it's only one, only one section is brand new. The rest yeah. is <laughs> it's, it's really creepy, dude. It really, that's the first thing I thought of was these flies are collected in an area where some fucking shit went. And you know what the lady told me, this fucking liar? She told me, oh, they cooked a lot of Greek food in here. Oh, yeah. That'll, oh, that's what did That'll it. do it. I, yeah. I yeah. guarantee Jimmy's out of that place within a week. It's a gyro. It where do you cook the Greek food? Against the patio door on the fucking lower half of it? This is fucking just really creepy. Uh, oh, by the, yeah. By the way, the, the woman who fucked me out of the money for the other apartment, <laughs> she gave me a refund of 200 and something dollars. So I'm out $1,600 from this lady. Wait, wait, wait. 1600 bucks, and she gives you a refund of 250 It was 1800 for the, and, and then she gave me 250 or something back. And what so was I'm this bitch's, what was her uh, explanation for not giving you a full refund for that shithole? Well, she has to. Uh, well, the lawyer talked to her and it said something. And she, well, she charged me for administrative fees. What? And, and, and for stopping payment. Believe me, dude. If we don't work this out, I, I've never, I, I've, I've never requested uh, any any pest help, of course, for something personal. But yeah. And look, I had to deal with some uh, some pests in that apartment. Right. I certainly think that she should understand that that's a very uncomfortable thing to have to live with. Call the troops me. out, right? <laughs> dude, I've never. She, do you understand what money she, she's stealing? Fifteen hundred bucks from me. Of course she is. That's probably what she does. She gets money like this. People go in there. They can't fucking live there. Uh, she gives them back a little bit of money and pockets the rest. Well, her argument was, "Well, I held the apartment for him." Well, this fucking you're holding a roach-ridden apartment. Yeah. What's that mean? That's not a good product. No. You know, That's why you're holding it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's no one in it because it's fucking bugs. The, the, the bugs were there. That is disgusting. Dude, I can't really? live. How are your mice, by the way? Uh, I haven't found a, a a mouse in a long time now. You roaches or no? Uh, no, I haven't seen a roach in a long time uh, as well, so what, I'm all good. I'm starting okay. to look around now. I'm going to buy finally. You have to, dude. No, I know, yeah. finally, because, uh, you know, XM gave us, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're real happy with us, and we're going to be around a while, so now we could uh, <coughs> set some roots down. That's right. Hey, and did you hear way, about the uh, DirecTV deal yesterday? I was just about to congratulate. Uh, yeah, I, I actually heard about that uh, from Yoshi, told me. Um, they, they just, did they announce five or no? Uh, yeah, five million was yep. announced, I think, Monday, something like that. And uh, yesterday, the DirecTV deal. And, uh, man, uh, the company's uh, definitely coming to the table finally and showing that they believe in us because they added us to this uh, this deal. They didn't have to. That's great. And, uh, you know, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be, uh, what are you doing, Ben? He's laying out the papers. Oh, okay. All the other papers just got here. We're going to be exposed to close to 15 million more people. Uh, dude, that's fucking funny. Obviously, we're not going to get all 15 million, but, you know, if we get a, even a small percent, we'll uh, we'll probably double the size of our audience easily. So. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations, XM, for $5 million, and uh, I got a thanks to Logan very much. I have to call him to thank him, but, you know, he took very good care of me recently, so... Uh, ah, ooh. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy's getting a little raise. Yes, they gave your pal a raise. So, oh, I uh, heard about that. Nice. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm really happy. So I got to thank Logan. I didn't get a chance to call him yet. But, um, you know, it's just great, it's great news, man. I'm glad the company's doing well. What yeah. other job can you leave for weeks on end and get a raise? <laughs> I know. What other job is, can you possibly do that? I want that deal. Dude, hey. what, is, what, what does that show you about how badly I'm doing the job that I'm gone? And he's like, all right, no, just stay out there. Here's a little more money. <laughs> you just stay away, and here's more money. <laughs> Hey Jimmy, uh, your pals Ant and, and myself, we're uh, we're negotiating with some networks ourselves. Oh yeah, <laughs> really? you know you're not the only one that uh, might be on television. That's my right, friend. we got some TV projects, uh, movers and that shakers we're working, working well. for us. Who 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 who? You gotta you gotta hook up your MiFi because you're missing some great radio, bro. Yeah, we spent at least two to three hours on this. We we did a uh, TV pitch with A and E. With this really bad production company that uh, pretty much pitched Mythbusters to A and E, starring Opie and Anthony. Dude, it was such a flop in the pitch. We're <laughs> we're sitting there as the guy that's pitch, pitching it is just eating his balls, and we're sitting there, and, and they're just straight faced. The A and E people, just straight faced, and then they just like started picking apart everything the guy had just uh, brought up for the pitch. It was embarrassing. <laughs> we 
you guys embarrassed? Oh, oh God, were we? Just sitting there wanting to leave. We couldn't. The woman uh, that's in charge over there at A and E, she had this uh, bracelet uh, watch, and uh, like two minutes in, it was like a chandelier on her wrist, <laughs> and I just heard clang, 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 clang as she looked at her watch. <laughs> And I was like, oh, this is going nowhere <laughs> fast. And uh, we explained it on the air. Like, when we were off the air and we had no career, you know, I, I, I was brought right back to that moment thinking this is all we have and we need this. And then I realized, wait, no, we don't need this. This, this would be just a little side thing. Yeah. So then we actually sat back in that conference room and enjoyed the disaster that was taking place in front of us. The guy pitched the show as uh, Mythbusters meets Jackass. Meets Jackass. And the woman instantly <laughs> went, well, we don't want to hear Jackass because the, the lawsuits that are uh, happening with Jackass, and we have two shows in the can we can't even put out because of lawsuits uh, with that Jackass type thing. And then the guy kept bringing up Jackass. Saying, and the but, woman's telling but Jackass him. Was, he's like, but Jackass was so huge, and they made a movie because it was huge, and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, well, let's just not, you know, enough about the moose. <laughs> you know, no more Jackass. <laughs> and he just kept going and going. And we're sitting there just at that huge, lonely conference table, just eating it. And was, it, he, was he smooth or no? Oh, oh, God. No. It was embarrassing. I, they might replay some of that over the weekend when they replay some of our shows. It was but, a nightmare. It was the exact opposite of how you want a pitch meeting to go. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. Uh, dude, it, I mean, we did about two or three hours on it because it, it was just unbelievable. He wouldn't take no for an answer. It was so obvious they were done with us. And then we're in the elevator. And he's like, guys, I think we're really close. We just got to tweak this a little Tweaked. bit. Tweaked. And like, <laughs> it was not a chance in hell. And he's like, I think we just got to tweak this a little and get back to them. They gave us a one-way limo ride just <laughs> there. Opie gets in, shuts the door. The handle comes off in his hand. Yeah, because it was just a nightmare. Because yeah, the, uh, the, the, the production house, this TV production house, whatever, they needed us more than we need them. So they were trying to show us. You know, that we're stars or whatever. So, yeah, they get a limo to drive us over to A&E. That was just we, awful. We, we met him at their offices. It was set up like a boiler room, like one of those <laughs> where there's a bunch of illegal aliens on telephones until the cops come and chase them out, <laughs> soliciting illegal find, goods. We can't find one thing these guys have uh, have done that's, yeah. that anyone knows of. He was crowing about some equestrian reality show <laughs> that the Travel Channel was picking up. <laughs> Unless they're showing over and over again Christopher Reeve breaking his neck, I don't want to see it. <laughs> it was, Dude, it was, it the, was worst. the worst pitch meeting we we walked 38 blocks after we left this. Me and Opie just laughing our asses of like two lunatics in Manhattan laughing at how badly this like, went. This guy pitched the show as MythBusters with lawsuits. Yeah, Brilliant. it's like so. What you're saying is this is MythBusters with some kind of court action later. Some type of financial burden through litigation later. Oh, t tell him about and then he's like, well, what, what would they just be doing? And he's just like, hey, you guys are just... Oh, that's yeah. it, too, because then they are asking questions. It's like, okay, well, I guess the gist was we're going to do things that everyone wants to see ever since they're a kid. Uh, Jimmy, you ever want to see a grand piano drop through the roof of a house? That's the kind of stuff O&A will be doing. <laughs> and then the woman's like, all right, well, you got the stunt type thing. We understand that. But what's happening... What's the setup? How does it end? What the? And he just kind of didn't have an answer. It was just kind of like, well, O and A just do what they do. And then she turns <laughs> and she starts looking at us for an answer on how this ends. And I'm sitting there. I felt like I was in school and just picked on and didn't know the answer. I, 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 I actually, I think it actually came out of my mouth. I think I said, "Don't pick me. Don't pick. I don't have the. I don't know. I can't even make something up." He actually. He actually told them that uh, at, by the end of the show we don't accomplish we don't accomplish anything. No, that's, that's the beauty. We just don't figure out anything. At which point end. it felt like the Seinfeld uh, pitch episode where George just kept going to show about nothing, and they we they were bombing in the meeting. We were bombing. What was she looking at you though? Like when he said when he, when he said look, look Opie and Anthony will just do what they do. Did she look at you to go all right? What is it that you guys do? Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. And then we're trying to say well uh, you know on the radio. We have a very, you know, it's like guys just kind of hanging out and talking to each other like we would at a bar or any other setting that 
You know, and how does that translate into driving a car into a big pool of Jello? Uh, I, but let me, uh, Opie, how would that? And at that point, I just openly started laughing. You know how I do? Because yeah. I don't, I don't have anything else, and I'm uncomfortable and a little nervous, so I just start laughing really loud in her face. Dude, it was so embarrassing, <laughs> such bomb. I was getting like hot flashes. <laughs> the guy is turning beet red. Like I had, you know, you know how they hand out bottles of water at the conference tables whenever you do those meetings. Oh yeah, yeah. I I finished mine, <laughs> and no one ever finishes the water. I was so hot, <laughs> and like my mouth was getting all dry, and I I. It was such an uncomfortable place to be a minute in. And Jimmy, you know when we knew we were done is when this uh, the head muckety muck there that makes all the decisions changed the conversation and said she actually said, "So is it still nice outside? Still nice outside? Ah, oh. never a good sign in the picture. Yeah. Well, you know, Jerry Seinfeld uh, must have gotten the same uh, question after the pitch meeting. Yeah. For yeah. That show. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's I think that's even worse than bombing on a comedy stage because oh because bombing a comedy is just you know a bunch of fucking idiots you'll never see them again right that's right like, that like actually might have made your life better right out, like it you... could have made that one instance may have made our life better and now no no and we might have to deal with them again we could walk in now to a pitch meeting with Jesus and Satan with us and pitch a show of these two fighting live on television and they will go. Weren't they the guys that were in here with that idiot about yeah. the <laughs> Mythbusters <laughs> jackass show? No, I'm sorry, Christ, Satan, we're gonna have to pass. Were you embarrassed for him? Oh yeah, embarrassed for everyone in the room. Inclu- I look, I saw my reflection in the window, and I was embarrassed for that guy. <laughs> I swear to God, this guy is delusional, man. Absolutely delusional. Yeah. And then she's talking about the weather. I'm like, yeah. oh God, just get us out. It of was here. a horror. Yeah, I'm she sure. Said, I'm gonna go outside and check. Hang on a second. Yeah, yeah let me go and then run. Yeah, <laughs> run from the scene. I'm sure that's how other pitch meetings go, where they're walking to the elevator talking about the weather. The weather. It's, instead of saying stuff like "Don't pitch this to anyone else. We'll get together later today." Yeah, well, let's talk tonight. tonight. I'm gonna email you that. Yeah. Hey, still uh, warm out? I'm like, yeah. For this that- for this late in the season, it's pretty warm still. Obviously, it's warm. I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm in an air conditioned building and I'm sweating. <laughs> That really is humiliating. Oh, you walk and speak Jimmy. You and pretend that didn't just happen. It's right. Like the guy who raped you and just chatting with him. But then we're thinking, <laughs> we're all the way up. <laughs> your ass still hurts and he's asking you about the weather. Just, he's helping yeah, you put your coat on. There you go, sweetie. All right, take it easy. <laughs> I think the relationship went well. I think it just needs some tweaking. After he brutalized you, he's asking you how the food is in that restaurant down the street. You're like, eh, it's good. You know, it's oh, jeez. It's like one of those, those bad date rape like school movies where the girl starts crying afterwards and the guy has no clue. Like, what's yeah, what? wrong? What? Why, why, why are you crying? I'm showing you how much I care yeah. about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's nothing better than a passive-aggressive date rape in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then... You know, the meeting was summed up when we hit the sidewalk and we all went our own ways and uh we're 35 blocks from where we need to be and, and that's the that's the point we realized it's rush hour traffic and the limo's gone. Yeah, the limo, no limo for he, the ride back. He only hired it for one way. Jesus. Great. Very, well, very I, great. I, I wish I had been there for that. Oh, oh I it's know. great. Just when you think things are going well in your career, you know, you get these reminders. Get that re- little reminder of your place on the ladder. That's right. <laughs> I gotta go to bed, boys, because it's quarter to five already. Dude, they're right. telling us that uh, you gotta go. Hey, uh, Hudge. Yeah, they're saying they gotta let me be. Yeah. Jimmy, a heads up. I don't know if it works for radio. I'm gonna try it here, but uh, I think Steve sent it to you, or it's on foundrymusic.com or opianthony.com. Okay. The someone out there, this thing is just going everywhere. Someone took the Shining trailer and added different music to the trailer. Same, yeah. They they use uh, uh, actual audio from the movie. They cut it, uh, they cut the video up and added music to it. To make it seem like it's a completely different type of movie. Like a, oh, really? Make, it makes like it, a romantic comedy yeah, like almost. like a romantic comedy. <laughs> you got to see the video. It's really, really good. I think it's on opianthony.com right now. So check. Right, I'll check it out soon. Wake up. All right, buddy. Uh, check in soon, all right? I'll talk to you guys earlier in the week, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I really miss you guys, man. Cool. We miss you, Jimmy. We'll see you I soon. I miss you guys. All right, all right Billy, take care. All right, Jim. Bye, boy. There he goes, Jimmy Norton. It's our little pal. You want to try this shining thing? I don't know. I don't know how it works on uh, 
with just the audio. Trust me, the video is really, really good. This thing's yeah. going to be all over the, the world. It is already. I'm noticing uh, it's getting emailed to me like five times a day. I'm getting this thing. Very funny. All right, let's try it here. There you have it. Obviously, the video brings the whole thing together, but you get the idea. Yeah, music's playing. They're all frolicking. Like, every scene is them frolicking, <laughs> even if they're time. running away from a murderer. <laughs> it looks like they're running, like, with that music playing. <laughs> it really did a good job, whoever uh, edited that together. That's up there, Steve. Yeah, yeah. there's a link right on uh, the front of Opie and Anthony. Just another com. nameless guy that just puts something on the web, and, you know, ev everyone's going to take credit for it. Dude, that was me. I'm not so I sure that it. was a nameless guy. That was, uh, I, it could have been, but, uh, I got. What's his name? What? What's his name? I don't know what his name is, but I got a name. So he's from a some, nameless guy. Uh, well, at the moment he's a nameless guy. But, uh, I got that sent to me a hundred times la yesterday alone only because, you know, when it's so obvious when stuff like that hits the web because the links come in like crazy. Yeah. So it must have just happened. And Yoshi called me at maybe nine o'clock last night and said a friend of his a friend of his is the one that actually did it. Yeah, sure so, it is. I don't know. Sure it is. I don't know. So he's a friend. These are the new urban legends. They the things that be. pop up on the web. Someone obviously had to sit there and cut it up and had right. the idea and everything, but you never know who they are. Their genius just goes unnoticed. It's true. Well I wish. All right. Good one. We're gonna step aside and we'll continue. We gotta talk about uh the Red Sox and the Yankees a little it's bit. Be unbelievable. Also, you know what? Unbelievable. Bill Burr got rave reviews yesterday when he went at it with Scott Farrell. Oh, that was great. We yep. cut it up uh, in case you mi uh, missed it yesterday. It's about two and a half minutes long. It's really good. Uh, a hardcore Yankee fan and a hardcore Red Sox fan just going at it. It's topical. And all talking baseball. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Like didn't get personal. Boston, New York fans always talk. We should get Scott Farrell <laughs> on the on the phone today because it's going to be a a huge weekend. It's for baseball. A, just such a big news story. Uh, you turn on uh, the news here in New York, and I'm sure up in Boston, and that's like lead story. Yeah. The uh, whole thing. John Montone from 1010 Wins uh, went up to Boston. He was here talking to New Yorkers. And just, again, just like Bill said, they just get the dolts. Yeah. The oh, dopes. Yeah. Are the, he probably got 50 intelligent comments on the upcoming games. And uh, they just pick, the curse is back. The curse is back. <laughs> it's a it's not even a one-year curse. They're, no. they're the defending champions, you <laughs> fucking moron. I right, listen. Yeah, I can't wait to chant 2004 at you. Then what are you going to do? Huh? It's the curse of nine months ago. <laughs> That's how it works. Because I'm a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd still have to, even if they beat us, they, you still got to win the World Series because if right. you don't, then you haven't won it since 2000. So Right. Just relax. Both of us, our pitching staffs are beat up. I have no idea. It's just going to be... It would, I have, I'm going to have to watch it with the sound turned down because I, 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 for a second I hear Chris Berman like, Oh, the Yankees scored a run in the top of the first. You just lose your mind. I'd just be like, uh, yeah, him and Dan Sean. You got your mind, Fi. Huh? You got your MiFi? Listen to uh, the game on your MiFi, or maybe uh, you know, watch it. I can't. Uh, oh, and then turn I, the I have down. to watch these local guys and and just hate them. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Or it's part of the love. That page can douchebag. <laughs> page two of the paper, uh, the New York paper here, the Daily News. Curses! Ghost of Bambino is back. Oh my God! Already. <laughs> and the first line is: "It's official. The curse is back." Well, it's official. This, Obviously, this yeah, guy it. Dave Goldener, uh, a Daily News staff writer, he he's making it official. It's How official. is it official? The curse is back. That the curse is back. The curse is back. They're still the defending World Series champions. How they're is just, that? They're just hanging their heads. Did they wake up and all their rings were gone? And it was like, wait, what happened? Yeah. It disappeared. It's off the record books. They never won. You have to go. They didn't, they didn't start talking curse until at least 60 years in. So we're right. good till about 2064. Oh, yeah. You it's can't official. bring it up now. Oh, this is, uh, <laughs> this is what you were talking about in the office. Dan, uh, Shaughnessy, right? Oh, yeah. He's a writer for the Boston Globe. He's the guy who actually coined the phrase, the curse of the babe. And he's the only guy in Boston who was pissed, I bet when the Red Sox won it because he has made an absolute fortune off of that fucking fairy tale <laughs> rather than just going, hey, we sucked as a franchise for 84 years or right. 86 years or whatever. They're like, oh, it was a goblin. It's in his best interest yeah, let me read to just, keep this going. Let me read a little bit of this. It's official. The curse is back. The chronicler of the Red Sox near century of futility now admits that the star-crossed team has slipped back into choke mode after its unlikely World Series win last year. 
And I quote, these are, after all, the Red Sox, wrote Boston Globe columnist Dan Shaughnessy, author, author, excuse me, of Curse of the Bambino. He right. added, the Sox have been put on this earth to make us suffer. I mean, what do you have to do? They just, they had the greatest comeback in professional sports history. What? About a year ago. You know what I mean? They're one game out of first, and this guy's writing it like uh, he just went through another 70 years of misery. Right. I'm surprised no one in Boston's beat him up, really, because Red Sox fans absolutely hate Dan Shaughnessy. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm really surprised because he's at all the games. You can't miss him. He's got that goofy hair. He's a funny-looking guy. Yeah. <laughs> nah, he's just, he's, just, he's just trying to make money. They're trying to sell papers, and he's stirring what it up. What a loser. He continues. Shaughnessy yeah. said the Sox 2005 September swoon has brought back all the bad vibes the Beantown buffoons thought were gone for good. I quote again here. It's alliteration. It has to be right, huh? The Bean Town Buffoons. Bean Town Buffoons. The quote is, we thought we put all this stuff. <laughs> New York to, Yahoos. We thought we put all this stuff to bed last year. No more 1948, 1949, 1974, 1978, 1986, or 2003. No more talk of collapse, he wrote last weekend. Now this. Now this. I mean, can you believe that shit? It's like, what well, we were up like what? Like five games? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not. It's not a collapse. They're a two hundred million dollar team. We're a hundred and fifty dollar, hundred fifty million dollar team. It's like you just they're gonna battle it out, and it's gonna be a great weekend. And just watch it, enjoy oh, yeah. it, and whoever wins is the better team. That's it. All this fucking this the is... misery. We thought we put it to bed. We did put it to bed, and you wrote that article last year. You fucking <laughs> idiot. I still have it. I got it framed on my wall. <laughs> I like how the 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 curse is back and it's official. That's official. Yeah. Like, that how is it made it. official? It's official. We need to sell papers. <laughs> Unbelievable. He continues. Go to the fridge and look at that photograph of you standing next to the World Series trophy. Shaughnessy 52 wrote on September 10th. Remind yourself, it's different now. Huh? Why? Why is it different? <clears throat> it's, it's, I bet he married the first girl he ever fucked. You know what I mean? Because he, yeah, he, he just figured, you know, it'll never happen again with that negative mindset. The curse of my penis. I better get this girl and just yeah. scoop her up. I went 24 years without getting anything. Better fucking cling on. <laughs> yeah. That's that's just, you know, in this day and age, it's it's hard for any sports franchise to repeat, you know? I know it mm. still happens, but... Oh, the Patriots not, have done it. Let's no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I say I know Jeez, it still happens. But fucking Pats. It's not I know. Can you believe this shit? As far as a sports fan, it's like, I, no matter, even if the Yankees sweep us, whatever, I can't be in a bad mood. It's like, we've won three out of the last four Super Bowls in a World Series title. It's like, yeah. you know, we've... That doesn't get taken away when you don't win the next year. Yeah, like uh, like we're going to be all miserable. Yeah. We won't be, but they'll find ten douchebags to get sound bites and be like... You know, those people like, you know, I, I hold a pen like this in my right hand any time they play. And if I <laughs> if I set it down, then, then they lose. And then they play like this on Golden Pond music underneath it. And they make everybody look like retards. Right. Because like that's what sells. That's what people want to hear. People don't want to hear, you know, well, we won last year and... uh yeah, we hope they give it their best shot. And, or uh, even whenever they, when, whenever they show Yankee fans, they never show somebody with, like, their shit together. They always show that guy with, like, his shaved head. Like, he's got, like, fucking 12 beers. And, Let's go Yankee! <laughs> Big fucking gut hanging out yeah. like John Goodman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the curse, baby! <laughs> Back! <laughs> Knows one of those superstitious idiots is Earl. <laughs> Earl's refusing to shave until yeah, the Yankees get knocked shave. out. Yeah. No, until, like, he's on the team. Oh. <laughs> like, he's in yeah. the locker room, and they're going to ask him, Hey, you're not shaving? Well, you know how it goes every year. Well, he's the guy we congratulate when the Yankees win, though. Hey, yeah. Earl, congratulations. Like, like he, he had something to do yeah, with it. He, had something he gets to do a ring it. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I think it's. Uh, I think if you're going to be a sports writer in this day and age, though, you got to be as negative as possible about the thing you're writing about. I mean, the papers, the New York papers, are filled with these. Yeah, New York papers are brutal they, too. All these sports writers absolutely hate sports. So why are you even writing about sports? Because they're the nerds from gym class who never got picked, and all these guys who play, uh, they're the ones who were like during dodgeball, right? Who fucking breaking their glasses <laughs> as they beamed them in the face. They their, their, their nose is numb until like <laughs> last period. They just find something negative about every single thing. I gave up reading the New York sports writers because it's, it's the same shit. That asshole oh, Phil Mushnick. Phil Mushnick is a perfect example. The guy hates sports. Why are you writing about sports at this point? 
Obviously, wow. the, the the game has passed you by. Uh, you don't you don't like it the way you did. So go write about. Got the perfect last name. He just sounds like he right. whines. Right. Right. Go Man, write children's book or something. It's just a mush. He's a real ass, this guy. Boy, Mushman. they really do not paint a promising picture for the Sox in this article, does he? That's, yeah, the, no, that's, 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 his, uh, that's his thing. Yeah. Worst bolt pen in the uh, American League. He's probably in danger. No legitimate closer. He's probably in danger of uh, losing his house. <laughs> All the money he was making off that curse of the Bambino. Johnny Damon is beat to a pulp and soon will be imitating Will Chamberlain's free throws when he tosses from center field. <laughs> This is a guy that writes for the Boston Globe. Right. It sounds like it came out of the post. Johnny Damon, the guy who hit the grand slam to put the Yankees to bed in game seven of last year, and he's already trashing them. He's beat to a pulp. I mean, New York papers do the same thing. I see them, you know. And what happened? I mean, I think when your team does win a championship, yeah, it should last more than a year, you know. Most people, as soon as uh, the, the, the next year comes and they don't repeat, all, they get all depressed again, you know. I think you should enjoy the fact that you won a, a championship in in recent years, but but the whole the, I don't know the whole sports thing has completely changed. You can you can enjoy it for a year until you know someone else is crowned World Series champions, and then that's it. Then your team sucks again. Yeah, the misery huh. of a Red Sox fan. But try being an Expos fan, <laughs> like a Padres fan. I mean, are, they, are there any? Yeah, they've never I've they, never met one. <laughs> didn't you have to go to like Puerto Rico or something to watch the Expos this year? Yeah, the what? last year. Now they're down yeah, uh, the uh, national. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, ex yeah, exactly. They left. They just yeah. they're never ever winning it again. They're just some or teams they never, did. never hear fans from the Brewers. You could be in any city. You will see the friggin' Boston hat on somebody. Any city in the country. Yeah, I don't see You'll any. You see a Yankee hat. I don't see any Brewers hats here in New York. You really don't no. see You're many right. Brewers <laughs> hats. Know. They make a good point. Padres. Yeah. Well, the brothers wear the Padres hats. I don't know what Do that's they? about, but something's going on. In the the homeboys wear the. Uh, yeah. Also, the they get. Hats. Also, they get behind some obscure team, but I think that has. No, it's more colors. Yeah, it's, it's about it's, the colors and yeah. the team. Yeah, Patrice does a bit about that. Oh, really? <laughs> so when that white people come up and ask him, you know, you know, do you like the whatever? He's like, no, I just like the colors. The colors go with what he's wearing. Yeah. No, San no. Diego actually clinched. They're in the playoffs. Yeah. This year, the Padres. And who cares? I know right? exactly. This. Hello. Hello. Exactly. <laughs> they didn't. He didn't bash Ortiz though. If he bashed Ortiz, he's he's suicidal. Jonathan. Ortiz just really, I'm sorry. As a Yankee fan, you you got to hit him in the head so hard with a ball that he's just out for good for postseason. Oh, that's your guy? Je Ortiz, is he's just a monster. For me, it's whenever I see Derek Jeter. Yeah. The fucking guy. You be, be, when, when, when I remember game seven, he was the only guy. Like, he just was still... I was like, I was nervous when he was on first. He started pumping his <laughs> fist like this fucking. He has like this, this, he almost like willing them. You know what I mean? Yeah. He just didn't have the right guys. That guy is, uh, you know, even the Red Sox fan. That guy's, I can say that man. He's fucking unbelievable. Yeah, he's one of those like Yankee legends. Always the first in, guy in the, in the future. Up on the, it's gonna be one of those guys that just is in the same yeah, uh, class. Yeah, he's the first guy up on the dugout and, steps, giving yeah. people high fives. Yeah. When some guy from like the minor leagues gets brought up and hits a home run, he's unbelievable. That's what it is. Like the when the old guys talk about DiMaggio and Lou Gehrig, and I remember when I watched him play. You know, that's gonna be he's gonna be one of those guys. Oh yeah, he'll, talk he'll about him a, playing. Yeah, he'll have a big weekend. Hopefully, we can. All uh, right, someone is defending the Brewers on the phones here. <laughs> All right, a uh, Brewers fan. I gotta respect this right off the bat. <laughs> Timmy from Wisconsin. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Hey, hey. me. If uh, the Brewers play the Pirates today, tomorrow, and Sunday, <laughs> if we win, if we win one of those games, we're guaranteed 500 for this year for the first time since '92. Really, you'll be a 500 team. Yep. That's what I love about doing a, a a national talk show. See, to us, it's all about the Yankees and the Red Sox, but. In your little neck of the 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 country, there's a whole different thing. You're they're all you're psyched to be for. play 500 <laughs> ball. There's probably articles all over the Milwaukee we, papers talking uh, about how they might be 500. As we, yeah. as we talk down to them, you're your little neck of the woods. You're a cute little state out there, huh? Well, Wisconsin's a state, yes it is. Hey guys, oh that's horrible. You just know yeah. your own backyard. That's all. Right. Hey, hey guys, yeah Timmy. Milwaukee Brewers in 2009. All right, there you go. 2009. There you yeah, go. He's giving himself the time to build the team up and everything. That's nice. Let's say hi to Max Cleveland checking in. What's up, Max? Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Pretty good. 
Hey, uh, I just wanted to say, Bill, I, I feel your pain from all these years living in Cleveland, man. We've been struggling forever, and if the Tribe makes it this year and doesn't win the World Series, they're just going to give us shit again about how, oh, they can never do it. They haven't won since 54. Uh, no, sir, I'm not in that boat. We, we won it <laughs> no, last year. Anymore. There's no People pain for just you to forgot feel. about it. It's already it's starting. You the, know, you know, Bill, right? Uh, the pain. On. You still remember. Every year, right? No, <laughs> not no, last year. No, I hit the lottery. I'm sitting in the big house. I'm done. I'm We're retired. hoping for that uh, same ticket, man. We're hoping to hit that lottery. Dude, I hope you guys win it. I hope you win it. I don't give a shit. I, you know, I got mine. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. There you go. Let's say hi to Gooch89. Gooch89, what's up? Gooch89. I don't know. That's what they're... The, oh. I'm from Cleveland too, and I just wanted to. Well, what's your right name, now. bro? What's your name? It's Goo. It's just the Gooch. Man. Uh, oh, the Gooch. We the know, Gooch. We know I, you. I, I thought there was some other guy with a, a Gooch type of name. There's only one Gooch, fellas. All right, the Gooch. What's up? I'm just, I'm just also from Cleveland, and I want Billy before was saying that you know you can't really bitch because the Patriots won three fucking Super Bowls. Try living in Cleveland where we get fucked over any time we have a good team. That's all I wanted to say. That guy kind of stole my thunder before me. You got a great football coach this year. Romeo? Yeah, from the Patriots. He's the, you know, <laughs> from the Patriots. Ben, ben just always ben, brings are, it back to the Pats. You are what everybody hates about Boston fans. Yeah. You are that guy. I'm that guy. I'm a real fan. Okay, you're a real fan, but it, oh, the Sox, they got to win. They haven't won so many four fucking Super Bowls. You had the greatest basketball player ever. Didn't the Bruins win a championship? Yeah, you're, you're all correct, sir. Okay, Thank you. well, that's the thing. Here we haven't had championships since 1968. Yeah, but we're not competing against you. We're competing against like New York. I understand. The bar is a lot higher, sir. Everybody Step talks up about your game. The suffering, the, the massive suffering the Boston fans go through. Shut up. Get some money. Buy some players. <laughs> Why is your stadium right on that fucking lake? Because we like it cold. Holy yeah. crap! Like that, that's, cold a, that's a brilliant place to have a a, a sports stadium right on the lake. Have you ever, it have starts you ever freezing in there? October. Yeah. I was huh? at a Monday nighter in December at that thing. Uh, why? Because it's fun. <laughs> it's not it's fun, fun after a while. Drunk, be cold, yell, throw shit. It's a blast. Yeah, but you know something? Out in Cleveland, you you guys never had to deal with fucking all these idiots on ESPN every night just trying to find miserable people in your town and doing these little fairy tales about them. But you can tell them to all fuck off because you won. We can't do that. We still suck. Yeah. We have no chance. You guys remember the drive, Elway? <clears throat> you guys, anybody remember that? 86 to AFC Championship game? No, I actually I remember it. I'm, I'm just, I'm just no. being a dick on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was brutal. What Wait, about what? Jordan? What about Jordan's shot against the Cavaliers? That they yeah, but he, yeah, he was killing time. everybody. That's right. You guys had a good ba uh, basketball team there for yeah, a while. Doherty, I Nance, forgot about Ron that. Ron Harper, yeah. Mark Price, Craig Eagle. Always were, someone a little better, right? They were fucking great, and Jordan just murdered well, us. It's all about LeBron now. Oh yeah. LeBron James. Hey, the guy that works for me is a security guard in a building where LeBron lives, and saw him wipe a booger on the elevator. <laughs> oh I would have to get rid of that elevator. He, he, <laughs> he picked his nose and wiped the booger right on the buttons where everybody touches. Uh, it, ah. but the real story is he refused him an autograph. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna bring you that guys. LeBron's a, a dick. What an ass wiping boogers on the buttons. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna um, sound really stupid. Uh, Cavaliers ever win an NBA championship? I have no idea. No, they have never have. All right, LeBron nope. could give you your first one. Well, Curse. they made a bunch. They made a ton of off-season moves. I don't know if you how big basketball fans you are, but they bought in Larry Hughes, tons of guys this this year. Yeah, they should be good. Yeah, Larry Hughes will definitely help you. Plus, we got a new owner, so. Dan Gilbert. He got, he owns Quicken Loans. The guy's got a billion fucking dollars. All right, well, good well, luck, to you guys. All, All right, right, Coach. Thank you. Later. Let's Cav say hi Cavaliers to Mark. will never win anything until <laughs> they change the name and their logo. Cavaliers. What's up, Mark? What's up, man? I uh, I just want to say fuck you to all you guys. Try being a Buffalo fan. Yeah, that's a tough nut. I did Four. that. I did that for a while when I was living up there. Four Super Bowls, no Stanley, one, two Stanley Cup appearances, nothing. And so close to one of those Super Bowls. Everyone's oh, missing so the point. Close. I'm saying, I'm from Boston. I'm not miserable. Right, you're not I miserable. Just, I just can't beat the, the fucking tide. I'm shoveling shit against the tide right, because everyone is still gonna call. Bill, I know exactly yeah. how you feel. I understand your pain. Three Super Bowls in the World Series. <laughs> By the way, Bill would know this. I'm at a NACA conference right now. You're what? At a NACA conference. Oh, that's the college thing. <laughs> oh, really? Those things are the worst. What do you got to do? You perform for college kids at like 9 in the morning. Oh, that's... Doing your stand-up act. That's a great gig. 
you have a halfway wow. decent set, you think you're going to get a bunch of colleges, and then somebody comes out and juggles. Oh, and fucking brings no. people on stage to do a conga line, and they book like 50 schools, and <laughs> you don't get anything. Oh, my God. What is it, like like a wedding band thing? Like a wedding, they they go in and it's audition. Comedians it's comedians and bands, yeah. For... I remember one year I was, I was hosting, and this guy ended his show. I swear to God, he threw marshmallows no. out at the crowd. No, he didn't. And encouraged them to throw him, throw him, throw the marshmallows at him as he was hitting them with a bat. And then, like, he had like these almost like an anti-aircraft gun kind of thing with marshmallows shooting out all over the fucking stage, standing ovation. And I'm walking out there after him, like, like kicking the marshmallows out of the way, <laughs> going. So I got a computer recently. Anybody? Oh no, that's awful. Oh. Oh, God, is that horrid. That's really funny. Okay. True, too. It's and sad. he gets the gigs. Of course he did. A bunch of shit flying around the room. <laughs> That's all people want. And a free T-shirt. That's another big one. You could run for president. Is that your your campaign slogan? Anybody votes for me gets a free T-shirt. Keep I'm in. You know, I like this guy. That's <laughs> a bad idea. This guy's solid. Uh... <laughs> some some dumb stats really fast. Major League Baseball franchises with the longest postseason drought. Ooh. Not even making it to the postseason. Milwaukee Brewers haven't been there since 1982. Mm. Kansas City Royals since 1985. Tigers since 87. Pirates since 92. Philly since 93. A little Not even postseason. Not even postseason. Phillies are another team, man. I feel bad for those guys. Mm. This guy's been around since like 1880. They're averaging one World Series every hundred years. <laughs> Don't forget the... Uh, I guess it's not like, what, 125? <laughs> Phillies won in 1980. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying they've been around since 1880. Right. And that's the only time? That's the thing, though. No one was chanting 19... Eight, oh, 18, whatever the fuck. 1880. Yeah, no one was chanting that shit. There was no ESPN around to hype it. Right. Plus, you know, it all depends on, like, who your biggest rival is. It's like, yeah. like our biggest rival is New York, and... You know, New York, Boston, Philly are just, I think, the best shit talkers. Uh huh. So, I mean, if you got something like that going on against you, you're fucked. Yeah. What about Chicago? We haven't mentioned Chicago. Dude, Ooh. they have two teams that That's combined the, haven't won it in like, what, 900 years? I got, I got the stats <laughs> and Billy's not far off. They're doubling down every hand and they keep <laughs> losing. <laughs> just splitting aces every fucking season, and they just can't, they just can't fucking get it done. The guy at the table playing two spots on the table because oh, yeah. the seats aren't all full. I did a I'm gig out in this Chicago, and this, and they tried. Well, somebody yelled 1918 at me, and I just went off. Like, Are you fucking kidding me? What are you 1906 and what 1907? Double the chance. Here it is. Uh, Chicago Cubs last won the World Series in 1908. Longest drought. What about the uh, the White Sox? Right behind them, 1917. <laughs> See that? And they, they have two teams going for it every year, and they still haven't won it in, do the math really fast, 88 years. And they get a free pass. No one fucking talks about them. That's that's who Shaughnessy should be talking about. We just won a World Series, you know what I mean? And it's like he's he's bitching Sh about us, and it's like, look at the White Sox. They, they, have better, they have better odds than most of the teams out there. they got two teams every year, and they haven't done shit. Dude, watch p old films of World War One. That's the time. Yeah. That's the time frame we're looking at. Guys with those pointy German helmets running into nerve gas in trenches. <laughs> that's the time frame. The Titanic. How about you? That's the time frame we're looking Pop at. Pop up the year 1917. 1917. Was the last time a Chicago team won the World Series? We'll give them the benefit of the doubt because the Cubs go all the way back to 1908. But we'll give them one. So since right. 1917, they haven't had a, a World Series champion uh, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And then Very good. and then after that, as Anthony gets that, the Indians, Cleveland Indians, haven't won the World Series since 48. 1948. Very yeah. good, Bill. And then, uh, do you know who's next offhand? Uh, or I'll give you the team. Is. San Francisco Giants. Oh, that wasn't that in the 50s? Very good. 1954. God damn, you know your shit. Them and the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Yankees won every, every other right. time. And then the stats get to the point where I turn off all the sports channels. It's the who cares. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first couple are interesting for everybody. And then that's why sports radio will never have huge audiences. Because then they go, well, and then you got the Astros. They haven't won since 1962. And then after that, it'll be the Brewers. 19 Shut up. Yeah, the Astros, that's just basically when they came into the league. Because they've never won it. All right. You got the... Uh, wow, I can't even find good history. It was all about, like, the war and the... Uh, 
the Russian Revolution. <laughs> By the way, speaking of baseball, <laughs> Hank Aaron is going to be on with uh, Rob Dibble and uh, Kevin Kennedy today at 3 o'clock on the East Coast on uh, home 175. Plate. 175. Is it true that those teams watched communism come in and go out of Russia? And hadn't won the whole Holy time. Shit. The whole time Russia was communist. You know I can't laugh at him. We, we, we did too. Yeah, you did too. I mean, but, but now. I mean, when we were on year 86, they were on year 87. You can't really trash them. <laughs> yeah. Poor Chicago. Oh, damn, that is a long time, though. There's nothing you could uh, give us from 1917, really? really hard is to that find how they, something. they came up we with that? Their, uh, fans got a couple of things. Uh. Wow. Germany announces unrestricted U-boat warfare. Ah, with those new uh, submarine things. Oh, this is always always the worst one. British captures Baghdad? Oh, oh holy yeah. Shit. That would happen. They should have kept it, <laughs> bastards. We'd all been out of some trouble. Of Peter course. Malinsky invents toaster. <laughs> of course, 1917, <laughs> USA... Uh, Enters World War One. Mm -hmm. We know that from our stupid history classes, right? Yeah. Russian uh, Revolution begins, like Ann said. Tsar Nicholas II abdicates in Russia. Yep. They're, they're even using words that uh, we don't use anymore. The Tsar. <laughs> uh, Lenin arrives in Russia. John? <laughs> he was playing that. Yeah, it's all about uh, communism and Russia. Jerusalem. Yeah, that was a big year for the uh, revolution and World War King uh, Tut. One. Jerusalem. Visit St. Louis. <laughs> British were, the the Brits were very busy in the year 1970. They were taking over everything. Jerusalem captured by British. And, what were you doing back then? And Russia opened separate peace negotiations with Germany. What was the number one hit on the radio back in 1917? Radio. I want that stuff. <laughs> what, what was that? What what did the subway cost you back in 1917? Was there a subway in was 1917? It, yeah, was yeah, it was it like the 1800s. But was it one of those round ones that used air pressure to push them down? <laughs> Who's getting on that thing? What did the paper cost you back in 1917? Ah, oh, it had to be a penny. What Everything about, was a penny back then. What about then. a half gallon of milk? Penny. Penny? <laughs> Everything was a penny. Everyone just carried around pennies. Didn't even need dollars. Those all stayed in the bank. All right. Well, those are boring facts. Yeah. Not much going on in 1917. Well, we were going to do this after the break, but we did it before the break. So now we got to play the uh, Bill Burr, Scott Farrell fight from yesterday. It was a Love discussion. It. it was a little discussion. Because I'd never seen anybody throw it back at Farrell where you couldn't hear Farrell anymore, and he, Farrell was just getting lambasted. Yeah, he killed him. Renato. Yes. What's up? What do you got? Renato. What do you got? Uh, the, I don't know the Cubs have the, uh, the Billy Goat curse. Yeah, the Billy Goat curse was always second fiddle to the curse of the Bambino. Yeah. And now that there's no curse of the Bambino, the Billy Goat curse hasn't really taken over that top spot. They said you can't bring a farm animal. It's like a health code violation. <laughs> it's not a <laughs> filthy curse. animal. Get it out of here. Yeah. All right, punch out. Yeah, what's that curse about again? I don't know. They, they brought Some a... guy tried to bring a goat. In, into the into the baseball stadium, and they said, "Sir, you can't bring that goat in here." And then he goes, "Well, then you guys are cursed." <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that big. Isn't that a great story? Kind of like you were trapped in an elevator and you needed to like kill some fucking time. I'm gonna Holy tell shit. you the story. <laughs> of the curse the of the curse goat. of the Billy Goat. That's really funny. <laughs> oh Jesus! Just that is so not ever. a curse. Your your team is pretty sad when the last time you won a World Series, you were allowed to bring animals to the stadium. Yeah, but not goats. Your monkey may come in, sir, but keep that goat outside. Uh, let's go to Jim in Illinois. Jim, it's all about yes, Chicago sir. today. You guys stink. I know it. I know they do, but I'm going to wear my Cubs hat and my Cubs shirt no matter what. You get a lot of Cubbies fans wearing the yeah. uh, wearing the hey, gear. They, they, hey, were uh, you uh, were you were you looking at Anthony's scrapbook earlier when you were talking about the war and stuff? Yeah, my 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 <laughs> hey, seven to eight nineteen seventy scrapbook. Very nice. Oh, you know what I wanted to ask him or any Chicago people who are listening? You know that that dude who reached out and grabbed the ball there? Yeah. He got so much shit. I hate how they never brought up the fact that there were like six guys around him all lunging for the ball too. Yeah, they just didn't get they it. They just didn't get it. Yeah. That poor guy's life was over. I mean, he got death threats. Didn't he get like plastic surgery to change his appearance? Did he? Like that? Got know. rumors of that? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's that's like like the myth. Yeah. Well, myth nobody's, nobody's there's, ever there's, seen there's a bus. your first episode. That's part of the pitch. Side of the get, bus. Didn't get a no job, huh? Who gets? Well, it's a whole show on people that get plastic surgery, mm. so uh, baseball fans don't kill them. 
At least we're Based still trying to figure out our, our pitch, Anthony. Mm-hmm. We'll, you're, just, you're just tweaking it. We'll come up with a tweak. That show. was a tweak right there. Warren, what's up? Hey, boys, what's going on? What do you got today? I was bringing up the, the fact that Bartman, based, uh, that Steve Bartman, the guy went over, reached to grab that foul ball, and the outfielder, uh, Moise Salou, went nuts, and basically they blew the game, and then everyone was sick blaming him for blowing the World Series. They put that guy in witness protection program. Is that really true? That sounds well, like Well, I mean, more legend. or less, he had to leave his job. He took a leave of absence and everything, I and mean, it was crazy. They just lambasted him. They yeah, never but, heard from him again. I mean, the guy went under, you know, it was just hidden. Yeah, I mean, you know, all the photoshops, you know, that were out with that guy, I mean, the guy was just a big baseball fan, and, you know, and he just was an overzealous fan. Yeah, but I never understood why all those other people who were standing up, reaching up for the ball around him, they didn't get just as much shit. They just didn't the have intent, the luck of... The intent was yeah, there, yeah. the intent yeah. was there. And you know what? We've all been at baseball games. We're all reaching for that ball because you're yeah. not you're not thinking in that situation. You're like, holy shit, it's coming right at me! Oh my! And you yeah. get excited, and you, you're not. It's like, it's like the end of the uh, the accused, right? Just oh, yeah. getting banged on that pinball machine. People start cheering on. Hey, right. you're next. I mean, yeah. Yeah, just right? caught yeah. up in the moment. Caught up in yeah, the moment. Caught up in the moment. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, uh, by the way. No, I didn't sit on my daddy's shoulders and watch Chicago win the last one. <laughs> uh, other people are coming up with interesting 1917 facts. Yeah. Uh, Anthony drops out of high school. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of bastards you are. Oh. <laughs> 1917. That is uh, very funny. Bunch of comedians, aren't you? All right. There you go. If you want real baseball talk, the guys are going to be doing it at uh, at home plate later today, 175. We like Rob Dibble a lot, and, and Kevin Kennedy, they're, they're great guys. And Elo says baseball talk is alive and well. That's right. And they got Hank Aaron on today. That's pretty cool. They do a really good show if you're a baseball fan. The Hammers. The 3 o'clock nice. on, uh, on the East Coast on 175. We'll go to break with uh, Bill Burr and Scott Farrell going at it here. Listen to this. <laughs> Raphael Palmero. Yeah. <laughs> What a douche. What we got here? Ah, uh, Disturbed. It's the Opie and Anthony program. Thanks for checking us out once again today. This is off the new album? I think so, yeah, right? These I motherfuckers like are just the best. It's kind of a sad day. Bill Burr now is going away for a little while. What? What a mess. If you say Voss is sitting in that seat, I'm no, going to no, punch no, no. someone in the head. <laughs> It'll just be a surprise who's sitting there on Monday, I guess. You know, we were really depressed that Jimmy was leaving for a while. That was a real bummer. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then Bill Burr steps in, and uh, and it's been great. It's been absolutely great. You know how well it worked? Old Darren, new Darren. That's how well the transition was. <laughs> <laughs> different guy, different face, but the people didn't seem to care. Right. They were just as happy watching Esmeralda get pissed at new Darren. As they were old Darren. Uh, cause Same it's, thing. It's still bewitched. Right. It's still <laughs> bewitched. Look, Sam is still there. Uncle Arthur's still there. All people I'm familiar with. Darren changed, but that's okay. Well, no, it was a big Larry change. Tate. I, I can't compete with Norton's uh, transvestite getting shit on stories. I got, I got nothing. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. People <laughs> love it. They, people have embraced you, Bill. And like they, they have been cool because I was really been. expecting a brutal trashing. Like, this no. guy doesn't get hookers. No. We were expecting it, too. Yeah. We thought you would get at least hammered for the first week or something. 19 the, of 20 days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but no, they just fucking... Yeah. They they adore you. It worked out well. And now, what are the odds that's going to happen with a third person? Now, Bill's got to go somewhere. We bring someone in. You think all you our listeners maybe, are going to be... Maybe it's you guys? Almost like how a good player makes the players around no, them better? No, no, no it is no, absolutely not. not us. No? Well, next week on the <laughs> Open Anthony program... <laughs> nah, don't bother. Let me tell you this. <laughs> next week on the Open Anthony program, we will have the third Darren Stevens... Third never works. The fourth Darren Stevens, and we will go all the way to the fifth Darren Stevens. Oh, that, that, that never works. That's like the Jets, right? <laughs> you have that guy Brooke. What's his face? We're going to the fifth string. <laughs> Vinny Testaverde uh, in studio. I talked in a mic a couple of times last week. <laughs> Said uh, we haven't really uh, done much. We have three different people sitting in next week for Jimmy Norton and Bill Burr. Yeah. Yes. And then Bill's gonna. Then Jimmy comes back for. 
I don't know, two or three days, and then he's gone for another two or three weeks, and Bill's going to hopefully, uh, you know, spend a, a, a lot more time with us again. Maybe we should just do an uh, all in the family Archie Bunker's place transition where everyone leaves. It's just like one character, like us, but we completely change the setting and everything. And the show is no longer even a, a pale reflection of its former self. I'm looking for the, <laughs> forward to the day we just franchise this out. That's it? Uh, hire a new Opie, hire a new Anthony. New Anthony. And hire just, a new Bill Burr, hire a new Jim Norton. And just let them run with it? And we just sit home and collect the checks. I like that for part. For coming up with the, uh, the idea. I like that part of it. Why not? Yeah, once a month you do a phoner. Yeah. yeah, hey, how's it going? We own the name Opie and Anthony. It's like those bands out there. They yeah. just keep uh, replacing everybody. That's it. We heard about uh, what happened with, uh, what was it, Foghat? Is that a true story, I think? I don't know. They tore with his mustache. <laughs> the drummer's <laughs> mustache was all that's left. Who knows? But uh, Bill will be in Sacramento next weekend. I actually bond with that, that, that bus story there that uh, that dude from Ministry was telling. You did? Yeah, because I tried to actually retell that fucking story. And, you know, oh, it's like no. a 20 minute story. Yeah. And like 30 seconds in, I'm bombing. So oh, I'm just, no. I'm just trying to run to the end. Get to the end. Yeah, this girl's just looking at me like, yeah, that's the, that's been great. It's been something. Yeah, he kind of had an inimitable style about that story. Yeah. Very I'm hard kind to of translate. bombing with talking about bombing. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Listen, we got to go to the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Chris on Long think. Island. Chris, what's up? Hey, uh, I just realized uh, you and Ant are kind of like you know Van Halen, yeah. and Jimmy is David Lee Roth, and Bill Burr is Sammy Hagar. No. <laughs> oh no! No, don't we're even not say from, it. We're, we're not, not going, going to, to that extreme guy, Gary Sharon. Gary Sharon. Oh my! No. <laughs> no, don't do that, to us. <laughs> Oh, the guy Please. that sits in the seat next week is Gary Sharon. He's the third, uh, the third guy sitting oh, in that seat. Oh no, that didn't that, work. That didn't work too well. <laughs> the Hagar thing worked. <laughs> and then uh, David Lee Roth comes back for a little while, and then he leaves again. Yeah. And then, uh, then Sammy Hagar, Hagar will be back. back. A little while. Oh, you. That's a great analogy, uh. Chris. All right, guys. Listen, hey, I'm singing live wire. I'll see you guys on thirty first. Looking forward to it. Wait, wait. You sing for them? Yeah. Oh, awesome, man. You guys are really good. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it's our Halloween party. We're uh, just starting to hype this thing. This is going to be a huge, huge party. Oh, yeah. We're doing two things. We're obviously having a Halloween party with uh, uh, 2U, which is Anthony's brother's U2 tribute band. They're mm -hmm. great. And uh, and uh, we picked you guys as well. You guys do the ACDC thing. Yes, we do. Thank you very much. Great job, man. Yeah, Absolutely. really good. And then we got uh, a Rush tribute band as well. 12. 2112. And those guys are unbelievable, too. Yeah. Unbelievable. You, when, you, when you see a Rush, uh, a, a, a guy trying to cover Rush, you're so super critical of how he sounds because Getty's got such a distinctive voice, and and uh, this guy totally pulls it off. Yeah, can we get really some samples good. of Livewire and the Rush tribute band, 2112? Either for yeah. Monday or later today, whatever. Yeah, this Halloween party is huge because, like I said, it's a Halloween party, but it's also celebrating a year on XM. Yep. We were trying to do something special, and we couldn't really figure it out. And then Halloween was close, so we're like, ah, let's just throw it all together. Right down there at the uh, new Hard Rock in uh, Times yeah, Square. Great. Only that's 600, really 600 cool. people could get into the party, by the way. Only yeah. 600 people. Limited space. Limited space, and we're looking for people to dress up as characters from the Opie and Anthony program. Anything. Not, anything. Anything we've ever talked about in the last year, or even in our past, if you want to go old school. Cause you could be the whistle. You could be the wiffle ball bat. Exactly. If you want to dress like the wiffle ball bat. Uh, that's open. Uh, any characters from the show? Anything? Anything we have talked about that you think you could uh, turn Bill into Burr a is now open. Uh, you open season on Bill Burr. That's you want right. to put on your Bill Burr costume? That's right. And we're gonna have some uh, great prizes for the the winners. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be just a great great day. And uh, well, we'll see you there, Chris. I'm gonna go with Gary Sharon. All right, Gary <laughs> Sharon. Oh, is that the war? <laughs> no shit. Let's say hi to Pete in Philly. Hey, Pete. Yo, fellas. How are you? What's up? Hey, man, I just want to say Bill Burr is fucking killed for the last two weeks, and I'm going to miss the dude. Yeah, no, he'll oh, be. Oh, thanks, man. He'll be back, and even when Jimmy comes back full time, Billy's going to be a, a, a big part of this show. Yeah. Why don't you tell uh, Sugar Tits he doesn't need to come back full time? Oh, oh you know, you know hey, something. Hey, for the Halloween party, doesn't have your audience look like boss anyway? Wow. Bro. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> that hit his phone. <laughs> Wow, we all have our haters out there. All the, so. Why does this guy want to correct me? I'm bewitched. I thought I had all my bewitched facts right. Uh, sir, Brian, what happened with my bewitched? Hey, uh, uh, 
Sam's mother is uh, Endora, not Esmeralda. Oh, Endora, right. Esmeralda is uh, the other one, the uh, cousin or something. Isn't that from uh, the Smurfs or something, Esmeralda? No, nah, Esmeralda was a character on the show, but you're right. It was Endora was the uh, mother, the right. bitchy awesome. mother-in-law. Hey, Very Joe, good. Thank you, Brian. Bill. All right, thank, thank you. you. Happy birthday to Bill <laughs> again. <laughs> that whole gag. See, we lost a lot of our friends when we were doing the old show, so we're mm -hmm. very excited that Bill has worked out so well. Oh, yeah. Because we lost the likes of, you know, Jay Moore, who's still a friend of the show. He just doesn't participate. friend of the he show. He just doesn't participate like he used to. And then, you, busy. then we had the dice thing that uh, went away, and Jim Brewer went away. So, you know, Bill's going to fit in quite nicely yeah. as we move forward. So we're very happy about that, without a doubt. Well, Brewer went over to the other place, and then uh, Dice is the one that was really just out of, it seems, scumbaggedness. The guy just decided, uh, you know, hey, fuck those guys. That's too bad. I don't need them no more. And eh, we don't need you. So Thank you. Have fun. Enjoy. Enjoy the rest of your career. Yeah, you could have had that crowd at the garden. That uh, that show you did. Yeah, that crowd would have been there if you hadn't done our show for a month straight before that. Right. Stop it. Hey, we're getting a uh, a nice hit. Hickory dickory. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting a nice hit in the Washington Post today. For all you people down in the D.C. area, XM's new weapon, a direct TV link-up. D.C. radio company offering 72 channels free to satellite TV subscribers. They got a picture of your pals, Opie and Anthony. A pretty big picture in the article, actually. Anthony looking completely thrilled to be there. I remember when this was taken. Why do they keep using this picture? Let me say. They uh, oh, I didn't see this. I got this cheap. Look at the picture they gave me. Here, it's right there to your right. Oh. It's all staticky. I don't understand this. Uh, you know, you get a photographer in studio and they take a picture, and then this picture is used for the next like three or four years. Yeah. And uh, th this is like the worst picture. Anthony is just staring into space because I'm making a point. You know, so you're just kind of waiting to talk because we we're being interviewed, and I'm using like weird hand signals and I'm looking off to the side, and that's the picture they use time and time again. This was. Fucking... Isn't this the stupidest picture? Dude, do you remember this? We. We were exhausted. Yeah, because we just started. We didn't know what to expect with this morning thing, and we're we're getting up at like three in the morning, getting here at four thirty. Just stupid shit. That's great. And we're doing all sorts of interviews in the beginning, because because it, it was a big deal. We were coming to satellite, and uh, it was one of many interviews we did. And that's right. The guy was just uh, taking pictures as he's talking to us. What? You're wearing the same shirt. Oh yeah, I just realized. You were. <laughs> I was looking to see if I was, but I'm wearing my dull shirt. That uh, in this picture, I'm wearing my dull shirt. That Bill was making fun of. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, my generic shirt. <laughs> you wear one every day. You got another I, one uh, on. It's got a little something. It's a sailboat. What is that? It's a sailboat passing a lighthouse, for your information. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Will you shut up, dude? We're trying to... It's We're trying it's... to keep our cool factor up. Where do you, where do you the get entire those? Thing. Those are like... Uh, J.C. Penny? <laughs> 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 I don't know where this one is. Yeah. Oh. This is Nautica. <laughs> this is a Nautica shirt, my oh, all friend. Right, all right. I guess so. Nautica. Hence the nautical um, motif on the uh, front. All right. Um, I love yours. You That's got a, a Western style shirt. It's a button shirt with the uh, Western style uh, uh, pockets. A little yeah. thing kind of goes down. Do you have a yoke in the back? A Western style this yoke? Is a, uh, this is a uh, I'm going to be on TV shirt. And there's a dove. It's a pigeon. It's a pigeon. It's an actual pigeon? Pigeons no. don't carry no, fig leaves or whatever that is, a olive branch fig leaf. What am I talking this is about? one of these shirts that if so many women would like it, you're like, oh, my God, that's right. a nice shirt. And they start touching Ooh, your chest. It's really me. nice. But every guy fucking trashes you. What's with the bird it's over your tit, dude? dude? What's hey. up with the bird? Hey, huh? were you a fucking fag over here? <laughs> hey. <laughs> I got a faggy shirt. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Women seem to like it for some reason, yeah. and uh, and isn't that what only? It's the only yeah. thing that yeah. matters. I'm out. I'm out of intro lines, so yeah, yeah I gotta yeah. put on a flashy shirt. <laughs> I'm not trying to attract you, dick. It's like plumage for a bird, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you actually use the bird. I can't believe I've been in here for almost two hours since you finally. I've been trying to hunch you over. <laughs> I know he's turning that yeah. pigeon away from us. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, Bill. We take a look around right away. They'll just think it's a brown shirt. And we'll get around to this stuff. <laughs> I knew it because I heard there was like a kind of little weird like tone oh, yeah. in, in uh, Opie's voice. I came and was like, 
Morning, Bill. Hey, how are you? <laughs> and he's literally thinking, hey, you know how, you know, 20 how... minutes out of the radio, beautiful. Yeah. A bit just came walking in. Well, that's exactly what happens. You're in the office and you're trying to, you know, figure out what the fuck you're going to do with this particular show. And yeah. then Radio Gold walks in and yeah. says hi yeah. to everybody. Unbeknownst. We get so excited when someone fucks up around here. Oh, yeah. The day that Anthony walked in with the periwinkle shirt. Periwinkle shirt. blue shirt I walked in with and I oh. got just murdered for that. The day uh, that uh, Eric decided to come in with bad breath, it's oh, like, holy man. shit, radio goals. This fantastic. is how you know everybody in that little war room there is just like unbelievably like like nice to you and cordial. Hey, Bill. <laughs> hey, Bill. What's up? You're going to be in the barrel. Yeah, did you get, did and you we all give looks to each other. Yeah. We all give looks to each other like, you see that, right? Yeah, the, the, right. the yeah. <laughs> eyes open real wide for half a second. Oh, the, <laughs> sec the second you sat down and put your head in the paper, in the newspaper in the office, Opie pointed at his right tit and went... <laughs> <laughs> And I go to Ben, <coughs> and it's a really tight office, but I'm like, <coughs> Ben, and then I'm giving the head movement toward you, like, write this down on the prep sheet. Anyway, uh, the Washington Post with a big, uh, goofy picture of your pals, Opie and Anthony. Yeah. The article, I'll just read the first two paragraphs real fast. Direct TV satellite subscribers will be able to tune in several XM satellite radio channels. Free beginning in November. That's cool. I was wondering when the deal was going to start. Nice. Uh, XM announced this yesterday. Escalating the Washington uh, company's war with New York rival Sirius Satellite Radio. It's not a war, war against those guys at all. Eek. It's like what we did to, to Baghdad the first time around. It's not even close. I guess technically that was a war. It's not even close. Not even close anymore. DirecTV is the nation's leading satellite service with more than 14 million customers. And starting on November 15th. Uh, 15th, they will receive 72 of XM's music and talk channels, including the adult-oriented high-voltage channel, which features <sighs> shock jocks, Opie and Anthony. Oh, they use the shock jock? Yeah, they're starting to use other things instead of shock jocks. Shock. Uh, bags. Uh, Opie and Anthony <laughs> fired from WNEW <laughs> in New York for broadcasting a couple claiming to have sex in St. Patrick's Cathedral. Oh, yeah. In nice, bold... Writing. I forgot about that. I'm so glad they remind me in, in every article that's written about us. At least this time, like you uh, pointed out. It's Look at me all paragraph. arrogant like they shouldn't mention it. Why can't we just be judged on our other merits? <laughs> it's like Hugh Grant. No matter what yeah. you're typing, there's always a... Fucking poker blowjob, yeah. mugshot, hunched over picture thing. That's all I remember him for. Well, the exposure for us and, uh, and XM in general through DirecTV is just absolutely huge. Fantastic. Company, so. And uh, th thank you to Hugh and the gang for including us, because they didn't have to. No. This seems more like a, a music uh, music uh, deal type of thing. Yeah, you know, every cable uh, outlet or satellite outlet, they have those channels. You right. get up there in the channels, you keep going around, you look for movies, and then, uh, boom, you hit the music. All of a sudden, you got 80s, you got the dance mix, party mix music. It was funny, because I asked Elo, I'm like, what channel will we be on? He goes, let me look. And I heard... Oh, yeah. Over and over, right? He goes, uh, you're going to be on channel. I don't know if this is the exact channel, but I know it's a, uh, uh, this is the ballpark. Around he goes, there. You're going to be on channel 832. <laughs> That's a nice, memorable number. It's, it's probably, you know what that is? That's probably their wasteland. Right. It's their wasteland of programming Dude. around it. On my cable system, I go up into like, I don't know, like the 400s every once in a while. And yeah. I go, wow, there's some amazing things going on up here. What's up but, here? But you rarely go up you there. You don't go up there. You know? But it's like the Reader's Digest channel. Right. And uh, some mamba music on the other side of us. Big band swing. Yeah, we will be surrounded by just nothingness. So to ensure people don't accidentally stumble upon us during one of our blue conversations. Is that the actual channel? 879? Yeah, I was watching uh, Channel 800 yesterday. It had a big advertisement for XM coming to DirecTV. And oh, yeah. It said Channel 879. For uh, high voltage. High, uh, high voltage. How about that, kids? In about a month and a half. That's going to be very, very yeah. huge. All right, let's say hi to Jamie. Jamie, what's up? Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> yeah. What up, Jamie? Dude, I'm drunk as shit, but I have a Ben's Hog costume. <laughs> He's going to dress as Ben's Hog for the Halloween uh, We might have show. to have an individual uh, costume contest for Ben's Hog costumes, because I think that one's going to be very popular. The biggest Ben's Hog, maybe, because that'll make it really inconvenient for the wearers <laughs> of the costume, and anything that puts our listeners into any pain gives us pleasure. I didn't have enough material. 
I'm excited to see these costumes from the stage because you know there's yeah. going to be ones that we never thought of. That's they're, they're just going to be brilliant. The yeah. listeners are going to come up with some great costumes for this thing. Yeah, people. Uh, I'm reading instant feedback. People want to come as uh, moths from my house. Mm-hmm. Like that's a pretty <laughs> obscure little costume to come at. And I'm sure there's going to be somewhere where we're going to look and have to figure it out. Yeah, you know, it'll probably be from a while ago, but that's pretty cool. And someone else was asking if there's going to be comics. Well, let's see what Doug has to say. Uh, Doug, what's up? What's going on, guys? Uh, I know you were tossing around in the beginning there. Uh, you know, some of the comedians that might show up doing some sets. You guys still plan on doing that? Is this Doug out, Doug? Yeah. Hey, what's up, bro? Uh, I don't know, because you guys are a bunch of assholes when we have these things. (laughs) You don't allow the comics to, like, actually perform. All right, fair enough. I I don't know. We're going to try to figure it out. We might go down that road. Maybe maybe some of the comics will at least say hi. I don't know, to be honest. I'd love to see a guy like Joe Rogan do his thing. Yeah, I I really don't know, because we know you guys are animals. I mean, it'll be entertaining as hell. We'll be up there introducing all the characters of the show, and you'll spend your whole set telling everybody to shut shut the the fuck fuck up, right? Of course. No, fuck you. (laughs) Thanks a lot, everybody. Yeah, we'll come up with... I'm taking a seven-hour trip, so I want to be thoroughly entertained. Oh, uh, no, it's going to be a great party. I, we guarantee that. We've never had a bad party, so. We'll go, I think we'll come up with some uh, really just fun things to do on that stage. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Hey, hey, did you get through to Howard's uh, screener and fuck with them really bad? Yeah, just a little bit. You're just uh, you're just teasing for now, right? Yeah, we're we're warming up. I'm trying to get the uh, troops excited for uh, for the big day. All right, very good. Very good, bro. Later, gentlemen. Thanks, Doug. Uh, hmm. what is he saying here? Bobby Big Rigger. Bobby Big Rigger. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's yeah. up? Uh, down here in D.C., I was driving by headquarters earlier. I picked up the Washington Post. What the hell's with that picture, man? Oh. I don't know. What the hell kind of hand signal is that? It's really bizarre. I don't know. It is. I don't even know what I was trying to describe. Dude, we have both been up for about 24 hours straight. Right. I was sitting there. I was I didn't falling even asleep. That. I don't know what I'm doing with that left hand. I'm stressing Throwing out. up gang signs, motherfucker. It is. That's what it looks like. I'm saying hi to my homies. I mean, we all know the, the XM compound is in the middle of the ghetto. I'm right. Like, I want to make sure I'm safe as I'm going in and out yeah. of that place. Yeah, looking good, guys. Looking Very good. good. Hey, congratulations again, right? Yeah, that's a huge uh, huge deal for us. Thanks. Thank all you, right, dear Bobby. Later. It just all gets right. bigger and bigger every every week for us. Corey, what's up? Hey, guys. How you doing? Happy birthday, bud. Is Bob Edwards going to be on the old uh, satellite? Uh, no. Back no. The no. They wow, not look at that. This program. What happened there? Yeah. Uh, the, the tides are changing. We finally educated some people down in Washington. <clears throat> We're the big show. <laughs> We're the big show here now, Pally. We're the big show. They signed us and Bob, Bob Edwards at the same time, and you know they were so much more excited that they signed Bob Edwards. I don't know who. That I've been is. in radio. Have, exactly. I we have nothing against Bob Edwards, I, but I'm like the I'm like a Doogie I mean, Howser guy. Like I've been in radio since I was I don't know like 11, mm-hmm. some ridiculous age. I've been around a long time, right? And uh, I've never heard of the guy, and I know everything. Well, I, I try to know as much as I can about radio. I should he say came I don't want to say NPR. everything. But in the NPR world, he was huge. Absolutely huge, mm-hmm. but I never heard of the guy. And so they signed us and him at the same time. And actually, the the lady, the lawyer lady that uh, that uh, signed us and went to dinner with us, she actually left our s- celebratory dinner to go celebrate with Bob Edwards. Uh huh. <laughs> wow. How about that? Oops. In the beginning, we thought we were in deep trouble by uh, by actually, you know, deciding on XM over the other company because we're like, oh my God, did they even get it? And then they hired Eric Logan, and then it's been uh, it's been fine ever He's since. He's a nice enough guy, and all you know, we met him. We we beat the shit out of him on our show, and and he really is a nice guy. He's a nice guy, but sort of ghoulish. He looks like he should be hosting one of those late night Channel Five zombie movie festivals or something. <laughs> now we- let me tell you about the next feature. Like he's that kind of guy. He smokes like crazy, I guess. Goes out there, he's all gray. <laughs> just but he's a good guy. Yeah, but he's a good guy. And, uh, you know, NPR radio is kind of like, uh, you know, I guess they're afraid the DirecTV satellite might snap off and fall asleep if they, <laughs> if they have bounced the signal off of it. it happens to the satellite. Every time we go uplink Bob Edwards, it just shuts off. The solar <laughs> array folds up. 
<laughs> go to sleep. All right, why don't we say hi to Evangeline? Evangeline. Yes. Hi. Hello. Hi. Is this your picture we're looking at? Yes, the blonde one. I don't know. I had to send two pictures. Oh, you're the blonde one? Yes. Yeah, hi. Why did you send your picture? Why? Yeah. Because I would like to play what's in my pan. Ooh. Oh, okay. That's nice. Hey, who's your who's your friend? Uh, this is one of my friends from college. And why are friends from she, college? And why isn't she playing? <laughs> Opie. No. Stop it. What's your name? Evangeline? Evangeline? You're very lovely. I'm looking at the picture. Very lovely girl. Thank you. You can, you can tell which one the cock blocker is. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Stephen Lynch wrote a song about you. Yeah. Oh, anyway, uh, so uh, what's your deal, Evangeline? With my deal? Yeah. yeah like, what, what like do you how do? old are you? What do you do? Okay. Um, well, I'm 23 years old. Oh. Uh, right now, I'm looking for a job. Oh. Okay. Um, I'm about 5'7". Five 5'7". Seven. Five oh. seven. All right. Tall gal. Yeah. Um, weighing about 135 pounds. 5'7", mm. five seven, okay. Opie. 5'7". Five <laughs> Take that into consideration. Look at your chart, mister, just off the top of your head. No. I... Look at your chart. Do we five really seven. Need to look at the chart today. Five <laughs> seven. If she was five five, that would be uh, you know maybe uh, pushing it. There's a slight problem. Well, I have one of those big bubble butts. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, that a, that's nice. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. So you're a little bottom heavy. A little bit. A little bit. She's a uh, big girl. She's got some thighs on her. Does your ass look like Tara Reid's? We've all seen the picture. I think it's in the latest issue of Rolling Stone magazine. Terry's ass isn't so much big as it is just lumpy. <laughs> well, mine's not. Terry's lumpy. butt is like you know when you fill up the the uh, in ground pool too much and the sides start to, <laughs> to buckle. <laughs> to buckle. No, I don't have one of those. That was the best I could come up with. That doesn't actually okay. happen. I know, but I was trying. All right. It's like if you were in a skirt, let's say, and uh, you're in your gravel driveway. You sat down to maybe change your tire. And then you got up, brushed the gravel off your butt, and then took a picture of it. Does it look like that? Um, no. Oh, good. Okay. All right. And She's at some sort of party here. Yeah, what's the, the party? cups in the background. Yeah, look at that. The uh, the big uh, beer, the red beer cups that always run yeah. out. Damn it. Yeah, what was yeah, going on? Sign of a date rape on a, the horizon. It was a, yeah, there's some college guys in the background already. <laughs> already making their plan. Look what they want it. Yeah. <laughs> Girls are touching each other, fucking dykes. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a bunch of young go-getters. Yeah. All uh, standing around the keg. Yeah, what was this party? Um, I think that was, um, I don't know, just a regular fall party. It might have been near... A mixer. Uh, coming. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're, you're definitely not bad. You're, but you got blonde hair, right? Yeah. And uh, what color eyes? Can't tell. It's black and white. Those they're, are blue. They're kind of like blue-green. All right, very nice. Yeah. Okay. You guys want to play Guess What's in My Pants with Evangeline? This is good also because you can kind of see the texture of her natural hair, which will help out uh, in this game. It's going to make it tougher to hear, actually. Um, Angeline? Yes. Hi. I'm going to explain to the listeners how this game works. Okay. Um, Are you in your room? Yeah. At home? Yes. Mom and dad? No. Where are they no. at work? No, actually, I live by myself. Oh, okay. ah, right. whore. I love it. <laughs> love it. All right, what we're going to do is have Angeline rub the phone, rub her phone on her most intimate of areas, and she will rub uh, in three ways, up and down, side to side, and the ever-telling circular passion. And from the sounds we hear emanating from her telephone, Opie, we will try to decipher what type of hairstyle she is sporting in her lap. The choices are the standard issue basic female triangle. This can also be now clipped down, which but it is still the standard issue triangle, even if you're just kind of trimming it a little down. Do you have a lot of sex? <laughs> yes, I do. You okay. have a lot of sex. That's going to influence my uh, answer, by the way. <laughs> Cause she's a whore. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Anthony. one. And uh, the next hairstyle would be the mohawk. This is a mohawk. It's a strip of hair, also called the landing strip, where you uh, shave in the sides. 
and you leave it from top to bottom. Up to uh, your navel. Right, right up to the navel, <laughs> down to the asshole. Big, long strip. Yeah, some people have a landing strip that's kind of like uh, a little local airport that the Cessnas <laughs> land at. And some pretty much have JFK. There's traffic coming in from all angles. 747, no problem. Oh, they could land the biggest plane and still have plenty of runway at the end. <laughs> I like. Uh, I, I sometimes like the spot that just doesn't make any sense. Ah, no matter what angle you look at it. The helipad. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's just it's a like, little dot of nothingness. Why did you leave it? It looks like you missed. It's a little too far from everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's too far. It's from... too far from the the actual workings of the vagina. Yeah. It looks good when a girl is standing up, <laughs> nude picture, crossing her legs. Sure. And standing there, and yeah. that little tuft of yeah. hair just kind of sits there, and it, it looks good. The second they're on their back with their legs behind their ears, it's like, why what is the hell is that? like the ninth hole at the Masters, you know, that one that's just surrounded by water. You got to fucking chip it on. I think it's the ninth hole. I'm not sure. What. Yeah, the 18th. We're with you, though. We've all seen the water. Oh, my though. God. We've all yeah. seen it. It's, it's a useless tuft that just sits there. It just looks ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. All right, anyway. but uh, that that is the <laughs> <laughs> that would be the Hitler mustache or the, now the helipad. Um, it's it's pretty much a Hitler mustache. It looks like a little tuft of hair. Okay. Then of course there is the wood floor. This is clean shaven, nothing down there. We also, much to uh, some people's disgust, like to call it the Jean Benet Ramsey. Or the Connor Peterson armpit, which Jim Jim Norton dubbed it one day. <laughs> that's a that's a Jim Norton Anthony thing. They just they just laugh it, and well, laugh and laugh. Is it not accurate? Come on, you take the it horror does. out of it. If you take the complete and utter utter horror out of it, it's very accurate. All right. So um, we're going to be looking to Evangeline to rub the phone. And please, Evangeline, as we are guessing, no hints. Don't go, uh-huh, or yes, or mm, or anything like that. You keep silent until we ask you, indeed, what is in your pants. Okay, so now take the phone. Wait. wait. What? What about the wacky jingle? Fuck the jingle. All right, Derek's got to earn his money. Go ahead. It's time to play. Wacky. It's time to play. Hey, guess what's in my pants? Place the receiver. Call upon your beaver. It's time to play. Hey, guess what's in my pants? It's time to guess what's in my pants. My pants. All right. Very nice. Now that that theme song is out of the way, uh, Evangeline, if you would please take the phone. Uh, what you, you got your panties completely off? Yes. Are you completely naked? Yes. Hey, hold on. Is that the apprentice guy? It is. Yeah. I don't know what to talk to the apprentice guy about. Let's have him play the game with us. All right. Hey, is this? Hey, uh, did we just lose uh, the girl? Oh yeah, we did. Son <laughs> of a. Oh, babe. I t- oh, I was, wow. Chris, I was supposed to pick you up on another bank. Oh, Evangelina's no. got to call back. Do we have oh, her number no. by any chance? Did you get her number? No. No, you didn't. Holy crap, I wrecked the whole thing. Okay, Evangeline, if you would please no, 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 call no, no, back. No. Turn down your radar. I can't even talk today. <laughs> Turn down your radar. Hey, Chris. No? And now we don't have the apprentice guy? Wow, this is really bad radio. <laughs> All right, I just fucked up everything. We have a yeah. jingle for that. <laughs> this fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. What happened? All right. We were just talking to her. Huh? Who's there? Chris is there? Yeah. All, right. All right. Hey, Chris. Yes, sir. There he is. You're on with Opie and Anthony. We were going to do something nice with you, but I just fucked up everything. Yeah, Opie screwed uh, the pooch. How are you doing today? Blew the hatch. I'm doing pretty well. How are you guys? Have you ever heard of a game called uh, Guess What's in... Uh, in your pants? Guess what's in my pants. Yeah. No, I've never played a game called Guess What's no, in no, My no, Pants. No, 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 we don't want to play with you. We play with uh, women on this fine radio show. <laughs> oh, good. And yeah. we were going to ha- we were gonna have you play along, you know? <laughs> and uh, I hung up on the fine lady. She was just about ready to play, It's too. a guessing game, sort of a puzzle type thing, yeah. If she calls back, maybe we could do that with yeah. you. Or do you have yeah. any numbers of whores <laughs> that we, we could call, call maybe a friend of yours? No, you haven't fucked, sorry, so you're guys. not cheating? <laughs> hey, uh, I watched The Apprentice last night. And What'd you think? Dude, man, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> <laughs> what? 
What did you do? I made it. I made a business decision. Yeah, but it was an error, wasn't it? Even uh, Donald Trump, and you know, he's all about himself. He was bummed that he had to fire you. I noticed that. You know, I think we hit it off really well, and and I did notice that too. It's something that I, that I didn't get to see, but you know, I just I made it, I made a, a what I thought was a valid business decision, and and I lived with it. So. I'm just starting to get into The Apprentice, and uh, you know, I don't know much about this show. I'm gonna watch though, and. Uh, and you look like you had some business chops. I'm like, wow, that it's pretty obvious this guy's gonna go a, a long way. And but you got obsessed with this guy Marcus. Right. <laughs> this guy Marcus is such an asshole. <laughs> he is a complete asshole because it's kind of like the whole survivor thing. You got to work with the team and stuff, you know. Right. But it's business things and. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marcus just was just obviously no one could work with this guy. And 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 you figured it was a good opportunity to get him thrown out of there, but well, it backfired on you. No, it, it it's it's not necessarily that it backfired. I just made a decision that I would have made any day of the week in the real world. I mean, think about it. If you've got an organization that you're running and you've got a, a bunch of people underneath you that are trying to build your organization and make it a multi million dollar business. What type of people do you want on your team? Do you want people that are superstars that are going to go out and bust their butt? Or do you want a guy that literally talks you out of revenue? And that was Marcus. So I decided to bring him in the boardroom, and I decided that he was the guy that needed to go. Here's my logic, though. You know Marcus can't win this fucking thing, okay? <laughs> and you got to look around the room and go, wow, that guy has some chops. Whoa, that guy has some chops. So you try to take out some of the stronger players. Let the weak ones let the weak ones hang for a while. Who cares? Well, you know that's that's the that's the that's the the game you play when you get down to the final two, the final three. But right. when you're when you're sitting here and you're you're a group of eight or nine people, you've got to be in a position where you you can beat the other team handedly right. day in and day out. So if it was if it was in the end for the sake of the game, you've got to uh, play your cards a little bit differently. You were just impre- uh, you know just. Uh, j- you just wanted him gone. It was a personal thing, you know, because I guess how the show goes, you guys do these missions, right? It was it was for Lamborghini last night. You got to come, come up with a ad campaign for Lamborghini. And the, how hard is that? It's a Lamborghini. <laughs> Jesus. And and the guys lost to the girls. You think the Great. guys Can would you afford it? <laughs> yeah. The, you think the guys would have? Uh, that would have been a piece of cake thing for guys, right? Yeah. Well, that's what we thought going into it. It's guys. It's cars. Everybody had a picture of a Lamborghini on their on their wall when we were little. You know, it was yeah. just one of those things. That that we thought we had in the bag from day one, but as you saw on the show last night, we got our asses kicked. <laughs> Literally, they got their asses kicked. The girls had a much better uh, concept and commercial they and, did. and print ad for uh, Lamborghini. Great. These guys, you know, the the guy you had to present to, one of the muckety mucks, head muckety mucks from Lamborghini, is looking at him just with this look on their on his face. Was it like the A and E pitch meeting? Oh, pretty much. <laughs> and then they're they're showing their print advertising and, and have to explain what the guy is supposed to see in the ad. And uh-huh. that's, I'm sitting at home going, Oh boy. They're explaining how water is this thing and Oh, it's supposed to symbolize things and Yeah, you want to explain, oh, Chris, boy. or what? Oh, well, boy. you know, here here's my here's my, my two cents worth, if that's worth anything. I, it was it was a it was a marketing presentation. So in a marketing presentation, when you're pitching a presentation to somebody, you have to point out what the subtleties of the presentation are. So I was making a point of each and every every issue. I, you know, it was our opinion that the ad spoke for itself. It was wow. our opinion that it didn't. So, yeah, it seems to me if you're pointing out every subtlety, they're not, uh, you know, they, uh, maybe there's too many subtleties. Oh, well, maybe <laughs> they were. Too subtle. I would think. They were trying to figure figure if they should capitalize the word Italian. Right. I, mean, I would say yes. Well, they decided no. <laughs> I would say yes. And you're talking to Lamborghini guy, and he's like, what's wrong with the Italians, basically? <laughs> I would say capitalize the word Italian and put it right above the huge set of tits that should be resting on the hood. <laughs> because that's what sells, my friend. Well, you know, I've got a family full of Italians that have left me about 600 voicemail messages that all want to take my head yeah. off after What's the matter episode? with you? <laughs> what did the women do that was so uh, so much yeah, better? Yeah, what they do that was great. They you know, they're pre- they they were just buttoned up, they were solid, they made it all about the car, you know, the women dressed in all black where they had a, a yellow car and they 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 talked about how the car is the star and yeah. and and Linda Kaplan Thaler of the uh the one of the decision makers said there's a there's a prime example, men say it, women feel it. And uh they felt it last night, I'll tell you what, it was an awesome presentation. And then they had a green Lamborghini and then the the slogan was uh green envy. Right? Right. Uh, we had a poster with a green poster. Lamborghini that said "Green with Envy." Green yeah. with Envy. I'm sorry. Right. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, but they were trying to figure out if no? it should end. Man, fan? If it Man's should end, in, his head, no. If it should end in a period or a question mark. 
And Marcus right. decided it should end in a question mark, and they went with the period, right? Exactly. Why would a question mark make any sense? Well, it, it's it's it, they wanted to know if it was a question. Are you green with envy, or is it green with envy as a statement? I mean, it was it was a very minor issue. That Marcus I think it's made such a, a statement. I think with a Lamborghini, there's no question involved. Exactly. You are absolutely green with envy. There is no question when it comes to a Lamborghini. Right. And then the guys have to film a TV commercial. And Marcus's job, he, this guy's just a tool. You gotta watch The Apprentice just, I hate to say this for Marcus, cause he's just a, he's just a tool, as you say. <laughs> and his whole job was to tell the Lamborghini when to, uh, what, uh, start coming toward the camera? No, I gave, I gave Marcus the, the responsibility. Sim- he gave him the of, simplest job, this guy, Chris. Go di- ahead, Chris. Di- directing traffic. I said, here's the deal. You call the driver of the Lamborghini and send him down when I tell you to do it. And he couldn't get it done. I mean, it was the smallest, Job. Oh my God! And when I finally, you know, I finally, I just said, "That's it. He's done. I'm not going to put the fate of uh, of this task in, in his hands and give him any more responsibility." And he proved the first week that he certainly couldn't manage, and he proved the second week that he certainly couldn't handle responsibility. Now, why on earth then was this guy kept and you thrown out? I'll explain, Anthony. Thank you, Opie. Because <laughs> then these guys lost, so now they're all in the boardroom with uh, Donald Trump. That. Uh, got to say it, that twat of a woman. Oh, Jesus. Holy crap, is she tough. Sorry, Chris. I no, know. hey. I know that's not Chris saying it. I, she just comes across, I guess, she comes across great for the show, very bitchy and very, ugh. Yeah, supposed to be and like then, that. And then uh, Trump's right-hand man, which is an older guy that uh, seems like he's very knowledgeable in the business world himself. Uh-huh. So then they have to explain, you know, what, what r- went wrong and stuff. And the whole team is basically saying they just don't like Marcus, they need him out, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, Donald Trump decided that uh, that's not the reason why these guys lost to the women, Marcus. Mr. Trump felt, you know, absolutely. He, he, my thought process was this guy obviously is a loose cannon. I would not want him on your team. Nobody would want him on his team. He has to go. Right. Whereas uh, Mr. Trump said, good point. However, you know, the, 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 end, the end of the day is he was not the direct reason you lost this task. So, uh, therefore, uh, therefore he, he let me go. You want to hear some audio? We got to play some audio, audio, excuse me, audio of Marcus, if you don't mind there, Chris. You got, you got a few more minutes with us? Sure. Okay, here's Marcus talking. Uh, he talks in a meeting despite being told not to, Anthony. I told the team, I don't want you guys going in the meeting with any preconceived ideas about Lamborghini whatsoever. I don't want you to think slogans. I don't want you to think campaigns. I don't want you to think anything because we don't know what the client wants. What's up, buddy? Uh, I already have what I think is a winning slogan. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. right. Okay. So you basically told everyone not to not to talk in the meeting, right? I said before we meet with the client, All right. I don't want you thinking anything, saying anything, doing anything. We don't right. know what they want, and what right. does he do? Comes up and says, "I've got a winning slogan." Yeah, you're meeting <laughs> the the big guys from Lamborghini. Right. So you're, oh, it's boy. just a get to know meeting and try to feel them out, see what direction they might want to go in, and stuff first, like that. The first rule in marketing: you got to know what the client wants. To exactly. Make happen. So this guy Marcus. Speaks up right away, even though Chris, who was the pro- project manager, said, let's just feel this out first. Listen. Some Mythbusters meets Jacket. He was convinced that he had the perfect, no? he, he was convinced he had the perfect slogan for the new Lamborghini, uh, um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, campaign. Campaign, thank you. Uh, I already have what I think is a winning slogan. So before we meet with them, you have a winning slogan? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So when I see Linda, I'd like to share it with the group and her and just bounce off and see what she has. What is it? I don't want, I don't want to be surprised. What is it? No. Just say it. Smooth as silk. It might be a little, it might be a little premature. Let me just say, I think it's a great, I think it's awesome you have that. But it might not be the best idea to come up with a slogan before we even meet with the client. I didn't want anyone to think in cliches. The biggest no-no in advertising is using cliches. Of course, the first thing Marcus does is he comes up to me and he says, I've got a slogan idea. I said, Marcus, no. We want to find out what they're trying to make happen. So we're experiencing in the last two years exponential growth, and that's due to a new new model that we came out with, which is the Gallardo. And uh, this is the beginning of the rebirth of Lamborghini. One of the ideas that 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 I had talked to my uh, teammates about, and just to, to kind of float it, was to have a complete counterbalance, if you would, or a contrast, smooth as silk. Does that, does, does that kind of imagery or something, does that, does that tend to be something that would be of, of any interest to Lamborghini, do you think? No? Okay, very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to eliminate those things. See, Chris, Chris, see this guy, Chris, oh. we got on the phone, he knows what he's doing, and he told Marcus, don't, don't suggest this in the meeting. And the Lamborghini guy just shut him down. Why fast. did this ass it was, blurt that out? 
that was that was a funny part of the meeting. It was one of those things where the second he started opening his mouth, everybody just sort of bit their bit their cheek and was like, "Oh no, come here it on. comes!" Right. I like how you actually tried to handle it, like like feed his ego to still shut him up. Like when he goes smooth as silk, and you're like, in your head, you're like, "That fucking blows," but you're like, "Okay, that that, that that's cool," but like maybe. <laughs> Let's just wait on no it. No preconceived right. notions here. Let's just see what he wants. Right. Let's sit and wait. Smooth as silk. It. You're probably like, oh, that stinks. It was rough. It was rough. But guys, listen, I I enjoyed this. I'm getting uh, I'm getting wave that I've got to go on to my. Of next, course, uh, next yeah. Day. They're telling us uh, you got to go. All right, Chris. But hey, I appreciate the time. No worries. Great show, guys. All right. Thanks, man. There's Bye. Chris from The Apprentice. The first. Smooth as silk. He got uh, he knocked he got knocked out uh, yesterday. I didn't even know Lamborghini even needed to advertise. I mean, you know what I mean? Everybody yeah, I know. It's a Lamborghini. Yeah. Right. If you can afford it, you buy it. Yeah. That's call pretty us, much call it. Call us when you've made it in life. <laughs> yeah. When you have enough money, we're here for you. That's <laughs> it. They don't need like, wow, we're good. People think this is a good car. And yeah, no, we know. It's a Lamborghini. Yeah, we're trying to compete with the Escort this year. Yeah. <laughs> any, any, any sort of ad campaign you can come uh, up with? Uh, I don't know. Ford Taurus, Lamborghini. I'm still flipping that coin, so I'm not sure. Just to quickly wrap it up, so they lose, and uh, you know, and then Chris decides who he wants to bring back into the boardroom as the potential people that uh, Donald Trump could fire. Yeah, and I think you could pick two, and then Donald Trump decides if the project manager, which uh, he was, he was which Chris project. was. Now, how did he get he, to be project manager? They, I guess they vote on that ahead of time. Um, why would you want to be project manager? I don't know. The show, show what you got. I yeah, guess you know what I'm saying. Why would you want to be? If your team wins as project manager, you're eligible to be exempt from oh, being yeah. fired next oh, week. It's oh, a gamble. It's one of those things. I'd lay low under the radar a little bit. Not fucking up so bad, but not really pushing anything. But just sit and simmer. But here's the logic. So now you're the <laughs> project. I do here. Here's the, you're the project. <laughs> You're the project <laughs> manager, right? Yeah. And Donald Trump now decides if if your campaign or whatever your task was so awful as a leader that you have to go, or if you did the best you can and it was people around you that fucked up uh, very key things they and, needed to do. And it's him, based on his expertise, to d- figure out what it was. Right. Was but, it you not leading or your... Yeah. But then Chris, as the guy, could bring in two other choices for Donald Trump to fire, whether right. it's going to be Chris or the two guys Chris... You know, picked one of those guys. Uh-huh. But Chris, because he's so obsessed with his Marcus guy, only picks Marcus thinking it's a no-brainer that he'll fire Marcus over him. Wait, you can pick one or two guys? He to just bring decided in? to pick one because he was like, I don't Sounds want, silly. I don't want to badmouth anymore my team. This is the problem. Uh huh. And it backfired on him. This is what, uh, Trump did. I mean, this is a very tough one for me. I'll be honest with you. It's very, very tough. Because I think you're somewhat of a disaster, Marcus, really. You talk too much. People don't like you. You know, Chris, unfortunately, I have to be honest with you. I asked you to make a smart business decision, and you made an emotional one. Marcus was not the reason you lost this task. And I was saying, don't bring him back in, because he was the only one who was right. And I'm telling you, don't bring him back in. Bring in Mark. Get Mark back in the room. You're fired, Chris. Fuck you. you great potential, man. Get out of here. You got great potential. Get, Get out, out of here. here. Yeah, he really just should not have been fired, but he was like with his, you know. Wow, that's he just had a personal thing with his Marcus ass. So that's fucked up. And here's Chris leaving. Marcus will not last. If you've got a bunch of people on your boat and they're all rowing in one direction, one guy on the other side isn't rowing. Your boat's just going to spin in place, and you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to make any progress. That was our next but pitch. Not only was Marcus not rowing, he wasn't even didn't even have his hands on the paddle. He was facing the other direction, drinking a martini, talking to the captain. I'm very busy rowing. <laughs> there you go. The Apprentice on NBC. All right. Very nice. All right. Uh, Where were we? Evangeline. Evangeline. Yes. Hi. Opie hung up on you. By accident. I really didn't mean to do was, that. It was an accident. Yeah. Um. Can you wait through the commercial? Because I gotta take a. I gotta take a leak now. Okay. Do you mind? You can. You're not getting okay. pissed. Okay. Or you want us to call you back so you save some phone charges? Um. If they can do that, sure. All right. Hold on the line. We'll figure it all out. Okay. And we'll play. Uh, guess what? You hung up on. No, I didn't. Course we'll play that next. All right. We're back nice. with the Opie and Anthony program. I thought we'd go long break there. It's okay. That was nice. Ah, I was able to take a leak. All right, let's get uh, Evangeline back on the line to play Guess What's in My Pants. Yes, we were uh, interrupted for Big a little time. while, but got to get back to business. 
You want guess what's in my pants? Want to reset the uh, the plate here, Anthony? Well, uh, reset the tables, they say. Evangeline, is that her name? Uh, from Philly. Yes, from Philly. She sent us a picture of herself and her friend at some kind of college party. Uh, two cute girls. And uh, Evangeline, the blonde-haired one, decides she wants to play I Guess What's In My Pants. Mm -hmm. uh, we explained all the rules. We played the song. And then uh, we got a phone call. Yeah, Evangeline. And it kind yeah. of uh, interrupted uh, what we were doing. Evangeline, are you still a uh, nude? Yes, I am. Yeah, ah. uh, I, we apologize. I mean, you got bumped for the guy from uh, The Apprentice. So, you watch that show? Um, I have before, but I haven't watched this season yet. Yeah. yeah. Well, we had we had the guy on and had to uh, go to him. Uh, you know, time constraints. But it's very nice that you can hang on. And you're completely naked, right? Yes. Now we got new <laughs> listeners every 15 or 20 minutes. So really fast, what do you look like again? Um, I have blonde hair, I have blue-green eyes, I'm about 5'7", mm. and I weigh about 135 five, pounds. That's good. Oh, very good. Okay. And you know how to play this game, right? Oh, hey, yeah. dude, dude re really quick, you know, you, you were trashing oh, my Oh, hold shirt. on two seconds. Hold on one second. Because I, I do need to defend this because you guys were know, trashing absolutely. me during the break yeah. about my shirt. I actually had a late night last night. I did this. I just want to thank the people. I, I worked down on uh, mm -hmm. there's a bar called Bar on A. It's down on 11th Street and, like, Avenue A, and they had me down. It's like, you know, like a private... Like bar area, you know, uh -huh. I went down there. They treated me unbelievably. I told Bob and Ann, I'd, I'd give him, you know, shout out. They like made me like fucking cookies. Who does that? It was ridiculous. They had like two like little batches of cookies, and they had like, uh, like so like the chocolate chip cake. <laughs> Who does that for comics? And then they, then they give me like a fucking Heineken. I'm like, <laughs> Heineken and, I, and, and I'm cookies, brownies. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ready to go on stage, but it was, you know, it was a great time down there. I just want to give him a shout out. So, anybody, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, people listen. You want to go to a cool bar, go to, um, Bar on A. Tell Bob and Ann and what's up, 11th Street. You might get cookies and Heine. Yeah, and Aven Avenue A, man. Very nice. Bill, we're going to definitely miss you, man. But Bill yeah. will be back very soon on the yeah. Open Anthony program. I like doing gigs like that, you know what I mean? Just like not yeah. like comedy clubs every once right. in a while, just like mm -hmm. switch it up, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you'll be. How's the reaction? It's cool, man. Isn't it was it? kind of a weird thing because it was like a small bar, you know what I mean? So yeah. they, literally there was people like on the other side of the bar who couldn't see it, but, the, you know. They could hear but, you. No, so like, they were like what, literally. Listening to your CD? Yeah, they were putting it on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> like I was at Giant Stadium, but I'm just in this bar that's like. <laughs> You're like right around the corner. Oh. They could lean in their chair and see you, but they're watching you on the yeah, TV. Yeah, I was standing on like a fucking tabletop. <laughs> in fact, every time I moved the mic stand, I spilt my water. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they did too? Because they had this big, they had this big ridiculous banner. Like people, people kept get, sending me emails like, "Dude, are you doing a gig in the village?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Like, what are they advertising on the radio? Like, dude, they have a picture of your stupid head <laughs> that's literally the size of like a, the whole like window pane. It's like you know, it was like six yeah. feet by like eight feet or whatever. You know, bigger than the stage you were standing on. That's bigger cool. than my <laughs> actual head, which is uh, <laughs> just, it's an amazing feat. Evangeline, uh, you're still there, right? Yep. Completely hey. naked, ready to play. Guess what's in my pants? Yep. Yes. Yeah, but tonight, dude, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna be at a I'm gonna be at a call. I think it's college up in like Pittsfield, so it's gonna be back to Pittsfield, the Mass. You gotta go all the way up to Mass. Yeah, it's gonna be like the regular. Back you to the drive or shit. you fly up there? I drive up. And yeah. then all, all oh. next week you got stuff to do. So dude, if I go in the Merritt Parkway one more fucking time, <laughs> dude, do you know I, every like I, I single rock on the side of the road? Every single we, we were doing the drive back and forth when we were up there, and it was just. Every single pebble on the side of the road. You're waiting for like, all right, I'm up to this tree. Here's this. I know boulder. that I only got like two more hours to go. 107 yeah. miles from this boulder. Oh, yeah. oh, it's the most annoying drive. There's nothing. That's somehow that yeah, they just say that it's quicker than taking 95. Yeah. Right. Stop right. it. It's horrendous. I always end at that friendlies. Oh. Same. <laughs> and oh. by the time you get yeah, on the mass, <laughs> by the time you get on the mass pike, <laughs> you feel like you're close, but you're not. You're an entire state's distance away from Boston. Oh, and they're always digging up a lane. Yeah, and then you you feel you're like you're close, so now you like pour it on, and you're doing like 90 just because I'm close. I'm almost there. And there's the Stadies right there on the side. Yeah. Then you get into Boston with their wonderful design where yeah. the 15 highways all lead into oh, like one because, lane. Because a but it's hub. underground now. It's underground. Yeah, so that's it's underground. Cool. The hub for a major city it works just as well as it did in uh, 1714 or whenever the hub was designed. Yeah. It's so much better than a grid where no matter where you are, you can look at a sign and say, ah, I need to go to this grid point. Not the hub with one-way streets thrown in. 
and Hill. Nothing's gr better than being on like Beacon and I'm trying to get to Tremont and I don't know. And it's one way and you see where you got to go, but you're not allowed to go there. I want to blow up the city. I hate Boston. Uh, I hate driving. Philly's in it. a close second though. Philly, yeah. yeah we Philly. had to go to a hotel once in, in Philly. Yeah. One road was closed for a distance of, I swear to you, a block. maybe 200 feet. Yeah. yeah. We had to go about 20 minutes out of the no, way. We had to go all, through Baltimore. Yeah. <laughs> but they're all, they're all, they'll have like all one way streets and there'll be 15 of them in a row going yeah, the same going direction. The same You're like, direction. I, yeah. Can I ever go left again? Yeah. yeah. At least so again, a grid, New York. You know, one way going this way, right. I'll take the next turn. I'll go around the block. Fifteen in a row Keep going left. Keep Ben Franklin's house. <laughs> All right. Uh, where were we? Evangeline. Yes. How you doing? Sorry. we. I guess we keep getting a little <laughs> hey, sidetrack. Ben. Where's Ben? Well, we're supposed to get Steve on the air real fast. Are you uh, in your uh, bedroom? Yes. On your little bed? Yes. What is, what does your bed spread look like? Because I know a lot of uh, girls... When they move out, uh, when they're young and they move out, they still have their little bedspread from uh, their parents' house. What What is your bedspread? Uh, I have um, like a sand like bedspread, like it's sand like you know. So uh, this is when you need like Bobby Kelly. <laughs> yeah, he would be like good for this thing. You know, somehow the wiffle ball bat movie. Is he coming? Yeah, is he, he coming no. in next week? Um, I'm not. Who's Who's going to be the third Darren? I, I want it to be a huge surprise <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> yeah, why not? Is it because it's so good or it's so bad? <laughs> I want it to be a huge surprise. <laughs> you son of a bitch! This is going to stink on Shut ice. Shut up! <laughs> I know it. Evangeline, you getting cold yet? Your coochie getting cold? A little bit. Waiting. <laughs> All right, we'll we'll get to you. We'll, uh, for some reason, Steve is in the studio though. Hold on a second. Uh, hell. Oh, whoa! He's circling. Hey, Steve. Why does sometimes he hey, circle? Steve! And wait, I guess because there's uh, traffic in the area. To the right of Bill There he goes. There he goes. There he comes. There he comes. We found an open pod to land it. You know my favorite part is? Wait, this part. He snaps the top of it, and it turns into a suitcase. <laughs> it's the best hybrid vehicle ever, ever. So well worth the money. Hey, Steve, what's going on on your website? Foundrymusic.com and, of course, opianthony.com. We have uh, several new clips. We have, uh, uh, what is it? Can I see that in front of you? No. Oh, well, then you're hurting. You I can't do it. Thank you. Well. There it is. All the new uh, assault on the all the finalists in the assault on the media contest. Mm -hmm. We have. Oh shit! We gotta announce that winner today. Ah, oh, that's right. The you assault on the media contest for September. Oh, oh that's wait today. a minute! What's the date? What is it? The thirty thirty. Yeah. All right. Well, then we gotta announce it so we can open up brand new assaults on the media for October. For October. Yeah, Steve. So we have those three finalists from Philly, Buffalo, and Boston. Uh, that mm -hmm. shining clip that uh, hit the web yesterday. Yes. Uh, that is up in all of its. Uh, in all the video is much better than yeah. the audio we played. And please, yeah. on instant feedback, yes, I've seen the shining clip. Isn't Half of the instant feedbacks yes. today are people saying, "Isn't that hey, great?" The shining clip. Isn't that great? You haven't the second, seen it yet. We got it as well. We so. got the it. The second it hits the web, everybody thinks they're the first one in. But all right. Uh, a bunch of catfight videos as well. Those have been coming in a lot. Cat women fight beating the hell out of each other. And nice. all about the catfights. Uh, I got uh, the Terror Reed drinking game. That was a, it's like a card game. Like you have to, you have two playing cards in front of you. One is exposed, one is unexposed. You have to guess which, if the unexposed one is higher or lower than uh, the one that's exposed. And if you guess right, Terra drinks. Ooh. Ooh. And if you guess wrong, you have to drink. All right. That's uh, up there. That's up there. We have uh, the video of Steve-O drunk on Adam Carolla's show. That's, that's really fun. That's classic, yes. And, I don't <laughs> I'll play, I'll play, I'll, ah! As well as, uh, as well as Steve-O's uh, reading of his suicide note yesterday. Oh, very that cool. Article. Very cool. And you did a uh, movie trailer, right? Yeah, yeah. I wanted to get this in before uh, the week ended because that bit is slowly, slowly coming to a close. Slowly? <laughs> or quickly, I'm sorry. Jesus. Well, quickly coming to a close. early next week, Nathaniel's going to decide the top five Opie and Anthony movie trailers. Why Nathaniel? Huh? Why well, Nathaniel? Well, I thought you were busy. I can do it, too. All right. Steve and Nathaniel will uh, get the top five Opie and Anthony movie trailers together, and we'll we'll announce the winners of that. No Sir, prize. It's just a, a, just a cute little quick contest we're doing. But you did your own uh, Opie and Anthony movie trailer. Yeah. It's um, mm -hmm. about Big A and Stalker Patty's date the other uh, the other day. Where's Evangeline? I'm here. Oh, oh okay. Ho hold on a second. Yeah, hold on two seconds. Because we just promoted this uh, movie trailer. we got to play really fast. You're still naked, though, right? Yes. Yeah. All right, nice. You, you can play with yourself or something. We'll be, we'll get to you in a minute or two. Hold oh, on. okay, thanks. All right, hold on a minute. But first, it's uh, why is oh, hold on a second. I don't know why that's doing that. All right, uh, here's uh, 
Here's Steve's Opie and Anthony movie trailer featuring Stalker Patty and Big A. For years, Andrew has waited for that special someone, a woman, to spend his life with. I think it's very romantic, actually. A soulmate. Will you shut up? Patty has never experienced love. I have self-control all the time. And is a boring dipshit. I like doing puzzles and things from the paper, like all the crossword puzzles, the math puzzles, and the post. What if someone you couldn't stand? You have no sexuality. Was the only someone for you. I think she, she looks very beautiful. Witness the romance between a stammering maniac <laughs> with chronic halitosis. There's a slight breath problem. And a cliche slinging bag lady. A wild and crazy evening. No matter what she says, after she says it, I want her killed. He has fun on the Ferris wheel. I was too, too big and no one balance. Both of us. Wow. But what happens? After the love is gone. You know, just want to be, you know, friends. Fuck you, bitch. Why can't we be more than friends? I can't. I'm sorry. What are you doing? No! When rejection sends you over the edge, the only answer is murder. No, why not? Freak date mumbling its way to a theater near you. <laughs> what a dream come true that would be if he chopped her up with a chainsaw. You got problems, Steve. Man. I love that. I fight like that. I, I had Nathaniel cut up all the drops for that, and he heard it yesterday. He said, finally, you get to kill a woman in a sweeper, and it makes sense. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, very, very good. Wow. All right. I can't get uh, instant feedback. Why? I don't know. It's uh, been a while. Is he going to... Um... Oh, there he goes. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. There he goes. Bye-bye. There goes Steve. Uh, Steve's got to call people and, and get instant feedback back. All right. Uh, let's go back to Evangeline and play Guess What's in My Pants. Ah. He's got to play. He's got to play. He's got to play. Hey, guess what's in my pants? Place the receiver upon your beaver. It's time to play. Hey, guess what's in my pants? It's time to guess what's in my pants. My pants. All right, Evangeline from Philly. She's completely naked. Five seven hundred thirty-five pounds. Sounds like she's got, got a, a booty. Very hot she's got a booty. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Steve-O. Era. Era. Evangeline, hold on one second. That's uh, E-Rock's, E-Rock's walk-on, uh, music. walk-on music, obviously. Hey, Eric, what's going on? The uh, ONA charity auction is just about to end. We're under half an hour. Oh, and, and then that's it. And that's it. It's done. Nothing else. Gone. Yes. How much have we raised? Um, we'll have a final total in about 40 minutes. Yeah, we'll have that nice. uh, total up on opianthony.com. But uh, we got like seven or eight items left, including Opie and Anthony Scarface movie poster. How much? Autographed by the entire cast. Obviously, uh, Al Pacino and everybody else is going for $1,000 right now. But it only has 14 minutes left as far as bidding on it. I wanted to bid on that. I'm gonna. Yeah. I think I'm gonna do gonna a last throw minute a last bid. Minute yeah, why not? Bid in on that one. By the way, Eric did a great, great, great. job at the Opie and Anthony auction. Thank you, Eric. No problem. Very, Glad very good it. job. Mm-hmm. How's, how are you, how are you feeling? Yeah, sick Better. glasses. You got the sick, sick glasses. Sick glasses. Yeah, still should on. be good by Monday. So, sick glasses. All right. What else uh, is uh, is up for bids? We got uh, those um, X Game T-shirts that we had signed by everybody. That we had Ooh. On the live There's about four of, the, of them up there, mm-hmm. and. Uh, one or two other little things. I think the memo apologizing for uh, Sex for Sam, signed by Ken Stevens, wow. is up there as well. It's a collector's item for a fan of the show. Sex for Sam? Yeah, that was the church debacle. It's oh. called Sex for Sam because the prize <laughs> was... I'll, you know, I'll never catch up. I'm just like, what is that? Huh? You know what, though? It's, it's, it's too many little details. Yeah, we, The prize that day for the couple that would have won was to go to the Sam Adams Brewery with us for a big concert and drinking beer and hanging out with uh, Jim Cook from Sam Adams. So it was sex for Sam. There you go. And I'm sure ah. Sam Adams, they were so happy to be involved with that promotion as they watched the Catholic Church uh, people dumping Sam Adams' beer out into the street uh, after that happened. Yeah, Yikes. that was a little much. All right, Eric, anything else? Uh, also, the last playlist 
for uh, any Opie and Anthony material on WNEW written by Black Earl. So it's the exact oh, list oh, of all oh. the worst of bits. All right. Very good. That's a biggie. Once again, Eric did a great job at the auction. Thanks, Eric. No problem. There he goes. E-Rock. We're helping. As he walks out of the studio. To walk out. Music. Good stuff. All right, Evangeline, it's time to play Guess What's in My Pants. All Live right. In Philly. We uh, filled in the listeners to the rules. I, I believe so, yes. You ready with the phone, Evangeline? Yes, I am. All right. All right, so, Anthony, you want to describe what you want to hear first? Well, uh, we usually start with the up and down fashion. Um, I guess if we can hear that. Right. Okay. Oh, hold on a second. Ben? ben? We have to do the assault on the media contest winners. Why do we have to do it now? We're in the middle of this bit. Oh, we, we've been teasing it forever, and you know, it's got to get done. Oh, God damn it. Your fucking timing is terrible. I know. Evangeline, he's the executive producer. we got to get this done for what reason? we got to get a press release out? Yeah, we got to send out a press release. Okay. David Hinckley's going to write a big article. Yeah, sweet, about sweet. It. It's a little difficult. All right, yeah. Evangeline, hold on one second, okay? Sorry. You still naked? Yes. Good girl. Very yes. good. You don't have to go anywhere, do you? Nope, not yet. All right. Are You, you have nice boobs and stuff? Um, I think so. All right, very cool. Nice. All right, hold on one second. Right? All right, Anthony, the assault on the media contest. Yes, uh, boy, I, I, I don't remember what the, who the contestants are. Who's like, it's, who was in the lead? It, uh, I gotta say, not a very memorable month. Are you insane? What? Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm forgetting what was involved this month. There was the guys in Boston and Beacon Hill that ran up behind the reporter. And then one of the guys got tackled oh, live horn, on TV. The horn, okay. And then it was the Philly guys. The Philly guys oh, at, the, okay. at the Eagles game. Look, John, I'm an asshole. The first, I shouldn't have said that. The then. Phillies guys came up with oh, a, look at that. a brand new way to assault the media. They actually jumped in front of the reporter. Yes. We don't see a lot of people jumping in front of the reporter. They There's did. no way the cameraman could Yeah, uh, they defend. had the balls to jump in front of the Report they had wow stickers on their entire body screaming and yelling and uh and that was all really right good. i'm sorry i was actually my asshole was just talking i was talking right out of my asshole and then you had buffalo paul it's between buffalo philly and boston but we don't want you guys to vote because of what city you live in you got to just vote for the best assault on the media mm -hmm. uh what was the buffalo one ba about ben that was the guy that ran up behind the reporter with a mask on. He had a, a cutout of Jim's face with like a cigar in oh, it. Oh, it was very scary and, and <laughs> scared the reporter and she ran off the camera. Yeah, she ran, ran out, out of camera of, view. She ran away and just bailed on her, uh, That was report. a good one. That was a really good one. And, and that also involved a little air horn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and a crazy, crazy mask. Philly, Philly was the guys at the Eagles game and they ran right in front. They rang the air horn and they said, Good luck, bro. And they, those guys, one guy was covered in wow stickers. Got <laughs> a bunch of tools. I love them. I love them. Oh, yeah. It was great. And then the guys in Boston. Bro. Yes. And the guys in Boston. All the videos are up on opianthony.com. You want to explain the assault in the media contest, Anthony, because we started up uh, for October. We got new listeners every week. This is easy, man. Uh, you see a live shot going on. That's your local news people with their camera crew, their satellite truck. Uh, doing a stand-up, they call it. Maybe there was a shooting at a deli, and she's out in front, and the, the uh, anchor people toss it to them, and they go, I'm here live in front of blah, blah, blah. Your mission is to get into that shot, get behind the reporter, and hold up some type of sign that uh, says Opie and Anthony, XM Satellite Radio, Channel 202, uh, ONA Party Rock, just any kind of Opie and Anthony-related sign and make uh, kind of a ruckus. Right. You don't touch the reporter or anything, but you try to get your camera time. Because if the camera's there, the reporter's there, and I'm there, isn't it really our time? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Get behind the reporter or in front of it and uh, uh, get that sign up in there. Yeah, and the best one, which... It seems to be the best ones are the most disruptive ones. If you get a <laughs> look at the Boston one, I'm looking at the Boston one. This yeah, whole, that's pretty good. There's a whole thing going on. They tackle like not tackle, but they grab one guy that was attempting assault on the media, and that uh, allowed another guy that was with their posse to run toward the reporter. Two prong attack. It that two, one. Look, they're walking down, and they're using like just regular pedestrians. They're hiding behind the pedestrians. They're walking down the sidewalk behind the reporter. And then they strike. And the pest is behind the pedestrians. The security guy tried to get them both back. He grabbed one guy, and the second guy broke through and got right behind the reporter with a wow sticker. Yeah, he was much more subtle with the bumper sticker. Yeah, just the bumper sticker. The other guy had a big sign. So, basically... It's like the beginning of Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm walking up. Well, yeah, we're watching all the videos in, in studio right now. Uh, basically, we don't want you to, to harm the reporter. 
Oh, he really shoved him, didn't he? Oh, yeah. That's a good oh, one. Oh, no, the guy who got shoved actually meant he comes back. Yeah, because he shoved him, but then he went for the guy with the sign, and the guy that he shoved came right That's back. Right. Like, ballsy move. Like Barry Sanders. <laughs> Bounced off a tackler, <laughs> brought it across the goal line. He shook him and just watch kept, this, kept watch running. This. You can pretty much do anything except touch the reporter yeah. or See? harm the reporter. Shoves him. Now he goes for the sign guy. And look at that. He cuts to the left. Okay. And he's back in the shot. <laughs> oh, I see. All right. The one guy was trying to take out the two guys. I see yeah. instinct. He can't teach that. No, you can't. That was he really good He is truly a, a well-trained pest. Very good. So, yeah, don't touch the reporter if you're going to get involved in the contest for October. We do this contest every month. Uh-huh. And now that uh, this is the season for Satellite Radio, we're expecting some very, very big radio. assaults on the media. <laughs> radio. And uh, we're looking for creativity. <laughs> and more importantly, we're looking to get the name of the show out there. The exposure, exactly. On live TV. So if you get a combination of good creativity and getting the name out, you know, you're in a good position to win the Assault on the Media contest. Mm -hmm. For the month of September, up for grab. This is a, a portable Delphi MiFi radio. A dinner with E-Rock at Paisano's of Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy. 30 days free video game rental from Gamefly.com. And finally, admission to just check out our show one day if you're in the New York area. Okay? Right. And October, hopefully the prizes will be even better as this contest continues. Mm -hmm. All right, Anthony. So uh, the videos are up on OpianAnthony.com. But what we did, um, we had the whole staff vote on their favorite. Their favorite assault on the media for the month of September. Well, I was looking at the um, the star-studded panel of voters <laughs> here. Uh, <laughs> wow. Members of the Academy. Oh, yeah. This <laughs> celebrity <laughs> judges all over the place. You know, me and Opie not even involved in the vote. My God. Not even involved because they just went way over our heads. <laughs> uh, the cream of the crop. The people that can really identify talent. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, uh, For the voters. Uh, voting on this... Uh, Master Poe, <laughs> E Rock, Travis, Steve, Mars, Danny, Nathaniel, Bill the intern was involved in the voting process. Bill the intern. Is Bill here today? Yeah, Bill, Bill's here. He showed up and a little late. Derek and Ben. Let's find out why Bill was late, okay. by the way. All right. Yeah, I'm sure it's an interesting story. Yeah. Bill the intern, late because this guy is like Johnny on the spot. Oh, yeah. Evangeline. Yeah. We're almost to you. Hang almost. in there, all right? We're just got to get past this a little bit. They, they teach in radio. You got to do one thing at a time, so <laughs> just bear with us. Okay. I mean, you're the star of the show today, obviously. And speaking <laughs> yeah. of Bear, you're... She's Bear as we speak on the bed. There you go. <sighs> on the bed, right? Are you starting to moan a little bit? No. <laughs> no. You, you your got, guys are killing me. You got posters on your wall? No, I don't have posters. No? No. Mm. You got anything made by Grandma? Do you in have your bed room? sores at <laughs> no. this point? <laughs> no, nothing by Grandma. Nothing? nothing. Wow, your room sounds dull. Why? <laughs> because I don't know stuff my Grandma. I tell you what I like: a girl that just kind of moved out. How long you been out of your parents' house? Um, since college. And how how many years? So that's five years now. Oh, five years. All yeah. right. I like a girl that just moves out that has maybe a um a Smurf. Yeah, uh, oh bedspread. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, posters of uh, boy bands on the wall. Stuff that you would have. Pillows. As you, uh, I'm the exact opposite. I come, you hook up with the chick, and she's got like four stuffed animals on the bed. Yeah. And she starts on this one's called Pookie. <laughs> your, your fucking dick is just like, all right, dude, I'm out of here. <laughs> this is just nuts. You got stuffed animals? Um, come not on. on my bed. But you have stuffed animals. Yeah, I have some leftover from when I was a kid. What? Yeah, when you were a kid. What are they? A uh, frog? No. <laughs> what? A giant dog, um, a little lion thing, and this dolphin. What's what's the dog's name? Oh, I don't know. I didn't you know. have a name. Stop it. What's the dog's name? I didn't name it. That's actually, I got that from my boyfriend for Valentine's Day, and I didn't name it. Which one does have a name? <laughs> no, he threw a dart at a balloon at a carnival. <laughs> there you go, sweetheart. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> Gives you a rash. The dolphin has a name, doesn't it? No, none of them don't. Sorry. A liar. <laughs> Those awful carnival stuffed animals that look like they have like a, some sort of aneurysm. <laughs> like they got like the bad stitching and the stuffing's pushing through. Yeah, the through. stitching's never good. It's like, and then they just they they stop making things with legs. It's like you want a worm, and so they could just have a tube with one seam on it. Oh, that ball with the fucking eyes. Yeah. They just... <laughs> <laughs> Those prizes thing. One of the eyes is just slightly off always. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on, Evangeline. We got Bill the intern in here. We're gonna get to you though. 
All right, hold on. Yeah. But you don't have names for your stuffed animals. Come huh? on. No, I don't. Liar, whore, liar, whore, and you know it. No? All right, all right hold on to the line, okay? Evangeline, completely naked in Philly, getting ready to play. Yeah. Guess what's in my pants? Bill, Hello, Bill. Intern Bill, why are you late today? Hey, guys. Um, no, I just certainly wasn't spending time looking for a shirt, was it? <laughs> no, I was... Uh... That, uh, at my count right now, and this is just that I have seen, maybe the fourth appearance of the Charles Bronson shirt. Yeah, well, I... I... Slept in it last night, basically. <laughs> no, I was going to ask him where he got it, actually. It is a cool uh, shirt, a isn't cool it? Shirt. Charles Bronson. Uh, the first three times it's cool. <laughs> right. After that, it's like, this nut with a Charles Bronson shirt. I'll knock it off already. Uh, why, why did you sleep? Uh, in it. I didn't sleep. And I, I basically, it was someone's birthday last night, and I went and I was drinking. And of course you are. 3 a.m., get back. And I'm like, uh, I started walking back from the bar, and I get back about 3 a.m., and um. You know, I, I, all my alarms are set to go. All? Oh, how many? Three. Three alarms are and set. And I, it was pretty bad, and I just passed out on the floor. <laughs> and, but I thought, like, the alarms would have woke me up, and all three of them must have went off. And when I got the, uh, call from someone called me, uh, I freaked out, and I just gunned it to the, uh, train station as fast as I could. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, I feel really terrible about this. Like, mm-hmm. this is gonna, I'm gonna obsess over this. Well, if you were one of those really bad interns, that would have been bad. But yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. you're you're this pretty. Uh, what do you do when you good. obsess about something? I just play it through my mind uh, over and over, and I'll be like, oh, like kill that. chipmunks and stuff. Yeah, yeah you, you know, know. I need to just choke a random stranger walking down the street. <laughs> Fish for pigeons and little black girls, you know. Cobblestone <laughs> over some oh, random person. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? <laughs> what'd you say? What did what I say? Something about pigeons and and uh, black girls. Uh, that's it's a weird combination. Don't strangle Bill's shirt. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to kick you in the chest. <laughs> He's going to give me a, a boot. titty twister. <laughs> yes. So hey. this like freaks you out like you fucked up and you don't yeah, like, like fucking up a gig like no, this. Like, and... I just feel terrible about it. Why did you stay out so late? Three in the morning. You know what? Well, it was like 10 p.m. and It's three in the fucking morning. And my friend's like, hey, it's this friend's birthday. And I haven't been hanging around my friends that much this semester. And they're like, come on, come on. I'm like... Dude, I'll only go if we'll be back guaranteed by 1 a.m. And they said yes. And when we didn't leave at 1, I'm like, I got to fucking go. And I started running the four miles it is to my house. You ran four miles. Well, yeah, I got about halfway, and I still had my drink in my hand, running and drinking. And <laughs> someone in a cab offered me a ride to the fucking place, and I, I had no idea. And then my friends came in, in another cab, and they picked me up and brought me back. And you way you were you were home? And they came and got you and brought you back to the no, party no, no. you they, left They again? found me in a cab running towards the apartment, which is oh. two towns over or whatever it is. Because I was in White Plains or, or yeah, I, was, I think I was in White Plains. And we live in Porchester. Yeah. So I was running like Lincoln Avenue and down and past the Hutchinson River Parkway. Like, <laughs> Why didn't you just take the cab the whole way to your house? Yeah. I had, well, I don't know. There was no cab outside the bar, so I was just... At and some point you were in a cab and then they dropped you. That's when you they off. got me. They picked they found me and they when I when I left, that's when they knew they had to leave and find me. Oh, was, so they were in a cab. Yeah, and they So came he and saw me the up. cab and the cab he saw was full of his friends. And they got you and drove you back. Yeah, well, yeah to the house. Oh, to the house. I kind of I guess they, they were drinking whatever and when I left they're like where the fuck's he going? And then they figured it out and went and got me and then brought me back. Wow. So I wasn't going to say I I couldn't go on any longer. I need, I knew I needed to get to bed and it was, yeah. yeah. It was just do you uh do you hurt people? No, no. Okay. Well, I've all been wondering that. Maybe emotionally, but never physically. You know? Never physically. Yeah. You hurt my feelings. Yeah, you just chip away at them and. Bill uh, made a very good observation in the office about you. About who? Oh, oh that, yeah. Those two. Did you see in the, the movie studio. Stripes? Yes. Remember that dude, Psycho? Did <laughs> 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 <'Cause> you remind? <laughs> Thank you. Oh wow! Does that fit? The name's Francis Sawyer, but everybody calls me Psycho. Any of you guys call me Francis, and I'll kill you. <laughs> and I don't like nobody touching my stuff. So just keep your meat hooks off. If I catch any of you guys in my stuff, I'll kill you. Also, I don't like nobody touching me. Now, any of you homos <laughs> touch me, and I'll kill you. <laughs> Lighten up, Francis. <laughs> kind of similar how they talk. Yeah, a little so you, bit, a little bit. You made that observation, and you guys already got that drop that quickly. 
Yeah, that's the beauty of what the we magic do of radio. We just make believe that was off the cuff, but uh-huh. it was planned. I don't know, at least two days ago. Yeah. Yes. Oh, thanks. Yes. For, we, we, thanks we, for destroying the magic. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for yeah. tearing down the eighth wall. You're welcome. <laughs> in this octagon we work in. <laughs> don't you ever touch me again. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I know how this radio shit work. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. That was pitched in a meeting. Right. <laughs> so anyway, some clips. Where were we? The assault on the media contest. Yes, the voting. Uh, and Bill he was, was one of the. Bill the intern was one of the the vote voters. Yeah. Who'd Who you, you just put those down right there, there, Bill? Who'd you vote for, Bill? Uh, the uh, guys in Philly. The you guys in for Philly. The Philly, Philly ones. Why did you like that one? Because they got uh, got in front of the camera mm-hmm. and they looked like they would have just like pounded away at anyone who tried to stop them from what they were doing and mm-hmm. they were very aggressive and psychos very, yeah 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 Nothing good why don't you go out and look for a james coburn shirt that you can wear <laughs> in between that <laughs> that one lee marvin <laughs> lee Ma- tank top <laughs> thanks fellas all right no problem my friend very nice <laughs> <Lee Marvin. laughs> all right so we had everyone vote I don't know who Master Poe voted for, Ben. Uh, Gentlemen. It says second place is video number two. What does that mean? Video uh, number two was Boston. Was Boston? Or Buffalo, I think. I would say. It went in order. It went Boston, Buffalo, and Philly. How I lined the clips. I'm looking here and seeing that one place just got one vote for second place. And I'm thinking that's the one Poe voted for. Well, here oh, we that go. Was you? I would think Poe would like the guy who made the defensive move <laughs> right. on the attacker. It would all be analyzed. You know, this guy's coming in. I like the way he shoved them off. It's very good, gentlemen. All right, how about we do this? There he comes. Master Poe, who did you vote for? Poe, part of the voting? Poe, Poe. Right. You know where the mics are? There you go. Who did you vote for? The third video. What the fuck does that mean? The well, one. the email that was given to me by Ben, there was three videos. I, 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 what was in the video? The two guys, two gorillas, jumped in front of the uh, the news reporter, ah. and the one guy had stickers all over his body, all and right, he was screaming, Philly. Opie and Anthony. That's the one from Philly. Yeah. Every article of clothing he owns has some sort of emblem that says, I can kick the shit out of you. I will just kill you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> You're gonna need a body bag! <laughs> Kick his ass! Well, it's just a sword and a shield. <laughs> sweep the leg. Yes. I want you to sweep the leg. But Sensei, I'll be disqualified. Is that Nunchuck? <laughs> Alright, so, uh, build the intern <laughs> and Master Chuck's on the tag of his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Both like the Philly assault on the media. Very yeah. Good. All right. Good one. Thank you, Paul. How, how Thank about you guys. we do this? In third place, we'll just play the audio of third place. Third place. This is third place. Assault on the media contest for September. Finally down to the uh, the nuts and bolts of this damn thing. As voted by our illustrious uh, voting uh, staff. That's right. Here is uh, third place. Southern News reporter Julie Fine is live at Erie Community College tonight with the very latest for us. Julie? It was quite a scene here. State Assemblyman Mark Schroeder calling a news conference. He is critical of the control board's consultancy. We'll have to get right back to you with this story. (laughs) Yes, that's right. Falling short for, I think, the third month in a row. Much like his football team. (laughs) Buffalo Paul and uh, Chicken Shit. Oh, he just missed the uprights on that one, didn't he? just missed once again. Damn. Third place goes to Buffalo Paul and Chicken Shit. I was very surprised. I thought they were, I thought they were gonna either win it finally or come in second oh, place. I never thought wide third right. place. Who, the who, Giants who win by one. <laughs> it was Nathaniel, right? Poor Nathaniel. Nathaniel's, Nathaniel's I thought it did. Uh, the, my only problem with the Philly one is it's a bunch of wow stickers moving around the frame. You're not uh-huh. sure what they're promoting. He had that T-shirt on. and had some good airtime. I so. like uh, Nathaniel's assessment of that one. The one with the uh, the stickers is kind of just stickers. Uh, you got a lot of them. We're all over them, but yeah, kind of just stickers. I like the one big hoof in yeah, your the, face. The big Opie and Anthony. Bam! Uh, that horn was pretty good. That really threw her for a loop, if I may say. That's actually Oop. a good idea. You scare the shit out of the reporter. They <laughs> clear out. You got a nice camera shot. Now you can finish your story if you want. Sign do whatever nice you want to do. Yeah. Frighten them out of the scene. Want to play runner-up? Runner-up. That'll be obvious who won, but uh, runner-up for the Assault on the Media Contest for the month of September. Here's the audio. 
Let's get a look at the early tailgating. Oh, Amy, they're already out here. Tailgating season is here. Pre-game pre -game revelry. Oh, absolutely, Amy. Oh, now, I knew the tailgaters yeah. would be out here early this morning, and they are out here in full force in the parking lot by Lincoln Financial. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As you can see. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> totally disrupted the, the the report the lady was trying to do that? at the Eagles game. It's Philly in uh, the runner-up position. But what's great about that is she actually thinks that's, that's football fans going crazy, so they got like an extra couple of seconds. Like, right. They're already and, getting crazy out here. And that's kind of why uh, I I don't like that one. I really Because like it's in an one. atmosphere where... You can get away with doing that because it's tailgating. Everyone's Isn't that just a smart form of attack. Everyone's crazy. <laughs> it is right. They don't expect it there. They had so. creativity with the stickers yeah. though, and jumping in front of the reporter. Yeah, that is the Trojan horse. They had the air horn. The Trojan horse. <laughs> well, Philly got three. They kind of rode in on a tailgating it's party. A gift. Opened it up and uh, attacked. Philly got three first place votes. Buffalo got one. Uh, one second place vote. That that was it. They didn't even. Oh no, Nathaniel got one. Uh, Voted for Buffalo, right? Yeah, there was only one one total vote for Buffalo. And we got to congratulate Sonny Farelli and the Boston <laughs> Strangler. I don't have a drum roll. I don't have I a know. timpani. I don't have anything. They are the winners of the Assault on the Media contest for September. The video is uh, it, it is absolutely great with the guy running out of the truck and trying to prevent the assault from happening, but uh, that guy failed miserably. And our winner is. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Here's the audio. I don't know if it'll make sense, but uh, all the videos will be up on OpenAnthony.com with the place they came in. But here's Sonny Forelli in Boston Strangler. Yes, we're very happy to say that. But, you know, David, it is coming. And I'm, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but, folks, remember these, the good old shovel and broom? Well, we're going to have to get real familiar with these this winter because if you don't clean the your car off of the That is great. No, that one deserves to win. Yeah, there they're is. yelling. They disrupted her. They broke through a tackle. It had a huge sign, a sticker. It had all the features. It had all the features. Yeah. So. All right. Once Definitely again. worthy of first place. Sonny Ferrelli and Boston Strangler. Yeah, Good bravo, job. guys. Go. The Assault on the Media contest for September is officially Fantastic. over. We start with October immediately. 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 We'll uh, we'll have a list of prizes that. Uh, that will be up for grabs, all right? Bring it on. It happens in any city. You see these live shots. All right, finally, Evangeline from Philly. Yes. Hi, Evangeline. How are you doing? Sorry about that. Yeah, we've got to apologize. This show, uh, it's uh, like a uh, a train it just keeps chugging, and we, uh, uh, yeah. Well, anyway. You're a fan uh, of the show, right? Yeah, yeah. So you understand that we go off on these crazy tangents. It sucks no, I know. You know. I really apologize, man. A hot girl like you sitting there all naked. and uh, Did she give her breast size? Uh, I think it was. I'm gonna guess your breast size. I'm gonna. Oh, oh, oh! He's uh, gonna guess by looking. Uh, 36 full B, maybe. Uh, maybe C. I'm a 34, but yeah, I'm a full B. 34 full B. All yeah, right, you B. were giving her a little too much back there, Opie. Come oh, on. All right. Full, 34 full B with the booty. Yeah, that's yeah. nice with the big. With the booty. Big cute. Is it really big, your ass, or um, like nice. freakish? Not, not like where they're crazy. walking down and you can't help but look. I've looked at some bad asses longer than I've looked at hot asses because they just baffle me sometimes. No, I've been I've been complimented by people just walking by, so I don't think it's one of those bad asses. Why didn't you say it? Black people, right? Well, black black guys love that ass on yeah, you. Yeah, they do love my ass. Blonde hair with a big booty. Nice. Can we do the ass test? Future NBA wife. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do the ass test? No one's looking. What's the ass test, uh, Opie? Uh, she she puts the phone down there and gives it a spank. Oh, could you smack your ass with so, the phone so we could hear the wave motion? <laughs> All right. Let's hear. All right, listen. Shh. Oh, oh yeah, solid. yeah. <laughs> there's solid. some going on there. Yeah. Well, could you could you hit a little harder? <laughs> on myself? Yeah. 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 Oh, your roommate. But and get the phone close because we can tell a lot from yeah, the sound. Yeah. Hit your ass. All right. Wow, that was very solid. There wasn't much yeah. to go there at all. <laughs> yeah, that's you, you're pretty solid for a girl with a big ass. What part did you do? The side of my butt. Yeah, but did you tighten it all up or? No. All right, you left it loose. One more, t one more test. <laughs> no, because when it's the girl, probably her forehead. <laughs> when the girl's on. <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> 
I think she's cheating, though. Cheating. Why? Because I think uh, every girl, when they're kind of like bent over and then reaching and slapping their butt, everything's nice and tight. Oh, did you bend over? Well, I'm trying to reach around to get it. Can you lay down no, on no. your belly on your bed? No, I want her to stand up. That's, stand up? Yeah, stand up. Okay. And do the same slap. I want to see if there's a difference because it's a solid, solid hit. That means there's not much movement there. And not around the side. you got to kind of reach around and get like dead center on an ass cheek. There you go. Okay. All right, here All right. we go. You standing up? Yeah. All right. Ah, uh, see, that there's didn't a sound. Movement. A it was a little, little movement. A little bit more. <laughs> that's that's nice. You, get, you need something to hold on to. That's nice. Bill, did stuff. you hear the little movement there? Uh, she has a phenomenal ass. Phenomenal. It, it sounded though a little less tight than the other thing. What do you, what do you, what do you mean? It? Well, the side, because uh, I think when it was bent over a little bit, yeah, uh, it was very tight. But this is like you ever tune a drum? Ding, 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 ding. You know, you take the drum key and kind of tune it down. It sounded a little tuned down. Uh, one more time. I want to hear that. On the ass cheek, do the other, standing the up. Do the other ass cheek. Other ass cheek. Just so we okay. you're symmetrical, all right? Okay. Here we go. Oh, yep. my God, I hear it. You hear it? I hear it. That was more of a fleshy kind of moving <clears throat> The moving sound of sound. cottage cheese. What do you want to No. Oh. That was no wonderful. Way. I liked that. Okay. Yeah. Nice uh, transition from ass to thigh. Yeah. No, uh, no, a dimpling going on there. All no right. Dimpling. All right, you wacky bastard. Get back on the bed so we can play. Guess what's in my pants? Okay. All right. Uh, we have uh, Derek. Why don't you play the song there? He's got to play. He's got to play. He's got to play. He guess what's in my pants? Place the receiver. Up on your beaver. It's time to play. Hey, guess what's in my pants? It's time to guess what's in my pants. My pants. All right. We're ready to play finally. Okay. All right. Uh, you know what to do, right? Yeah. Okay. Up and down first? Yes. Wait a sec, guys. Uh, Chuck Farnham is calling in on the hotline. we got to get right to him. Chuck Farnham, yes. our friend from uh, California. He's uh, one of these real sicko guys. Loves serial killing. Loves uh, oh, collecting yeah, yeah, yeah. things from uh, serial killers. Hey, Chuck, and, what's uh, going on? Hello, guys. Jeez, I kind of wanted to hear that myself. Yeah, we're going to have to <laughs> wait a little while, though, because uh, we got another call coming in on the hotline, perhaps, in a little while, so we got to get the... We got to get through all this stuff. A lot of material today. A lot busy, of busy. So what's going on, Chuck? September 30th, 1955. Yeah. 1955. That's the 50th anniversary of something. Let me. Yes, think. it is. Let me think. Uh, September 30th, 1955. No, it wasn't my prom date. Uh, uh, the last time. The Milwaukee Brewers were 500. The death of James Dean. Ah, ah yes. ooh, ah, very big story. So I'm down here uh, about, uh, I guess, I'm about three and a half hours from San Francisco. Yes. At, at the intersection of Highway 41 and 46, and uh, it's going to be an all-day affair down here. Well, it's a big thing. Oh, God. Every year, all the nuts come out, swear they see his ghost walking up and down the street. Oh, brother. Women crying in poodle skirts. Uh, a few years ago, I brought a woman down who carried the ashes of her cousin yeah. and poured them in the middle of the street where the accident happened. What, why is this fascinating to people? I, I have no idea. They're, like, obsessed with it down there. Mm. I mean, they come from hundreds of miles away. It's a it's a huge huge event. Do people go to like where River Phoenix uh, drop dead and do that every year? Uh, I have. <laughs> you have? Yeah. <laughs> but is that something that people like do? Uh, I think so. Yeah. 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 Chuck does all this weird shit. Yeah. So <laughs> I got the uh, I got the wild stickers. Okay. Oh. And they and they just renamed the highway or the intersection there, the James Dean intersection. So I figured I'd uh, plaster those up on the old sign for you. Why would they name it after the guy that's like croaked at the oh, at the intersection? Weird. What out of respect? Where's yeah, the actual crash? Right in the middle of the road, or did he yeah, hit, it's right in the middle of the he road. He didn't hit a tree, road. right? He hit another car or something. Well, the, the deal is, it's like people go, well, "I don't know how the guy died." At this time of year down here, it happened at five o'clock in the evening. 
he was coming straight down a road, and this guy's in a pickup truck. By the way, the guy's name was Don Turnipseed. Really? Yeah, yeah, weird name, huh? Um, he never saw the guy. Uh, Dean apparently said to the guy who was in the car with him, uh, that guy isn't going to pull out. And in reality, you can't see a thing up that road with the sun where it is at that time of day. Oh. The guy never saw him. Total both cars. Matter of fact, I got pictures of the cars on the website this morning. There was somebody in the car with James Dean? Yeah. Yeah, he got thrown uh, clear. Rolf is a uh, mechanic. I didn't know that. Mm. Uh, he was in the hospital for months. Uh, Dean died of a broken neck. Eek. Fascinating. Were they wearing their seatbelts? I think not. 1955? Nah, you didn't need smoking yeah. cigarettes. They had those awful ones that just went across your lap. Yeah, so you no, could just I, break I in half. Yes, your torso keeps going into the dashboard. That friggin' uh, I, wooden stake of a steering wheel thing that, <laughs> like, they didn't think of collapsible steering wheel columns or anything. I'll this goes right through your heart. Huh? Back when cars were made of quality. I'm driving a 68, I don't have Everything's all metal. Cigarette lighter goes through your eye. And into your... I, I remember driving around when I was a, a kid with my father in like an old Rambler, or whatever the hell kind of crap car it was, in the passenger seat. And it was one of those big bench seats, you know, that just go all the way across. And the dashboard was metal. The dashboard itself, where the glove compartment was and everything, was metal. And I wasn't wearing a seat belt. I'm a kid. I'm sitting in the front seat. And when he jammed on the brakes, he would just put his arm out to try to, like, yeah. stop me, not knowing any type of physics that, like, the weight of me and his arm and the way his arm bends and stuff. The I fact was, that you're all moving forward. Yeah. If it was any more than just a little tap on the brake, my face, my teeth right into the metal uh, dashboard. They should figure that shit out slowly. Why don't we pad the dashboard so when people eat it... It's not quite eating steel. Exactly. And it wasn't yeah. like that lunchbox metal either. No. No, my, my, uh, from the my car is Pittsburgh full steel. <laughs> an I-beam right across there. <laughs> a hey, Chuck. Hit a girder with a glove yeah, box. A girder. <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to accomplish on the 50th anniversary of James Dean's death down there? I'd just like to hang out with the weirdos. You know what? I went to uh, uh, that place where JFK got uh, shot there, Dealey right. Plaza. Yeah. And uh, that's... Uh, one of the most famous spots in all of the world. Yeah. And within yeah. five minutes, I was bored shitless. I was like, oh, oh, oh. Once you see it, Grassy yeah, Knoll, it's over. Right there. There's the exit in, in the road where it happened. And there's the book thing and the tree. All right, I got it. And then I, I was like, to... and then I was like, hey, uh, is there a Starbucks around here? Like, what, what are you going to do there My brother tried to tell me that there was actually a tour where you could get in, like, a 1963 uh, Lincoln Continental. With, and like, drive the, the road. Dry, and they play all the audio. Nice. And here's yeah. a motorcade coming around the corner. Sick I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure that uh, happens. So, and then, I think, I and then think people run out onto the X to get their pictures taken exactly where JFK. Yeah, they shot. painted an X in the street. And then the the light changes. It's now green. And these cars, you know, they're Dallas. They don't give a fuck about this site. They just they just know they have to take this way to get home. <laughs> so they're just flying where JFK, you know, <laughs> made his way. And they're, they're I, I watched a, a bunch of people almost got hit because they're they're, they're clueless tourists. Like, oh, take. Picture. What a hilarious tourist attraction. It's not the Statue of Liberty, the Liberty Bell, or no. like Cheers and Boston. <laughs> cheers. Yeah. You go, you go. But they have to run out. The president's brains got blown up. <laughs> they have to run out in the middle of the road to get their picture taken. And uh, I was down there with Jimmy Norton and a couple of my brothers, and, you know, we all took our pictures on the Of course you did. Well, at least we were smarter, making sure that uh, it was a red light, you know. Anyway. Oh. So, Chuck, that's about it? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be uh, sending some photos your way over the weekend. Ah, I can't Great, wait. Man. Can't wait for the photos. Yeah, it'll, it'll be good. It, uh, I'm telling you. Hey, uh, Evangeline. Yeah. <laughs> we were ready to play Guess What's in My Pants. I know we stalled a little bit because we have a lot going on. Yeah. But we have a big, uh, a big star on the hotline we have to get yep. to. Danny Bonaducci. You know okay. Danny, right? Are you watching the show? Not right now. Why not? Because you say not to listen to it when you're talking. Oh, no, no, not no. this show. I mean, show. are you watching oh. Danny Bonaducci? No. Why not? Because. All right, hold on. We'll get to you. Please hold. You're still naked, though, right? Yes. Great. All right, hold on. We'll get to you in a minute there. <laughs> Let's say hi to Danny Bonaducci. Danny. Danny, what's oh, up, man? man? How are hey. you, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? Great. Although, 
I got to tell you, I'm I'm the tiniest bit surprised. Why is that? Well, because you guys are like, you know, legends in my business. I'm a yeah, morning jock, as you know. And you guys are like probably a, one of the biggest names in radio. And I'm listening, and I'm hearing about how dangerous the dashboard of a car is. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me jump in with my life. So one day, I'm sleeping with Johnny Thunder's wife. My girlfriend comes home and shoots me in the chest. Now, that's the night out. <laughs> Yeah, I know. We, we live the pussy lifestyle, man. Compared to what the hell you've been doing, we are just faggots. He lives a behind the music episode every day. Every, every day. day. Every day. And I'm sitting here. The dashboards were very dangerous. I was almost injured once in a, a sh short stop. <laughs> what an ass. And I swear to God, if, if it wasn't for me and maybe Susan Day being a puker, they'd have had nothing. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one, the Partridge family behind the music. Yeah, they tried to make Susan Day seem like uh, she really had bulimia bad, I guess. Yeah, but before they named it, like she's the, the poster child of this stuff, because she's way back when it was called Throwing Up. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that was kind of back when that was the look anyway. Exactly. Everyone exactly. loved a nice skinny broad back then. Everyone was trying to look like Karen Carpenter back then. Yeah, Karen Carpenter, that was a little too far. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> Danny, uh, we're loving the show. I, I I don't know what to think of it, though, man. You're crazy. Yeah, that seems to be the uh, going concern these days. My, my only concern with that, because, I mean, I can't say they edited me crazy. What I just, that, that's the way I am. That's how I behave. There's no way out. What I can say is I was really, really, really crazy on Monday, and then really, really crazy on Friday, and when they're done editing, I'm crazy all day. The entire week. <laughs> <laughs> that's reality yeah. television for you. <laughs> yeah, you probably had a couple of nice, normal days in there, right? I did nice days with the kids. I like my pets. I was going to say I mowed the lawn, but I didn't mow the lawn. Were you ever in the middle of losing your shit and you're just thinking, okay, this is making the show? Yes, to be honest. Uh, to be honest with you, I was. But that was kind of the problem where I started to think of this is really crazy that there might be something seriously wrong with me. Because yeah. I'd be going so far and in my head I'm thinking, wow, this is probably going to be really interesting. But then it would go so far in my head I would think, hey, you have to stop this. And, <laughs> and I couldn't. People are going to be watching this, for God's sake. You know what? I'm kind of bummed because uh, we have you on live, so obviously you're okay by the end of this, the, the show. Well, I, I was I, watching I, every week convinced that, you know, we were going to get the headline. You know what, man? I swear to God, <laughs> so was I. I. I told so was I. 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 I don't know if they'll air this or not. Yeah. Uh, because we had some legal issues, right? Not not everything went according to plan. And, you know, I was chock full of Vicodin and vodka and steroids. Not a great mix. <laughs> you know, especially if I got a questionable anger management problem to begin with. So there's some people that might be suing. But anyway... <laughs> Um, there was a game I invented when I was homeless, and it's called Shoot, Bitch. And what you do is you find the guy with the gun who thinks he's really bad, and you piss him off, and he draws his gun, and you look at him, and you go, Shoot, Bitch! And then they never do. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's a little suicidal. I, no, that's not. Cause I no? I truly believe they won't do it. I, it, it would be suicidal if I thought, man, if I say this, this guy is going to shoot me. But, you know, the public places and stuff, uh, they're never going to shoot. Wow. Yeah. What, now, what? It, obviously, it was the drugs that uh, got you homeless. You are spending money on drugs instead of uh, the roof over the head. You mean, you, you mean back when I was homeless when I was, like, 19? Yeah. No, everybody thinks I was, like, this big crack whore, and that came later. Um, <laughs> the Partridge, uh, Partridge family, the last year, the big money, yeah. $600 a week. 600 bucks a week. Yeah, it was wasn't really bad money for 1970, step five or whatever it was. No. But when I turned 18 to get all this money, it was 72 grand. And I made a conscious decision. I said to myself, well, I can either try and eke this out into some kind of lifestyle for a little while, or I can have the most outrageous 30 days ever. God damn. Oh, we're talking man. to another rock star. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> we, we bitch about how our rock stars are gone, man, but you, this is your rock star. Well, yeah, thank you, man. I, I, I mean, I'm 46 years old, so I feel like, you know, Janis Joplin is one of my heroes, yeah. right? Dead at 27. No, 
Now, Britney Spears is going to live forever. That's just so inappropriate. What happened to rock stars dying, choking on their own vomit like they're supposed to? Hallelujah, brother. We were just talking about, uh, we were at Ozfest a couple years back, and all these tough-looking bands were eating, like, vegetarian meals and drinking water and, oh, and wow. whining and complaining, and they're, as they're all tatted up. And I was looking like, man, I've been backstage for many, many years. I'm like, what happened to the rock stars? Where's the waking up with the needle in your arm, clinically dead? Right. <laughs> all that shit. I want you to know, that's the line to beat on Behind the Music. Yeah. Nikki Six saying, and that's when I woke up with the needle still in my arm. Yeah, with the blood. <laughs> the line to beat, man. Yeah, and people are not really trying to beat that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Although Danny's coming close. Danny's going to give it a try. He's going to give doing, it a shot. So that's really you doing steroids on the show? Yeah. First, uh, uh, first episode, I didn't know what... I'll tell you guys the absolute truth. Here's what happened. We sold VH1 one show, a very cute little show called Rock and Roll Dinner Party, and I got the idea because it said Mick Jagger drove up to a nightclub, and I thought... Who the hell taught Mick Jagger to drive? I never thought about Mick Jagger behind the wheel of a car. Have you? Right. He goes in limousines and Rolls Royces. I wonder what else he does. I wonder if I had him over to my house, would he play Pictionary? You know, what do these rock stars do? So we, we sold them this cute little show. And then that kind of, they didn't like that so much, but they thought the Bonaduce's were interesting. So my wife started setting up these cute little things for her to do, like her 39th and a half birthday party because she was never going to turn 40, stuff like that, right? Yeah. And I said, just send the cameras to my house and I'll be fascinating, trust me. <laughs> so they send the cameras to my house and I'm just sitting there like a retard doing nothing. So I said, excuse me for a minute, and I went to my local bar, and I started drinking, thinking, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do? And by the time I realized I had no ideas, I was wasted. <laughs> and I come back to my house, and I'm literally stumbling through the door, and the second they see that the, their subject of their show is just geezed, they light up all the cameras. Oh, they must have been fucking happy, man. Oh, it's like God, they must have gold. Been Half a second before, like, dude, we're getting canceled. And yeah. All of a sudden, and then, he's, oh. he's like when Urkel showed up on <laughs> Family Matters. Like, thank God. Here we go. Opens the door. There's a shining aura yeah. behind him. <laughs> I'm not done. But my point is to be fascinating. So I go, you guys, you guys, you want to see something really cool? <laughs> so we go up to my gym, and I take off my shirt, and I think they think I'm just being this total narcissist because I'm in pretty good shape at this point, and I'm just standing there shirtless, and I reach into this fishing tackle box, and I pull out a needle. I mean, they're huge, these needles, because uh, steroids are oil-based, so they release slowly, so there's essentially the consistency of motor oil. So the needle has got to be gigantic. Gigantic. So it's not like you're taking a needle, it's like you're wounding yourself. So I go, you guys, you guys, you want to see something cool? Watch this. Pow! Right through my shoulder. And I had done it before, but I was showing off and I hit the bone. Oh, God damn. Exactly right. I go, oh my God. And I let go of the needle, which is now sticking out of my shoulder. And I'm going, Oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And then finally, I shoot the stuff in, and I pull it out, and there's just blood everywhere. <laughs> Holy because crap. It, and it's dripping down my arm, I've got a needle in my hand, and I don't know, I promise you, the director is the sweetest man in the world and had my best interests at heart, but somebody had to be going, oh my god, this is good. Gold, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the fact that they name it Breaking Bonaduce, I don't think they're rooting for your health. Yeah. I, I, I named it Breaking Bonaduce. Oh, my rehab. fault, my fault. Yeah, I, it, rehab and I call I called them up, because you get a 10-minute phone call every day, and I called them up and I said, you got to change the title to Breaking Bonaduce. It'll give people an idea of what they're in for, you know, uh, it's just not fair to have being Bonaduce. Yeah, people think they're going to watch Jesus it, you know, whatever, uh, Peter Brady show. You know, it's Peter Brady with <laughs> yeah. a bike through his head. D Danny, this is obviously <laughs> one, one of these uh, very stereotypical child star things. What? Where did the anger come from? You know what? I'm not that angry of a guy. But don't, aren't you in anger management class or something? No, I didn't know. <laughs> didn't know. I didn't fucking need it. <laughs> you only so, got a problem if you show up. <laughs> right. Well, well, Those well, are the people. Know, I don't want to give too much away because these guys, this is the very first interview I've ever done where there isn't a VH1 publicist on the other end of the phone. Thank God. Oh, uh, you've done a lot, by the way. You've done a lot of radio. How much do you hate that when all of a sudden you hear the publicist, um, uh, 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 that, that's too far, that's enough, that's no. enough, and they, uh, you know they what, actually 
like they cut the connection in the middle of the interview because yeah. you asked something a little too crazy? Actually, they say don't do that to me. I made that real clear. Good. <laughs> I made it real clear. Okay, I know your job. This is my job. You can shake your head at me. Aside from that, that's that. But, Danny, well, the thing is, what is it? Is it getting screwed out of money? Is it the fact that you grow up and all of a sudden you're not getting the parts anymore? There just seems to be that what the fuck happens to you guys? Well, you, you, what do you mean? The, the ex child stars on drugs? Yeah, it's always drugs. You no, know, but I don't think it's fair that me, Todd Bridges, and Eddie Munster can bring down an entire industry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. All right, you got a point there. Yeah, it's just the three of us. We're the, we're the most pussy gang in the world. Hey, fucking Blossom's doing fine, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> which, one is, which one is the one that's doing the punk rock thing? Uh, oh. That was uh, courtship, courtship of Eddie's father. Courtship of Eddie's father, which is now he's a really nice guy, by the way. So yeah. I, I'm not making fun. I'm just reporting. He's 107 years old with green hair. Yeah. It's a big mistake to not think you're a punk rocker. Is, is this like some kind of weird fraternity, and you guys all keep in touch with each other? Yeah, we're best pals. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure Urkel's coming over. The yeah, TV yeah, day. I'm sure. You and it's weird. Is it true the that Brady's, you the Brady's actually get together? Yeah. That's so strange. Unless there's partridge barbecues going on that I'm just not invited to. We don't hang out. Hey, you know, uh, Barry Williams used to be a pretty good friend of ours, and then he's going through a divorce. Do you know what that's about at all? No, I don't. I, I, all right. It's not like, like I said. I, the last time I saw Greg Brady, I was beating his ass. Dude, you laid waste to him. Oh, that's Holy right. I forgot shit. about that. The celebrity fight. Oh, my God. And And the whole lead up to it. Was just them showing how Danny just can fucking like rip a tiger apart, and and there's Greg Brady like, yeah, well, I'm gonna go in there and give it a, my shot, and they're showing like Danny knows martial arts and he's in fucking shape, and now we know he's fucking driving motor oil into his shoulders, and, and <laughs> I know, <laughs> and, and he just goes in there and kicks his. Ass. I didn't. I didn't mean to beat him so badly because at first, because he's much bigger than I am. Yeah. At, at first, these people kept coming into me, and people that would know, like his trainer, came in and said, "Listen, man, you gotta, you gotta take it easy on this guy. You're gonna look like a bully." Yeah. And I thought, well, this is a professional trainer. He's lying. I'm gonna get. Her. He's because he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And somebody else said it, and then somebody else said, "Listen, we really need to get three rounds out of this. If you know what I'm saying." <laughs> <laughs> Okay, don't don't you worry about it. Carry on a little. Out of it, no problem. So I get out there and I'm dancing around. Well, I, you know, I make Jake Lamada look like a ballerina. I'm the most <laughs> man. I got one gear and it's forward. <laughs> and so I'm trying to dance around so not to actually fight the guy. And then the audience booed. And once the audience booed, that's it, man. And then I killed him. <laughs> yeah. You'll and then, the you know, know what's funny is I beat him really badly. And I felt bad. And after it was over, I went up to him. And I really thanked him because I really wanted to do it, and all my opponents kept backing out. Yeah, they couldn't find an opponent for me, so he agreed to. So I went over and I said, "Thank you so much for doing this. I really wanted to do it, and I wouldn't have gotten an opportunity unless you agreed." And all this really nice stuff, but his back was all covered in blood, and I don't know if it was the ropes or the canvas, which is real rough. But I mean, he was, you know, uh, the passion of the Christ. Was. <laughs> was, I mean, he was lashed. You tooled him really bad. You know who else got nailed real? Really bad was that fucking Arnold Horshack. Horshack yeah. uh, Screech. Well, that was Screech. Shouldn't have done that. Oh, I know. It's like they take this old guy and put him in with a young guy. That was. They took uh, allegedly an old queen. <laughs> yeah. uh, with, with a reasonably a young, healthy man. Yeah. <laughs> he just got the shit beat out of him. <laughs> Did he still have his glasses on? <laughs> what about Paula Jones versus uh, what's his face, the skater? Oh, oh yeah, God. yeah, that was another good one. That, that was all the thing. They, Tanya it, Harding? it appeared that Greg Brady had a chance. Yeah. Because yeah. they were wrong. Funny shit, man. Hey, so what's going on with your wife? Um, hey, uh, the, first of all, the story is bizarre. You really got married uh, after only knowing her a few hours? Yeah, seven hours. Here, here's, I'll give you the quick uh, rundown on this. Met my wife on a blind date. We went out to dinner, and I was drinking heavily, imagine. And I just assumed she was, too. You know, we're having a great big party. We go to my house. I put the moves on her, and she pushes me back and says, you know, I probably should have mentioned this earlier. 
I'm a Christian, and I'm not, I'm not prepared to do that till I'm married. And I said, hey, you might have mentioned that $90 ago. <laughs> uh, and then I thought, not that unreasonable of a request. I opened the yellow pages. It turns out there's pages of ministers called one of them married 15 years now. Holy shit. You got married just so you could get laid. No, that's a man. <laughs> He's still together. Man. Some guys, uh, you know, they, uh, will go a certain level. Like, yeah. You, I'm going to go 20 pounds overweight tonight. That's a big <laughs> commitment. Not me. I get married for it. <laughs> that's wow. A, I mean, you hear a... stories like that, but you don't, you don't hear that they actually stay together, you know? Right. Especially <laughs> after all the bullshit. I was going to say happy as I've ever been, but that's not true. I'll tell you, honestly, this... The show, well, I can't say the show because it's my behavior and I've got them to put that. But yeah. the behavior I displayed on this show really drove us apart a little bit. That got ugly. It's very friendly now, but it's not what it was. I've got to kind of work, work my way back into the house. Well, the, the weird thing on one of the first shows was how she talked about how she doesn't like having sex. Right. What That's is, a big problem. Yeah, well, that could be a huge yeah. problem. Yeah. Well, not for me. And then, and then yeah. you're training, like, lesbian porn stars in the gym and stuff, and she's really pissed off at you and <laughs> wants you to drop all the female clients that you had. Right. Well, here's my, here was my theory on that, which I think is valid. But when you're talking to a Ph.D., anything that doesn't sound totally normal like Ozzy and Harriet is crazy. Here's my theory on that, because I had the affair and it was a big drag. But here's my theory, because Gretchen doesn't like sex, right? Uh -huh. Well, it's like saying Gretchen will not cook, yet she won't let me eat anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. you know, it does make sense. It sure. It does make sense. It makes sense, because we're best friends, too. If she just let me bone, I'd live with this woman for the rest of my life. <laughs> You're you're speaking the truth, my friend. Thank you. You're speaking for many many guys out there. Oh, I'm just, this one, I'm just speaking out loud for many many guys. And, and the other observation I had was that um, you got a very very normal uh, daughter there that's uh, going into the business, huh? Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, she recently decided it was boring, so she's done. Oh, she is done because yeah. part of the show was showing her on auditions and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I took her on. I took her on auditions. She uh, and she's you know she's probably got forty grand put away. Jeez, we well, saw her in a stroller. Show how they paid for. Yeah, and like I God said, damn. up in her room doing blow right now. See? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Danny, we met you uh, at the comedy store. Uh, Anthony brought up a point because I I brought the show to the you know to our attention here, whatever. And we were talking. I'm like, Dan you know that uh, uh, that uh, baby we saw in the stroller when we saw Danny and his wife back at the comedy store. Oh, that's right. This yeah. I, about, I don't even know anymore, like 10, 12 years ago. Like, yeah, over oh, my 10 years 10. ago. Oh, 10. So it was a newborn. It yep. was about 10 years ago then. Yeah, you were walking around with a newborn, and we were doing all those uh, lame interviews down at the comedy store. <laughs> like the big uh, the big star that showed up, I think, was Greg Brady. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that all, you know, because I do the exact same thing. You'll sit there in the circle of, I know, but... <laughs> In a lot of parts of the country, jocks are the most offensive people in the world. <laughs> yeah. You look around. Like almost some kind of because people can't see you. It's a, it's a, uh, an excuse not only to get big, fat, and ugly, but for some reason to have gravy on your shirt. <laughs> 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 when we first started together about 10 years ago, Ann and I, we did a lot of those, and we gave up on them, I don't know, six, seven years ago. We couldn't yeah. take it. The, no, the, yeah. the fake radio voices and the fake toughness, and it was just awful. Absolutely. And you had to hang out with these guys in the same room. Danny, we lose you? I think we lost Danny. Yeah, his phone was clicking and clacking the whole oh, time. Good, there he is. Oh, wait, Danny, you back? Yeah, I am. I'm back. Whatever. I was making okay, a dumb cool. point anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, so... You know, I'd do the same thing you guys would do. My radio station would be there, and I'd be in that big U of disc jockeys they'd bring by the celebrities. Yeah. But there'd never be any celebrities except me. <laughs> so they'd take me from my radio station and walk me around to everybody else's radio station. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Like, you, you would be up interviewing with other radio stations, yet you were there doing the same thing all the radio guys were doing. Yeah, Paul Abdul Records about to run out. i got to get back to my table. <laughs> Hey, uh, Danny, you made the uh, gossip column in the Daily News today. Maybe it's all over the country. I don't know. Did you I hear? Oh, uh, you've heard. You want to talk about this or what? Uh, you know what? Is it, is it the legal matter? Yeah, with uh, Jamie White. Yeah, no, I can't. She said some weird shit about you. Yeah. She says weird about me. It's fine. She says some weird stuff about my kid. Oh. 
Which, I, yeah, I just, it's one of the very few things I don't find amusing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, though. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just curious because it's a big story today. Why did you guys, why did you get fired from that job? Cause, uh, I swear to God, I don't know. I, because I even went to my boss and I said, listen, man, I'm in trouble. I, I need to go to rehab. I'm, I, I need to know also, because I've never missed a day of work in my entire life. I've never been sick. I've never been late. I mean, I am a together drunk. And, uh, <laughs> So I said, listen, I really feel I need to go to rehab, but I need to know my job will be here when I get back. Mm -hmm. And he said, Danny, not only do we want you back, of course, but you're within your legal rights. The law is on your side. And then I got back from rehab and they fired me. Ah, uh, fucking radios. The, the, That's what I say. Yep. Commercial radios. If anybody's looking for a jock, I'm available. Well, we're looking to give out some golden tickets for uh, XM Satellite Radio, my friend. Right on. Yeah, we're looking to uh, rescue a few more guys from the awful world of commercial radio. Nastiness of commercials and not being able to say hell anymore. So we'll have to talk you know, off. By the way, you guys, this is the first satellite radio show I've ever done, and I'm on hold. And you said, uh, I don't know, and, this, and you just went, ah, fuck it. Now, oh, my God, that's yeah. so cool. It is so cool, man. And we don't have 18-minute commercial blocks, none of that crap. You're just talking until you feel like stopping for a while, and then you go take a leak. Well, that is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, pretty cool. Well, when's the, when's the show on? Sundays. Uh, it, it seems to be changing. I believe it is 10.30 on Sunday nights. And that's when I'd like you to watch it because that's when the ratings count. But they show it 18 times a week. Yeah. It's called Breaking Bonaduce on VH1 and watch it whenever you like. Yeah, I don't think you gotta worry, man. This one's, uh, this one's a winner. Jesus Christ. It's, it's, it's oh, too you much. Seen us on the view. It was awesome. They hated us. <laughs> <laughs> We invited Gretchen and I on The View, yeah. and like Barbara Walters goes on the attack, but in the beginning of, of the show, she's talking about uh, the president wrote a, a note to Condoleezza Rice saying, I have to go to the bathroom, is that possible? Uh -huh. And a photographer got a picture of that note, and they were making fun of it. And Barbara Walters says, that's how I got where I am. I never have to pee. I can outweigh anybody, and blah, 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 blah. So I go out on stage. <laughs> And with time, she says, being really mean to me, and I go, are you kidding? You're going to judge my show when you just spent four minutes on the fact that Barbara Walters doesn't have to pee? <laughs> wow. And, 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 and this, this definitely got cut out. I thought it was cool. Star Jones goes, I am not even willing to talk about this. And I said, try keeping your mouth shut next to a buffet. Bravo. Oh, no. We hate her. We I hate we hate Star Jones. You know it's you know it's great. You get Danny on on interview shows like that, and people will try to get you. They'll try to like bring stuff up, but Danny won't deny it. Right. It's not like no. Well, what I meant was this. With uh, what you saw was it. It's just no. Yeah, that shit happened. Next. You know, so I'll give you the perfect example of that. So, Danny, I read you picked up a transvestite hooker. What really happened? Well, I picked up a hooker and it turned out to be a guy, and I got all pissed off. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's not like I'm not going to tell him. I'm, I'm pretty hard to hurt at yeah. this point in the career. That story got blown out of proportion. I wasn't even near a hooker. It was, no, yeah, hooker, no, reached down, okay. got a handful of knob, and decided to punch him in the fucking face. <laughs> And he wasn't supposed to. He, he demanded. He goes, "You owe me forty bucks because you took me off my corner." I go, "Buddy, get out of the car. It's just a misunderstanding." And he said, "No, you owe me forty bucks. You took me off my corner." I said, "I'm going to give you one more chance to get out of this car." <laughs> so I go over to his side of the door and I pull him out of the car, and he's big. And then I realize this is a large man in fishnets and pumps who's selling his ass. This could be really dangerous. So I beat the bejesus out of this guy. And then, you'll love this part, because this is singular to me. I've heard every story that you can imagine, that, and this pops it all for me. So I see the cops, and they're coming. And I think, I can explain this. <laughs> and he lost, right? He lost bad, but he just lost. And then I thought, mm, Danny Pudridge beats transvestite. <laughs> yeah, that's... I, I, I gotta go. So I jump in my car and I run. And I get to listen to the high speed chase I'm in on the car stereo of the car I'm driving. <laughs> and that was something. Oh my god. <laughs> That's great, man. That was a big night out. <laughs> uh, you you are the real deal, Danny. Well thank you. <laughs> what do we get to watch you do on TV in uh, future episodes? Uh let's see. Uh, you know what to be honest, I swear to God, I, I'm not being coy here. There are huge gaps of what I remember. 
Wow. So he's yeah. got to watch the show just to know what he did. I'm not watching the show. No? No. Why? Wh- why is that? Because <laughs> from what I've heard, I'm ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> People are suing me. And... Are, you, are you trying to say you're embarrassed by uh, how you look on TV? Or, only or... only uh, because when I'm all lit up and ready, like my own crew, I love this shot. I love this shot, and I know it made it. At one point, my own crew calls the police on me. <laughs> I'm, I, I forget what happens. My wife's at the W Hotel having this party. Somebody says something I don't like. I say to the limousine driver, take me to the W Hotel right now. And the director says no. And I said, hey, the name of the show is Breaking While well, That's I'm Being Bonaducci. That makes it my show. That makes this my limousine. Take me to the W Hotel right now. And the guy goes, no. So I said, really? And I just opened the door and jumped at about 25. <laughs> How are you going to get a second season of this show, by the way? That beats the hell out of me. Yeah, it's a, it's a type of show I don't see how you could possibly do a second season. Well, you know what? Uh, things have occurred to me. Because we're... we're cause, cause it's, you know it, it is... I, and here's what I think might be interesting. I'm not... I'm not... You know, because I really do need to work again. These shows don't pay very much. I need to go back to radio soon. Right. But um, I don't live like regular people ever. The fact that I was drunk makes me this wild drunk. The fact that I do a great deal of those things after giving it careful consideration and think, hey, let's play shit, bitch. I think that's <laughs> even more interesting. Thinking it out, knowing the ramifications, and playing anyway, I think is just as interesting. Yeah. Wow. And I, I was so mad at VH1 about one thing. They go to pull the plug. They come up to me and they go, hey, uh, listen, Danny, uh, we're going to pull the plug on the show. And I said, why? And they said, we believe that you're dying. And I said, perfect. Why would you not want to roll on that? The, <laughs> the death of a B-lister? That would be huge. Why would you not want to shoot till I die? And they kind of all looked around like, boy, you've got a good point. But then they put me in rehab anyway. That's the ultimate goal of reality TV. It yeah. really is, and it has been. Yep. Uh, it's been leading slowly, toward that. Surely. Yeah, that's the end of that genre. It's been leading there the whole time. We almost right. got there with Pedro in uh, Real World San Francisco. Yeah. Watched him die on TV for 12 weeks or whatever it was. Just about, but someone completely self-destructive. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah that was nasty. Yeah, we're never going to be on TV, Danny. We uh, we pitched a show to A&E <laughs> <laughs> the other day. It wasn't our it wasn't our idea, and we were it wasn't com- your finest moment. It was complete. We no. were completely embarrassed. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Anthony pitched show A and E. A and E, yeah, isn't that great? Do we have a great agent or what? <laughs> was it a good show? It, we basically pitched uh, MythBusters meets Jackass. Oh yeah, A and E would love that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Eat that up. It That's looked perfect. at us like we had like uh, you know two heads. The famous. I got uh, the weirdest thing happening there. I can't can't believe it. I thought by now, you know, because you know radio, no matter how crazy I got, the, sh- the show's a huge success. I thought my phone would be ringing off the hook with radio offers. No, no, no uh, regular radio, they're, they're a bunch petrified. of pussies now. Everyone's petrified now. You, right. realize, you realize you can't even say fart on regular radio? Is that, is that over now? Yeah. And, and you, you know how, uh, Danny knows the game, you know how you would get away with shit and talk uh, double entendre and oh, talk sure. around things? Now they're finding uh, DJs because they know what uh, we were trying to yeah, say. Yeah, it says, Whoa. well, yeah, they say, well, we know what you meant. And everyone knew what you meant, so we're going to find you. Even though you never said wow. that the penis went into the vagina. Yeah. God, I, I never knew that. I, didn't, I did not know that. Business sucks That's ass. outrageous. Dude, that, yeah. they're helping us out with the satellite radio. Everyone's uh, yep. you're coming aboard in droves at this point. So. Well, can I, good. <laughs> I appreciate to know where a good avenue is. But can I ask you a real-life question that maybe you can help me out with? Yeah, sure. I've got lunch today with a really huge producer guy for TV and yeah. two movies, right? He's got, um, well, he's just a big shot. He's a real big shot. He's not some Hollywood guy that says, I've got a deal. He's a real big shot. He's meeting with me because he's watched the show and he thinks, 
Danny Bonaduce is one of the scariest people on <laughs> earth. I really want to meet him. I've got some projects. What do I wear? Do I show up looking normal or do I show up for lunch looking freaky? Look scary. Look scary. If he wants, yeah. if if he's saying Danny Bonaduce is one of the scariest people, and I want to capitalize on that, you need like a fucking wife beater shirt. Danny. Yeah. Here's the deal. You, yeah. you, you go to the meeting with a butcher knife, right? <laughs> that occurred to me. Hold on. You got a film crew, right? <laughs> right in front of them, you you tr you lop off one of your fingers. You got ten. You don't need them all. I'm and they could you. probably sew it right back on. Yeah, and maybe they could sew it back on. You take like just take one knuckle out, man, right in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> like in Sharky's machine. I'm so the crew, the show is wrapped. So I, I won't have a film crew, but if you want a real life indication as to, uh, God, I don't want to say how crazy I am because it seems normal and right to me. Yeah. Um, there is, I was very sad that I had uh, this affair. I love my wife and I did not mean to have an affair, right? Yeah. And there, I, I'm a big fan of the Japanese culture. I'm a third degree black belt. I speak Japanese. And the, in the Yakuza, which is the Japanese, Japanese organized crime, there is a way, no matter what you have done, that you can apologize once. And it's to cut off the top knuckle of your little finger and present it into a, in a box to the person you've offended. Do it. Mm. So I looked at my wife and I said, who I said didn't even know about this, and I said, listen, honey, I am going to apologize to you in a way that you have to accept. And she looks at me, rolls her eyes, and she goes, you know, if you cut off your finger, it won't mean anything to me. Everybody knows you can cut off your finger. Try behaving. <laughs> God damn, man. She knows yep. you. The yes, she does. Right. I mean, 30 seconds, wow, that was a bitch, but a lifetime of behaving? Jesus. <laughs> Danny, we got we to gotta talk radio with you. How, how could Eric Logan get a hold of you? Oh, uh, we got your numbers? All right, good. Cause, uh, I'm assuming you do, yeah. Yeah, cool, man. Because we're, uh, we do have some spots left, and, uh, man, you're very interesting. We've, uh, we've been following you for years, and we, we bump heads every once in a while with you, so. And you've always been very kind to me, and I appreciate that. And what? I appreciate this time today. I really, you know, the show's important to me. A very obscure thing. We saw you walking out of a hamburger joint on, uh, what was it, Anthony? Uh, Sixth Avenue. Remember that horrible, horrible burger joint, and we ended up killing him on the air? Oh, yeah. Oh. The oyster and you walked out of it. The, a place called the Oyster Bar. There's a couple different oyster bars in New York. Yeah, I know it. I know it. All right. But the one on, I think it was like 56 or 50. Fifth Street. Yeah, no, no, I only went to the one. I knew exactly yeah. what you were talking about. And you were walking out of there as we were walking in. We just kind of said hey to each other. No, no big deal. We didn't really talk. And we ended up going in there and having the worst hamburger ever. <laughs> Thank God I had already left or I'd have gotten blamed. And you became part of the story <laughs> yeah. that day because we're like, Jesus, you know, we, he's walking out of the place. It had to be good. <laughs> he's a celebrity. It's got to be good, right? Got some cash left. Yeah. yeah. It was just a, whatever. It's just a, a dumb, obscure it's thing. But is walking out. This place must suck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Danny. It's always a pleasure. Hey, thanks for the time, you guys. I sincerely appreciate it. Hey, thank you, man. Don't kill yourself, all right? Well, not until the second season. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Bonaduce, thanks, Danny. Bye, guys. All right, there he goes. That rock. Absolutely. Evangeline. Yes. All right, you're going to be the grand finale. Uh, gra uh, the grand finale of the Opie and Anthony program this week. Okay. All right. All right, hold on two seconds. Uh, Jill. Hey, Jill. Hi. Jill, hi. What do you want to do? Well, my husband's a huge, huge fan of you, and uh, he's been pressuring me to call in and play that game, What's in My Pants. Oh, great. You got a phone? Uh, yeah. All right. Your pants down? Um, they can be arranged. All right. Pull them down. We'll play the theme song. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's play. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Let's play Guess What's in My Pants All with, right, Jill with Jill from Canada. This is awesome. Here's the theme song. He's time to play. What's in my pants? Place the receiver. I'll find your beaver. It's time to play. Hey, guess what's in my pants? It's time. Guess what's in my pants? My pants. All right, Jill, you know how the game's played. We're going to ask you to rub the phone on your uh, most intimate of area in various ways, and uh, we will guess what type of hairstyle you have. There's the basic triangle that a woman sports all the time. There's the mohawk, which is just a strip. There's a Hitler mustache, which is the little patch, and the wood floor, uh, clean shaved, or Jean Benet Ramsey is what we call that. And really fast, Jill, are you hot? <laughs> I don't know. I might. I emailed you some pictures. 
Oh, well, we'll have to take a look. Right. No, uh, we'll, we'll take your word for yeah, it. Yeah, we'll take sure your word for it that you're hot. Are you going All to... right, Jill, could you rub up and down? All right. Yeah. All right, very good. Side to side. Uh huh, circular motion. All right, I say wood floor, Opie. I, will. I can't think as fast as you, Anthony. I'll go with the. Uh... I say mohawk. Mohawk. Come on, let's Bill. Keep mohawk. Let's go. I will go with a uh, very, very short triangle. All right, Jill. What's in your pants? It's like a little patch. A little patch, like a which circular, like, like a Hitler mustache. Did anyone yeah, say Hitler mustache? Yeah, that one. I said a mohawk. You said a mohawk. Wait, no. wait. Is it a mohawk, Jill? It's, it's, I think that Hitler mustache. Hitler mustache, damn. Ah, oh, oh, none no, of us no, got it. Well, Jill, bitch. thanks for playing. Guess what's in my pants? Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> it's time to play. It's time to play. It's time to play. Hey, guess what's in my pants? Place the receiver upon your beaver. It's time to play. Hey, guess what's in my pants? My pants. My pants. Wow, that was fun. Yeah, that is, it always is fun. I, I look forward to that game. I mentioned it'll be at the uh, Punchline in Sacramento next week. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Wednesday through Sunday. Wednesday through Sunday, Punchline, Sacramento. All information Bill Burr. on MySpace and BillBird.com. BillBird.com. Evangeline. Two R's, right? Yes. Bill Burr. Like yes. Raymond Burr. Aaron. Right. Evangeline. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, someone beat uh, beat you to it as far as yeah. I guess what's in my pants game goes. Yeah, I saw that. You guys let her go first. Uh, Thanks. I'm, it's just weird how that works out sometimes. I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah. But um, I guess you could put all your clothes back on. Okay, yeah. thanks. All right. All right. Uh, bye, Angela. Bye, bye Angela. There she goes. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours. It's cruel. I get it. I think about two hours. About two, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sitting naked on the phone for two hours. Ass falling asleep. <laughs> Got to shake the oh. leg every once in a while to get the blood flowing. <laughs> she started that phone call with a mohawk. By the end of it, she had a big muff. <laughs> All right, well, Paisano of Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy, Anthony. We love it. Uh, of course we do. You want Italian food? You want it uh, done right? Right there in Little Italy. Italy. It's a great restaurant. It's a Paisano Mulberry Street. That's oh. right. Classic candlelit restaurant. It's perfect for the uh, late night date. That romantic meal. Every single pasta on the menu. Now under 10 bucks. And at Paisano, you go down there, you mention XM, you mention ONA, uh, a line from the show, whatever. You're going to get a free glass of vino. And that's Italian for vino. Authentic Italian cuisine made from old world Italian recipes, and the uh, fun and romance of Italy, all in a, friend, a friendly ding restaurant. That's Paisano's open weekends till 2 a.m. Paisano is of Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy, right between Grand and Hester. Call them 212-965-1188. 965-1188. Paisano of Mulberry Street. There you go. We're getting a lot of people on the instant feedback asking what that uh, lawsuit. Uh what Danny Bonaducci is all about. No, we, he couldn't talk about it, but we can. Yeah, we didn't want to push him too hard because, you know, I, I could see him being a friend of the show easily. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, with this new gig on uh, XM, we're trying to be a little smarter. Just a little. Very little. Just trying to be a little smarter because the guy just gave us 40 minutes of radio. Why, why you know, end our relationship? Why by, fuck by with him? He's hard. fun. So, um, basically, it was in the Daily News today, and it's all over the country. Breaking news on his VH1 reality show, Breaking Bonaducci, former Partridge Family child star D uh, Danny Bonaducci, is portrayed as an alcoholic, substance abuser, and steroid user, not to mention a cheating husband who's so fed up with his midlife crisis that, he's actually, that he actually slits his wrists. But apparently, it's still possible to damage his reputation. The 46-year-old Bonaducci, who was fired in July from his drive-time DJ job at the Clear Channel LA radio station Star 98.7, is suing former co-host Jamie White. Oh. Ah. Jamie White. Oh, boy. A hole. Another hole. Is it a hole? Uh, suing former co-host Jamie White for allegedly claiming on the air that Bonaducci arrived at work loaded and higher than a kite that he was arrested for drunken driving, and that he once screamed at his 10-year-old daughter, you effing whore. All lies, Bonaducci says. No comment from White or Clear Channel. 
which is an arbitration with Bonaducci over the unpaid portion of his contract. Wow. So that uh, story is developing. Don't you hate the hole? That's why we don't have holes here. No holes. Did you see Bill Burr filing suit against Opie for bad mouthing in his shirt? <laughs> no, I say no. Uh, wait, wait, wait! No, come on. Oh, oh, you! Shut up, hole! <laughs> it isn't fair. Oh, guys! You know you're right. Yeah. Y- yes. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Uh huh. That's all they add, of course. No, no, it's not funny. Yeah, it's very funny. Guys, I can't take this. I, I gotta say, you gotta stop. <laughs> All right, a couple things. Oh, yeah. The auction's over. I want to thank Eric. You want to throw me them paper towels there, Eric? You could just throw it like a pass. There you go. Ooh, what an arm! What an arm on this kid. Sign him up to the Jets. Oh, they have Eric as he makes his way back into the studio. Um, Eric just spent I don't know three or four weeks on the Opie and Anthony auction, right? Yeah, the whole month. Yeah. The what are you going to do now? Auction off his sick glasses. Because we <laughs> like really, for work. Yeah. What are you going to do now? Because we really like Nathaniel we like Nathaniel, Nathaniel sitting here. I don't know. We'll figure out a new job for you. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> the Opie and Anthony charity auction. Thanks to our listeners. We raised, uh, this we have the loyalty of like pirates, me and you. <laughs> We're just like, Jimmy leaves, Bill's here, this guy's fucking great, the show's great, <laughs> fuck it. I'll Nathaniel be sits there, fuck Hawk, fuck him, right. Nathaniel's not. I'll right. be finished by Tuesday. Oh, you, you already are. Cause <laughs> I'll, I'll be Gary Sharon by then. <laughs> We're thinking of uh, all the, all the people that are going to be sitting in your seat. That's oh, now your seat. Yes. <laughs> that is, this Jimmy. The Bill Burr seat. <laughs> We want some controversy. No, that's your oh, seat, yeah. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> These headphones still say Jim on the side. I got no delusions. <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, I want to thank all the listeners. They really stepped up and they uh, they got some good good crap from us, and we raised a little over fifty thousand dollars, right? Mm-hmm. eBay sales total fifty thousand five hundred fifty seven dollars and eighteen cents. So wow. a big thank you to the Opie and Anthony, the Opie and Anthony Nation. Ugh. That's one sandbag for the levy. I know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What could you buy for that? Hmm. I think fifty thousand dollars. Fifty. That's got to be. Large. That's got to be at least fifty houses for those people down there. Opie, okay, I want to go on record right now and no. say, <laughs> me personally, yeah. I am going to match ten of those dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. That's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> He's going to pay for that little flag on the side of the mailbox they're going to put up there. <laughs> Shouldn't somebody? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thanks to the fans and thanks to Hawk, he really worked his balls off on this damn thing. He's still working his balls off because people are yeah. destroyed his health. He's mailing stuff yeah, out every day. It's, it's a real pain in the ass for him. <laughs> it's little six specs. <laughs> well, there you go. Thanks, Hawk. No problem. want to thank Bill Burr. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I had of a great course. time, and uh, good luck with your next replacement. Another and, bang uh, up week, man. I'll see Bill you guys Burr. in like oh. 2009. <laughs> Bye, Eric. Derek just will not leave him alone. We're right in the middle of talking, he don't care. It's more important <laughs> to just embarrass him with that fucking music. <laughs> Bill's gone next week. Wait, you're gone all next week? Yep. And then when do you come back? Um, then I, I go to LA for a couple of days. Jesus Christ! And then Jimmy's back that week, and then he goes away. So we're wow, we're we're talking maybe a little over two weeks before we see you again. Yeah, I'll two and a half guys weeks. Christmas, you man. guys in this comedy thing, you're fucking us all up. I know. <laughs> With your gigs. I know. I, I don't. I, I don't want millions of people listening to me. I want to go in front of like 75 people <laughs> on, on a Friday night. What's up with George Bush? This guy crazy. <laughs> fucking idiot. We always I'm knew. An idiot. Uh, I'm a fucking <laughs> idiot. <laughs> We always knew that uh, Bill was a very funny guy, but he's just proven himself beyond anything. As it's far as transcended any expectation oh, because you, you read the message and board, and uh, he's he's obviously going to be one of our big time uh, friends now on the show, like like we did with Jay Moore and Dice and Brewer. I mean, that's 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 huge, Bill. And thank cool, you for man. everything. Absolutely, thank you guys. We greatly appreciate that. Now get the fuck out of here. Okay, so we can clean out I'll your get area. Your fucking shine box. <laughs> Yeah, we got Gary Sharon coming in. Yeah, you and your pigeon shirt. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it's BillBurr.com, and uh, he's on MySpace That's as well, right. right? That's right. How much time we got left in this disaster? Actually, we had a fun show today. Yeah. Jack, what's going on? Five seconds? Four minutes? 
Five minutes? When did you write the four-minute thing? I wanted to tell Bonaducci that the reason Yesterday? why Jesus. we were talking about that metal dashboard was just to keep that girl on the line. But you, Oh, you I know. You know I mean? Yeah, the listeners got it, and that's all that really counts. I'm really not that upset that Danny is going away thinking, they were talking about a dashboard on a car. <laughs> Meanwhile, we were doing it to keep the broad on the line. You're just grabbing shit on oh, the dashboard. Oh, anything was coming yeah, out. We What's just... with this envelope? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 <laughs> right. You know, I tasted one. The glue was really tasty on one of these envelopes. <laughs> You're so right. What the hell are we going to talk about? about? Opie's flipping out. Bring Eric in. Bring him yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Bring him see in what the was music. Going on. Quick, Steve's coming. Play the car. Whole thing going on. Get Eric, then Ben, then Steve. Back to Ben. <laughs> then get in, uh, build the intern. Uh, Jack, what's going on? It's Jack. I, I learned that all potential golden ticket pledges have gravel throats like Tara Reed. Yeah, oh, you, you know, uh, Jack is right. We're really into Brother Wee's, Scott Farrell, yep. Steve O, and now Danny Bonaduce. Danny, exactly. They Tara all have the Reed. same voice. Yeah. Very good. Put them all Happy on anniversary! One, on one uh, channel. Yes. On one show. <laughs> one show. <laughs> Sponsored by Sucrets. Next week we're uh, celebrating a year at XM, so if you want to come by with prizes, prizes, Jesus, uh, gifts. Prizes? Gifts, come on by and say hi. Are you soliciting people for gifts yeah, for it, us? It works for Jimmy. It, they bring the worst things. Ah, well. I brought you some more chocolate covered cherries. Dude, she was a block from my house yesterday. Yeah. And, you know, everyone, we all joke about how she's my stalker, and uh -huh. hence stalker Patty. She follows you around. I, we didn't even get to this today. Maybe we can talk about it next week. She was a block from my house yesterday. Yeah, for no like, reason. Patty, what are you doing? What's she doing uptown? And she didn't really have a good answer. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And no how, one. Uh, and how do you figure out where I live now? Maids and nannies are the only people that look out of place up where Opie lives. That's right. Everyone else, the, you tell the residents, because they're all lighting their cigars with $100 bills, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say hi to Dan in North Carolina. Dan, what's up? What up, guys? How are you? I'm doing well. First of all, congratulations on your auction. That was wonderful. Wow, you guys did it. You guys did it. Yeah, but we put it together. That's Definitely. right. Like, we really helped. Hold on, Anthony. But they... <laughs> You're reaching for the big backpack. <laughs> Let me get mine. There you yeah. go. Bill, I know you didn't do shit as far as that goes, but yeah, why don't you pat yourself on the back? <laughs> no, it's going to destroy this awful shirt. <laughs> <laughs> we could get $100 for it. Take it off. Uh, we'll uh, auction it. I bought this shirt on Melrose in L.A. I mean, this is, this is a really? uh, yeah, high-quality uh, That's great. nothing. <laughs> that's really good. Dan, North Carolina. Yo, and, Look uh, at your shirt. That thing is fucking horrendous. There you go, Bill. Get him. A taco B so, shirt. Uh, you know what it looks like? It looks like those old, like, a legal pad. Like those yellow <laughs> things that you would write shit on. Not that bad. And I've been here two weeks. I've seen it three times. It's, <laughs> it's featured in the Washington Post today, oh, my friend. Shit. Where's like, your shirt It looks like featured. you used to have a collar. <laughs> they just took it off, just sewed it up. Where, oh, my God. He's seen it three times. Where's your shirt featured? My shirt is in the fucking Washington That's Post great. today. I was in the fucking uh, the Harrisburg Gazette the other day. This shirt's featured in an aviary, I believe. Oh. Yeah, that's where birds live. No. Nothing. All right. Shit, I know I shouldn't use an aviary you word. You just bombed aviary. on my awful shirt. I know. How did I bomb the on that shirt? one unfunny thing that you could say about my shirt, and you did it. <laughs> Dan from North Carolina. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering where you find these bitches to keep on the line for two hours, and how can I get one? Mm, naked. Yeah, I don't know. I don't she know. was nice. Anyway. She was uh, very lovely. Cordial. Rob, PA, what's up? Hey, guys. Uh, I learned today that Angeline is absolutely stupid. Happy birthday, Bill. All right. Thank you. And I like it was the last day Bill's on for at least a while that... We started picking on each other, <laughs> like just trying to feel we good. We just you know? started like your fucking shirt. Yeah. Just trying to, just trying to figure everyone out. Another well, what, week what, and what it's the like parameters are. Yeah, yeah. yeah, another week and you and Opie would be trading fuck faces <laughs> and <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Somewhere. I'm trying to do a radio show. I know. I'm sitting across. <laughs> sitting across. It. I want to spit in your fucking face. Somewhere during the week, he realized that he could actually take shots at us. Yeah. He did a pretty good job with it. Bill, thank you. It's BillBird.com, so everyone. Much for having